You risked your life to protect the country for a whole ten years, but in return, you suffered five years of imprisonment. Not only were all your military achievements taken away, even your beloved fiance of seven years married someone else. Yet you silently endured in prison without any action. Once a war god who guarded the country alone, now with lifeless eyes, you're left destitute. However, today a visitor arrives in the dark dungeon. This person is one of your subordinates, Juke. The Lord and Miss are currently in danger. Upon hearing this, an extremely domineering, murderous intent emanates from within you, causing Juke beside you to tremble uncontrollably. What happened to my sister? Your expression is extremely grave, and remember, you willingly sat in prison for five years for the safety of my mother and sister. All for the safety of my mother and sister. At this point, Juke trembles all over, and now dares not conceal anything further. The Lord is like this. The Crown Prince of Jinnan, Xia Yu, has a congenital illness. He needs the heart of a pure Yin woman as a medicinal guide in order to be cured. And your fiance, in order to marry into the Jinnan Prince's mansion, is planning to use Mrs. Heart as a marriage dowry. Following this, Zhu Ke begins to choke up, unable to speak the rest of the words. He just took out a laptop and played a video. In the video, your fiance is grabbing your sister's hair tightly. Your mother can only plead bitterly from behind, and even kneels down to beg this former daughter-in-law. But in return, she receives only disdain and cold looks from the dawn, directly leading to the massacre of your mother and the entire family. At this moment, you roar, and the thick chains on your body are instantly shattered by the horrifying burst of blood and energy. Causing the entire dungeon to tremble. Everyone involved in this, I will definitely tear you all to pieces. Then you leap up and release the locking dragon platform that has bound you for five years. At the same time, the abnormality in the dungeon had already alerted the outside army, and in just ten minutes, the island's army had assembled. What awaits you are armored vehicles, artillery, and armed helicopters, and one hundred thousand troops. Their orders are to prevent the escape of the people in the dungeon. At this moment, a figure appears at the dungeon gate. The army is about to open fire, but they are stopped by a person dressed in the warden's uniform who runs to you. He immediately bows, and Hua Jiejun's soldier Wang Deng pays respects to the marquee. At this moment, not only is Wang Deng convinced, even many soldiers, upon learning that the person in front of them is the champion marquee, immediately put down their weapons. Then they all knelt down, welcoming Lord Ho back respectfully. At this moment, the 100,000 strong army surrendered without a fight. You have also restrained your killing intent. Looking towards Wang Deng, prepare a plane for me. I want to go to Longcheng immediately. Meanwhile, inside the Rongkong Hospital in Longcheng, Xia Yu and Shanxi, with wicked smiles on their faces, are looking at the girl in front of them. Just as the doctor was about to operate on Hua Bingqing's heart, with a crack, the door shattered. Three figures rushed in. The bodyguards rushed forward upon seeing the situation, but before they could get close, they were blasted away by an invisible force. Right now, you are staring at Xiaoyu and Chenxi with bloodshot eyes, as if your eyes are about to burst. I will tear you both into a thousand pieces. The next moment, as you took a step forward, endless killing intent instantly covered the entire ward. In front of everyone's eyes, a bloody battlefield appeared at this moment. And standing on the endless corpses, there was a man. He gazed at everyone like a demon or a god. With just one glance, everyone in the hospital, except for Chenxi, exploded and died at the same moment. At this moment, Chenxi felt even more terrified by the man in front of her. The next moment, you threw her against the wall, knocking her unconscious. You didn't rush to kill her, you just wanted her to witness it with her own eyes. How you will take revenge. After dealing with these people, you immediately rushed to your sister's side. But Hua Bingqing's face was pale at this moment. She fainted. Seeing this, Zhu Kei also rushed forward to check, but after checking, her expression was extremely grim. Miss Bingqing has lost too much blood, all her organs are severely failing, she probably won't make it. Upon hearing this, your eyes instantly turned red, you gritted your teeth, then ordered Zhu Kei to find someone to come and treat Bingqing. Meanwhile, inside the Jinnan Prince's mansion in Longqing Town, after learning about his son's death, he immediately ordered all the soldiers in the city to assemble, making this day the most chaotic in Longcheng. In Rongkong Hospital, Hua Chen, you, did not leave. Although he could protect Hua Bingqing's pulse, he could not save her life. At this moment, Hua Chen was rushing through the hospital with Hua Bingqing, heading straight for the emergency center. Doctor, where is the doctor? Someone come quickly. Please, save my sister. Hua Chen was full of urgency. After a long time, the door of the emergency center slowly opened, and a disheveled nurse ran out. Then, a middle-aged doctor came out while fastening his belt. What's all the noise about? 
He was annoyed at being disturbed. Huo Chen immediately rushed over, Doctor, please save my sister quickly, she has lost too much blood and can't hold on much longer. Huo Chen's forehead was covered with beads of sweat. The middle-aged doctor impatiently approached and, after a brief examination, shook his head. The patient has lost too much blood, and multiple organs in the body have already lost function. There is no longer any value in trying to save her. Hearing this, Huichen hurriedly stopped the doctor and pleaded, Doctor, I have protected my sister's pulse. Please give her a blood transfusion. The doctor scoffed and refused, leading to a confrontation with security guards. The situation quickly attracted the attention of others in the hospital, including a middle-aged man who intervened and expressed disapproval of the chaos. The hospital director personally examined Hua Bingqing and confirmed that there was no longer any value in trying to save her. He also mentioned the hospital's policy that only senior-level military officers were qualified to administer blood transfusions. This left Huichen feeling desolate, as he realized that his efforts in battle had not saved his own sister. He vowed to continue fighting for her, despite the challenges he faced. Especially when it comes to someone he once protected. But he couldn't. Now his sister's life is in danger, and if he tied up the dean, maybe he could get some life-saving blood for his sister. Wang Deng was about to act. But at this moment, there was a sudden commotion in the hospital lobby. Look, isn't that the national doctor's car? The national doctor is here. I never thought that in my lifetime, I would actually be able to see the national doctor. It's truly an honor. Outside the door, an old man hurried in, and as he reached the entrance, it was the renowned national doctor, Lu Changsheng. Lu Changsheng was a leading figure in traditional Chinese medicine in the Northwest, the chief medical officer of Central Asia, and had cured countless terminal illnesses, saving tens of thousands of people from the brink of death, earning him the title of someone who could rescue people from the underworld. Due to his superb medical skills, he was appointed as an honorary professor by dozens of hospitals, and all hospitals treated him as an esteemed guest. The dean immediately recognized him and his face changed suddenly, then he quickly bowed and went over. Oh, it's the national doctor, Mr. Lu. Mr. Lu, the wind must have blown you over here. Come, this way, please. The dean greeted him warmly and then glared at the people around him. You, come over here and pour water for the national doctor. Everyone then realized and hurried over, carrying bags and showing the way, and the scene suddenly became lively. However, Lu Changsheng walked straight through the middle, ignoring the dean completely, and then stopped in front of Hu Chen. The dean was taken aback for a moment, then quickly caught on and quietly asked, Mr. Lu, I'm here, the reception room is ready, let's go in and talk. But Lu Changsheng seemed to not hear him, continued to ignore the dean, and excitedly looked at Hu Chen, grabbing his hand, you must be Mr. Hua, I know you. What are you doing here? Although Huo Chen was not clear about the details, from the other party's behavior, he was sure it was an old acquaintance, so he didn't think much and said, It's a long story, Mr. Lu, I've encountered some trouble. How rude. This is the famous national doctor Lu, how can you address him so casually? Step aside, don't delay the national doctor's research. The dean was already feeling uncomfortable, and now being ignored by Lu Changsheng, and seeing Huo Chen, made him furious, ready to kick him out. Huo Chen was also extremely angry, but the situation was urgent, so he swallowed his pride. Mr. Lu, it's Bingqing, she, she. Huo Chen was so agitated that his voice choked up. The dean, seeing that Huo Chen completely ignored him, was immediately furious and said angrily, this is outrageous, am I invisible? Huo Chen, you better not leave, I'm calling the police. The dean took out his phone and waved it in front of Huo Chen. Huo Chen clenched his fists, the tendons in his arms bulging. At this point, Lu Changsheng glared fiercely at the dean and said, Dean Lu, Mr. Hua is my benefactor. Your repeated unreasonable behavior, I think you should step down as the dean. What? The dean's eyes widened in disbelief. Get out of here. Lu Changsheng couldn't hold back any longer and shouted, and two strong men immediately carried the dean away. This was the power of the national doctor, he could dismiss the dean at any time. Oh, it's a misunderstanding. Mr. Lu, I... The dean's voice grew smaller and smaller, until it was just a scream. The scene suddenly became quiet, and everyone was watching Hu Chen and Lu Changsheng intently. After listening to Hu Chen's description, Lu Changsheng shook his head slightly and said, This kind of illness is the first time I've seen it. I've never heard of it before. Everyone sighed upon hearing this. Even Lu Changsheng had never heard of it, so it was likely a lost cause. Sir, just because you haven't heard of it doesn't mean it's hopeless. I can tell you that as long as you follow my method, you will definitely be able to save Bingqing, Huo Chen said with great sincerity. As soon as he spoke, everyone was surprised and looked at Huo Chen. Wow, this kid is really confident, 
actually teaching a national expert how to do things? My goodness, this kid is so full of himself, talking like that? He's a national expert, and he hasn't seen this illness. How does he know? Can he cure it? Suddenly, everyone's opinion of Huo Chen took a 180 degree turn. Some doctors even began to doubt Huo Chen, thinking he might be causing trouble. Lu Changsheng looked seriously at Huo Chen and said, Tell me what you think. Some of my abilities haven't fully recovered, so I can't participate in the treatment. But I can see that Bing Qing has been impacted by internal force, and her internal organs are injured, causing her to be in a coma. Huh? So that's what it is? I thought it was something else. This is so funny, do you think this is a TV show? I think this person really doesn't understand. Would a national expert believe this? Huh, this is hilarious. Maybe he's watched too many martial arts TV shows. Someone in the crowd couldn't help but laugh. Illness is illness. Once you've identified it, you should treat it. Where does this talk of internal and external forces come from? It's pure nonsense. Some even said, Mr. Hua, Dr. Lu is highly skilled. It's right to listen to him. If you don't understand, don't interfere. I'm sorry, I wouldn't joke about my sister's life. Huo Chen said firmly. At first, Lu Changsheng was a little upset. After practicing medicine for so long, he had never seen or heard of internal and external forces. After much thought, Lu Changsheng chose to believe. After all, Huo Chen's past couldn't be explained by common sense. All right, tell me what to do, I'll do it. As Lu Changsheng spoke, he rolled up his sleeves and walked to Bingqing's side in three quick steps. Huo Chen breathed a sigh of relief and pointed out three acupoints for Lu Changsheng to press down on. Lu Changsheng saw that these were all blocked areas and was puzzled. Bingqing's internal organs were already on the verge of necrosis, and pressing on these blocked acupoints would only further damage them. Some people who knew a little about it on the side were also surprised and said, Wow, this won't save her, it's hastening her death. Are you sure about this? By doing this, you're not only risking your sister's life, but also damaging DR. Lu's reputation. Some people began to doubt Hua Chen's motives. However, Lu Changsheng thought for a moment, then dipped his thumb and forefinger in some oil and pressed firmly on the acupoints. The whole room erupted in an instant. With this kind of force, Ding Qing was really done for. Lu Changsheng also looked puzzled, constantly adjusting the pressure and testing Ding Qing's reaction. However, no matter how he tested, there was no sign of life in her body. At that moment, Lu Changsheng suddenly regretted it. He regretted believing Hua Chen. Now, a person who was already not going to survive had died at his hands. This was equivalent to burying his own reputation for a lifetime. Thump! Lu Changsheng sat on the ground. Lu Changsheng couldn't help but feel regretful, thinking about how he had taken on this task. Bing Qing was basically declared dead, not alive, and yet he had believed Hua Chen, who was no longer the same as before. The people present looked at Hua Chen and Lu Changsheng as if they were watching a joke. But at that moment, Bing Qing, lying on the bed, suddenly opened her eyes and whispered, Water, I need water. Everyone was stunned. How is this possible? After the treatment just now, she should have been dead, so how is she alive? It's impossible, this is absolutely impossible. Everyone was shocked and looked at Bing Qing in amazement. They were astonished to see her complexion gradually turning rosy, and her whole person beginning to show signs of vitality. All indications suggested that Bing Qing had been revived. Quick, give her some water. Hua Chen exclaimed with joy, and only then did everyone react. Lu Changshan was also in shock, only believing that Bing Qing had truly been revived as he watched her slowly swallow the water. Seeing Bing Qing gradually improving, Lu Changsheng immediately took her pulse. Her bodily functions are recovering, and her qi and blood are starting to flow smoothly. Quickly take her to the emergency room, and make sure to stabilize her condition. Lu Changsheng hastily arranged, then looked at Hua Chen with great excitement and said, I understand now. It was the acupoints you activated using my techniques that opened up her meridians and restored her qi and blood flow. It's no exaggeration to say that you completely revived Bing Qing. Upon learning the truth, Lu Changsheng was extremely excited and grateful as he looked at Hua Chen. However, Hua Chen was too nervous and felt a noticeable sense of fatigue in his body, so he didn't say much, just nodded and silently glanced at Bing Qing's ward before leaving. As long as Bing Qing is okay, Mr. Lu, please take care of her. I have other matters to attend to, so I'll take my leave. Huo Chen politely bowed. Lu Changsheng wanted to stop him, but he disappeared without a trace. Suddenly, everyone was astonished. Lu Guoshou had truly revived Bing Qing. Or perhaps, it was Huo Chen who, through Lu Changsheng's hands, revived Bing Qing. Bing Qing's condition was extremely poor, almost indistinguishable from that of a dead person. To be able to revive her was nothing short of miraculous. Yet, all of this was true. It was simply terrifying.
For Ho Chen, saving Bing Qing was just a casual act. However, his own body had not yet fully recovered and was not capable of supporting such extensive treatment. Cough, cough. Due to his intense focus, Hu Chen's body was very weak, and he couldn't help but cough incessantly after walking a few steps. This happened to be noticed by a girl nearby, who immediately covered her mouth with a handkerchief and said disdainfully, Oh, is it a lung infection? Your cough is so severe. Get away from me, stay far away. The streets were filled with people wearing masks, and those in the know naturally understood the current situation. Hua Chen felt displeased and gave the girl a cold look. She had a technological face, heavy makeup, and clearly wasn't a decent woman. Moreover, she had no idea how Hua Chen had sustained his injuries. These were all very remarkable achievements. Hua Chen casually glanced at the girl, who immediately shivered. Such a fierce look, Al, this person is glaring at me. The girl was frightened and reached out to pull her boyfriend beside her. The boyfriend had two large tattoos on his arms, and he casually turned his head, softly comforting the girl before standing up and arrogantly saying, Kid, I don't care who you are, apologize to my girlfriend now, or you'll regret it. Hua Chen couldn't help but laugh at the sight of the juvenile behavior. Such people only dared to act tough in front of their girlfriends, but in reality, they were nothing. With Hua Chen's current status, it would be beneath him to engage with them, so he ignored them and prepared to find a place to rest. This action directly angered the tattooed man, who took two steps forward and stood in front of Hua Chen, coldly saying, Kid, did you hear me? Apologize to me now. Zhang Li, this person is so arrogant, he doesn't even take us seriously, the girl coquettishly exclaimed, her tone filled with provocation. Just then, a man who looked like a manager walked over and, upon seeing Zhang Li causing a scene, immediately changed his tone to one of flattery and said, Oh, I didn't expect to see you here, it's Zhang Young Master. Zhang Young Master, what's the matter? Who has upset you? Tension lifted his head high, looking at Hua Chen with disdain, this person, he glared at my girlfriend and didn't even apologize. Get him out of here, he's bothering me. All right, Master Zhang, I'll kick him out right away, the manager responded repeatedly, with a tone of humility and awe. He looked just like a servant. Then, the manager turned to Hua Chen and said coldly, This gentleman, Master Zhang is not an ordinary person. You heard what he said, please. Hua Chen's face darkened. It's strange, are young people all so hot-tempered these days? The manager, seeing Hua Chen still unmoved, became angry and said, I forgot to tell you, Master Zhang is from the Zhang family. If you provoke them, the consequences will be unimaginable. Hua Chen became even more interested. The Zhang family? I've never heard of it. Hua Chen shook his head. In today's world, there are only a few major families, yet Hua Chen had never heard of the Zhang family. This is outrageous, you're so bold. Zhang Li suddenly became furious and stood up abruptly. The manager was also shocked. Everyone within a hundred miles knows about the Zhang family, yet this kid directly claims not to know. It's a great insult to the Zhang family. At the same time, several onlookers nearby also turned their heads. They looked at Hua Chen as if he were a fool. The Zhang family is the top family here, ranking in the top five at least. This kid claims not to know. Is he pretending to be ignorant? On the other hand, after Hua Chen finished speaking, he acted as if nothing had happened, casually sipping his tea and looking ahead leisurely. All right, are you doing this on purpose? Fine, I'll let you see the world today. After speaking, Zhang Li quickly took out his phone to call someone. Just then, there was a hurried sound of footsteps at the door. Everyone turned to look, and an elderly man with white hair came in. It's Mr. Zhang. The manager recognized him at a glance and hurriedly went to greet him. Then it was Zhang Li's turn, and as soon as he saw the old man, he rushed over, happily saying, it's uncle, uncle, why are you here? Then, Zhang Li's eyes flashed, staring at Hua Chen and said, Uncle, it's this person, he glared at my girlfriend and insulted our Zhang family. Uncle, I can't swallow this insult. Zhang Li pounded his chest and continued, Uncle, you don't know, he said our Zhang family is nothing, and he's never heard of the Zhang family. Uncle, this person is simply lawless. Just two simple sentences directly sentenced Hua Chen to death. The manager looked at Hua Chen with concern, but also a little pleased. You arrogant kid. You don't take us seriously, do you? Now that the Zhang family's uncle is here, you won't be able to get away with it. And so, all eyes were on Hua Chen. They wanted to see how Hua Chen would be dealt with and how he would leave in embarrassment. However, the next moment, the so-called uncle walked over in a proper manner and bowed to Hua Chen in front of everyone. What's going on? Everyone was stunned. This is the uncle of the Zhang family. In terms of reputation, status, and seniority, he is far superior to Hua Chen. Why should he bow to him? In the astonished eyes of everyone, the so-called uncle just walked to the side without saying a word. No one knew what he was doing. Just then, another person followed, 
and his appearance and face were exactly the same as the previous uncle. Zhang Li took one look and immediately shouted, It's the second uncle. My goodness, both uncles have come over. Zhang Li didn't understand what the first uncle was doing, but he felt much more at ease after seeing the second uncle. The second uncle, like the first uncle, had power, but compared to the first uncle, the second uncle was more ruthless. What the first uncle dared not do, the second uncle did. What the first uncle dared not manage, the second uncle managed. And so, the second uncle became the true second in command of the Zhang family. So Zhang Li didn't care about what the first uncle was doing and ran directly to the second uncle. Second uncle, it's him. Zhang Li shouted a few times, pointing directly at Hua Chen's gritted teeth and said, You bastard, you're dead. When I bring you back, I'll have to chop off your hands. With the skills of my second uncle, there's no one in the entire Donjo of Dasha who can't be dealt with. You've really provoked my Zhang family, you're finished today. Zhang Daliu, seeing his nephew Zhang Li being bullied, was also furious. In no time, those thugs wanted to make a move on Hua Chen. Come with us, or we'll disable you right here, your choice. Several thugs shouted angrily. Hua Chen casually sipped his wine, then suddenly took a big gulp, exhaling the alcohol with a satisfied look on his face. He knew he had to learn to control himself, not to act, otherwise the strong anger would lead to the death of these people. At this moment, Zhang Daliu's phone suddenly rang. Zhang Daliu, who was initially a little annoyed, immediately became alert when he saw the caller ID. Zhang family head, what can I do for you? Zhang Daliu spoke as if he was pleasantly surprised. Bring your nephew Zhang Li back immediately. You little brat, do you know who you've offended? The phone immediately transmitted an extremely arrogant and abusive voice, followed by the sound of things being smashed. Zhang Daliu was completely dumbfounded after the call, scared and trembling, almost kneeling to the head of the Zhang family. This head of the Zhang family was the boss of a major group in Dongzhou of Dasha, managing some gray areas, with great power. He had just received a mysterious call from a big shot, and it was said that anyone who received this call would disappear from the world within three days. Zhang Daliu was already trembling with fear. Big shot? Zhang Daliu was completely stunned. But how could he dare to disobey the boss's orders? Um, you guys take Zhang Li back for me, don't cause any trouble, let's go. Zhang Daliu regained his composure, wiped the cold sweat from his forehead, and decisively gave the order. The senior bodyguards who had planned to arrest Hua Chen were instantly stunned. Zhang Li was not the victim, it should have been Hua Chen they were supposed to arrest, right? Second uncle, did you speak too hastily? Zhang Li was still in a daze. Boss, did we make a mistake? Weren't we supposed to attack him? One of the bodyguards, who hadn't understood the situation, asked stupidly. No mistake, this is a matter of family honor. I'm here to discipline my nephew personally. Zhang Li, come with me. Zhang Dalia spoke directly. This useless nephew had caused a big problem. Then he looked at Hua Chen, who was supposed to be arrested, with some confusion in his eyes. The Zhang family in Dongzhou of Dasha was not to be trifled with, and the head of the Zhang family was a big shot who had a say in everything in Dongzhou of Dasha, but he was inexplicably wary of Hua Chen. Who exactly was Hua Chen? Zhang Dalia had often acted arrogantly, relying on the head of the Zhang family. But this time, even the head of the Zhang family was scared. From his speculation, this matter must be closely related to Hua Chen. Don't be in a hurry to leave, Zhang Li was disrespectful to me just now, he must apologize to us. Hua Chen suddenly said with a cold look in his eyes. Zhang Li, apologize immediately, otherwise not even a god can save you. Zhang Dalia forced Zhang Li to apologize quickly. Um, sir, I'm sorry, I was blind and disrespectful to you, please forgive me. Zhang Li also realized that his second uncle was really afraid of Yifong. This Hua Chen was definitely not a good person, anyway, he had to find a way to leave. Zhang Dalia looked at the house behind him and said sternly, Right, let Li Mei come out, this bitch still owes us money, let her pay us back before we leave, otherwise we came here for nothing. Li Mei? Hua Chen's eyes lit up and he turned suddenly. Wasn't this his childhood sweetheart, Li Mei? Yifong had known Li Mei since their student days, and the two had gotten along very well and their feelings had gradually grown. Later, because of the imperial decree, they broke up. In addition, Chen Shi had caused trouble, and Hua Chen and Li Mei had been separated ever since. Initially, Hua Chen had only said that he was going to a military academy for further studies, and the two had not been in contact since. Hua Chen clearly remembered how Li Mei cried so hard when she found out about his relationship with Chen Shi. Now, seeing Chen Shi's true colors, Hua Chen feels even more sorry for Li Mei. Li Mei, I delayed you by mistaking the wrong person. Will you forgive me now that we've met? Yi Fang kept this sentence to himself, unable to say it. Just as Hua Chen anxiously waited, a woman walked out of the room. 
graceful and elegant, with a handsome appearance, it was none other than Li Mei. Li Mei. Huo Chen couldn't help but call out, and Li Mei suddenly turned around, becoming extremely excited upon seeing Huo Chen. On the other hand, Er Bo and Zhang Li's faces turned extremely ugly. So Li Mei knows the jinx Huo Chen. My god, what a mess. Ah, uh, Li Mei, sorry, we got it wrong, it's all a misunderstanding. Zhang Li was the first to step forward, continuously apologizing to Li Mei, afraid that she might say something to provoke Huo Chen. Li Mei was taken aback by this apology, never expecting Zhang Li to actually apologize. Huo Chen then glanced at Zhang Li and coldly said, Oh what money, don't let me see you again in the future. No problem, consider this debt settled. Zhang Li nodded and bowed in response. Let's go back. Zhang Dalia had the bodyguards take Zhang Li away quickly. Because this situation developed so suddenly, all the guests on the scene were still in shock. It seemed as if everything that had just happened was like a joke. Only Li Mei and her father Li Baoshan stood there looking foolish. Despite humiliating Zhang Li, Huo Chen was completely fine, and instead it was Zhang Li who was taken away by his uncle. Everyone, don't be nervous, this is just a small accident, please continue and don't mind it. Huo Chen scanned the guests and calmly spoke. Then, he walked up to Li Baoshan and asked with concern, Uncle, are you still in pain? Huo Chen, I remember you, deceiving my daughter, playing both sides. What? That despicable Chen she doesn't want you anymore? Now you're here to cause trouble for my family again. I think everything today is all because of you. Now that Zhang Li has been publicly humiliated, the Zhang family will definitely seek revenge, and we will soon be retaliated against. Li Mei's father Li Baoshan angrily said. Li Baoshan not only didn't understand that Huo Chen saved his life and cleared his debt, but instead blamed him, as if he was causing them harm. It's all your fault, it's over now, our whole family will be killed by you, you really brought us bad luck. Zhao Yani also joined in the blame. Huo Chen shook his head gently, feeling touched by the elder's lack of intelligence. Mom, thanks to Huo Chen, otherwise today would have been dangerous, I would have been taken away by Zhang Li, don't blame him. Even if Li Mei had a thousand complaints against Huo Chen, she still had to thank him for saving her life. But just now, it was all thanks to Huo Chen that Zhang Li was driven away, otherwise, the consequences would have been very serious. You don't have to worry, the Zhang family won't dare to come after me, and they definitely won't dare to ask for the money uncle owes. Huo Chen said with great certainty. Daring to offend him was already the best outcome, and if he hadn't been lenient, the Zhang family could have disappeared overnight. But this Zhang Li was just a lowly ant, not even worth his time. Shut up, the Zhang family doesn't want to deal with you, do you really think you're so great? Li Mei's mother Zhao Yani complained. Huo Chen looked at this future mother-in-law and was speechless. Li Mei's eyes revealed a hint of sadness. She was happy because of Huo Chen's appearance, but also distressed because he had offended the Zhang family. The Zhang family wouldn't let her off. Let's go back and talk about it later. Huo Chen waved his hand, indicating for them to go in first, and he would come in later to clear his mind. Li Mei was reluctant to leave Huo Chen, but thinking of her angry mother behind her, she nodded and went inside. Standing at the door, Huo Chen's thoughts were in turmoil, and before he knew it, a military jeep had stopped in front of him. Almost at the same time, as the car door opened, Ake jumped out of the car. In an instant, the icy beauty's demeanor changed, and she looked at him with a smile on her face, still showing respect in her eyes. Ake, the flower of the military, was also a capable assistant to Huo Chen. She had come specifically to meet him after learning that Huo Chen had chosen a normal life. Finally found you. Get in the car, Ake said. Huo Chen's face turned serious, and he decisively got into the military off-road vehicle. Ake reported on the recent situation and told Huo Chen that the confidentiality work had been done well and so far no one knew his identity. Well done. You've saved me a lot of trouble. After getting in the car, Wu Chen's face changed decisively, and he praised with a smile. Ha, huh? boss, I've never seen you praise anyone before, Ake immediately understood, feeling somewhat delighted. During her time at the overseas base, she had been scolded by Wu Chen many times, so in her mind, Wu Chen was a serious person who never praised anyone. And during that time at the base, she had never seen Wu Chen as happy as he was today. I'm not a general anymore, just an ordinary person, so I don't have so many constraints. I should adapt to life as an ordinary person as soon as possible. Huo Chen said somewhat wistfully, suddenly gazing at Ake and asking, Didn't you already return overseas? Why did you suddenly come to find me? Actually, the night I went back, I had already applied to be assigned to the intelligence collection in Dasha Dongzhou, responsible for supervising the industries in Dasha Dongzhou. You should know that our family is also a big family with some industries in Dasha Dongzhou. My parents also don't want me to be on the front line all the time, it's very dangerous. 
So, if you have any trouble in the future, just come to me decisively, I will help you solve it. This is my number. After finishing her story, Ake immediately resumed her aloof demeanor. The intelligence collection she mentioned was also a special department directly under the Lin family, with great power. Hua Chen hesitated for a moment, but still took Ake's number. You supervising the industries in Dasha Dongzhou is really underutilizing your talents. You didn't choose to come to Dasha Dongzhou just for me, did you? Hua Chen asked after thinking for a moment. He trusted Ake very much and knew that even if Ake discovered something, she would keep it a secret for him. Boss, what are you talking about? Ake blushed slightly, avoiding Hua Chen's question. Then she took out a delicate and exquisite small box from her body. Take it, boss. This was found in South Africa last time, I thought it looked good, so I brought it for you. Ake handed it over as she spoke. After Hua Chen took it in his hand and opened it, he found a blood-red diamond ring inside, the size of a finger, very luxurious. Boss, for this diamond ring, we even had a small-scale conflict at the time, so it's very meaningful. Hua Chen knew the value of this red diamond ring was expensive, at least worth millions. He didn't say much to Ake and decisively replied generously. A few years ago, he had already started planning and secretly invested in two companies with the potential to become the richest in the country, becoming their largest shareholder. The names of these two companies were Wanda Group and Ali Group. According to his memory, Ali Group should be going public this year. It wouldn't be long before he became a super rich person worth hundreds of billions or even trillions, so this blood diamond in his heart was just a fraction of a fraction. Well, I'm going back. If I'm late, maybe no one will open the door. Hua Chin took out his phone and found it was very late, decisively getting out of Ake's car. Why would you lower your own value like this? Are you willing to become an insignificant ant, despite being such a remarkable person? Ake gazed at his figure, her eyes filled with tears. The sword god in her mind, the invincible leader, has truly retired. His past will disappear and never return. Everything has turned into a passing cloud, only the ever-changing world remains. Ake was transferred to the city of Dasha Dongzhou from abroad for Hua Chen. The terrifying ninth-ranked Iron Bloodlists Rose suddenly became a small industrial manager in Dasha Dongzhou, which was a complete insult to her. Even so, she was willing to continue protecting Hua Chen. Quietly entering the house, Hua Chen saw the empty hall and knew that Li Mei and the others must have already gone to bed. Therefore, he walked alone to the small storage room where he lived. This three-story villa was not very large, much inferior to the castle he lived in abroad, but it still had several rooms, including this small storage room. In fact, there were quite a few rooms here, just not where Hua Chen lived. Especially this small storage room, very cramped, it was not an exaggeration to call it a dog's den, with only a small cushion, and a smaller one at that. Hua Chen sat cross-legged on the cushion, and between two breaths, his gaze immediately became sharp, his expression dignified, completely different from his usual appearance. Then, he began to continue practicing the martial arts his master had taught him, cultivating his inner strength, allowing the energy of his inner strength to flow through his meridians, tempering his body. Inner strength was formless and colorless, but could kill within ten steps, and after tempering the body, its strength was like that of four elephants and two dragons, greatly extending lifespan, already far from that of an ordinary person. The next day, news of Hua Chen's deeds spread within a small area of Dasha Dongzhou, and people knew that Hua Chen had offended someone he shouldn't have. Most importantly, Hua Chen was an unemployed drifter, and also Li Mei's fiancé. What was even more confusing was how Li Mei could debase herself and be with such a waste like Hua Chen. And Li Mei's uncle, Li Tiandi, did not offer any explanation about the matter. Anyway, if Li Mei followed Hua Chen, her life would be ruined. Then Li Tiandi would have no competitors and could confidently take over the family property. As for the humiliation of Zhang Li and others by Hua Chen in public, that account naturally had to be settled with Hua Chen. But there were also some rumors spreading in Dasha Dongzhou, saying that the Lu family must have done something wrong and offended someone they shouldn't have, otherwise, Hua Chen wouldn't have appeared at such a critical moment. The good thing was that the gossip in society was quickly forgotten, but family members and Li Bashan's attitude towards Hua Chen became increasingly harsh, all considering Hua Chen to be a jinx. And Li Mei, of course, would not have a good attitude towards Hua Chen either. After the incident last time, Hua Chen was regarded as the source of all disasters, the root of all calamities. What they didn't know was that Hua Chen was humbling himself to follow Li Mei, partly to fulfill his original promise, and partly because he wanted to take the opportunity to cultivate his body and return to his former peak. So Hua Chen turned a blind eye to Li Mei, letting her make him do household chores every day. There was already a housekeeper in the house, but she still made things difficult for Hua Chen, treating him like a servant. She wanted Hua Chen to not be able to bear this humiliation and take the initiative to separate from her, so as not to continue being ridiculed. 
However, she completely did not expect that Huo Chen seemed very obedient, with no complaints about being Li Mei's servant, and had already become accustomed to these humiliating days. Outside, the night was deep, but the moonlight seemed somewhat dim and sad. At this moment, Huo Chen carried a basin of foot washing water to Li Mei's side on the sofa, smiling. Meng Meng, let me wash your feet. Li Mei, wearing a bear shaped pajamas, put her fair and smooth jade feet into the basin to test the water temperature, immediately frowning. It's too hot. Are you trying to scald me? It's too hot, right? I'll add cold water right away. Huo Chen quickly turned and ran to the bathroom, and soon returned with a ladle of cold water to add to the foot washing basin. Li Mei clicked her tongue, still dissatisfied, and said, It's too cold again, are you trying to make me sick? Huo Chen was a little at a loss, knowing that Li Mei was deliberately making things difficult for him. These days, he didn't mind at all, anyway it was just a dream. If you think the current person is not happy, you can decisively separate from me, Li Mei said with a disdainful look. Meng Meng, you're still mad at me. It's not embarrassing to serve you. Let's not separate. The water is cold, right? I'll warm it up for you, and it won't be cold soon, Hu Chen sweetly said, decisively covering Li Mei's beautiful feet with his palm and gently placing them in the basin. Li Mei immediately felt shy, not expecting Hu Chen to be so shameless and take advantage of her. Subconsciously, she wanted to move her feet away, but Hu Chen held them firmly. In no time, she felt the originally slightly cold water slowly warming up, and she surprisingly felt a very comfortable sense of enjoyment. Then, she felt her whole body relax, and all the fatigue disappeared. Huo Chen, quickly pour me a basin of hot water too. I want to soak my feet. Zhao Yani, sitting on the side, immediately spoke in a commanding tone, also making things difficult for Huo Chen. I only serve my Meng Meng, not others, Huo Chen replied casually, not wanting to deal with Zhao Yani. Do you talk to your mother-in-law like this? Do you even understand manners? If you can't stand it, then get out of my house, Zhao Yani immediately exploded in anger. After Huo Chen came to their house, he barely talked to them, and when he did, he acted as if Zhao Yani owed him a great favor. In fact, Zhao Yani and Li Bashan did owe Huo Chen a great favor, but they refused to believe it themselves. If Shero is willing to leave with me, I can leave this house immediately, Huo Chen said with a sidelong glance. You useless person, a man without even his own house. My daughter won't go with a useless person like you. If you want my daughter to go with you, you have to buy me a villa, at least a few million. Otherwise, don't even think about it. Jiayani thought that since Hu Chen became her son-in-law and hadn't slept with Li Mei, he must have strong desires and wanted to take her daughter away, so she wouldn't easily let Hu Chen have her daughter. Wife, did you hear that? Mom said as long as I buy a villa worth a few million, you'll move out with me. Don't go back on your word, Hu Chen said with a smile glancing at Li Mei and then at Zhao Yani with a hint of disdain. Just now, he deliberately made Zhao Yani say those words. Buy the villa first. A man without a job and no income is useless to argue with. Make money first, Li Mei replied coldly. No problem, Huo Chan replied emotionlessly. He was already the owner of two of the most promising companies in the country. Was he afraid of not having a job? At this time, a special news report suddenly came on in the hall. The largest online shopping social platform in the country, the leading company in the online shopping industry, Ali Group, has successfully obtained the qualification for listing and will become a listed company in half a month. The total value of Ali Group is expected to exceed 1 trillion. It is reported that a major investor secretly used the largest bank in the country to hold over 50% of Ali Group's shares. Once Ali Group goes public, the net worth of this major investor will be at least over a trillion. Heavens, a trillion in net worth, that's enough for 10 lifetimes. If my daughter could marry this major investor, that would be great. Why is there such a big difference in people? My daughter's luck is just not good. Zhao Yani looked at the news and immediately started complaining. This amount of wealth made her eager to flatter, but Huo Chen felt nothing but disdain. This major investor was none other than him, and Ali Group was the industry he invested in a few years ago in Dasha Dongzhou. Seeing that Ali Group was about to succeed, it was time to start planning revenge in Dasha Dongzhou. Mom, you're overthinking it. I've already married him and everything is settled. Talking so much is useless. I'm tired, I'm going back to my room to sleep, Li Mei sighed and replied. In fact, Li Mei had already figured it out. As long as Hua Chen wasn't a scumbag, she hadn't lost her chastity, it was just a nominal marriage. It was just impossible for her to fully accept Hua Chen. What she most hoped for now was for Hua Chen to take the initiative to separate from her, to let her regain her freedom, so she wouldn't be ridiculed by her employees when she went to work, and her relatives and friends wouldn't look down on her. After Li Mei returned to her room, Zhao Yani continued to berate Hua Chen, but he resolutely ignored her and went back to his small room. 
Early the next morning, Li Mei, wearing cute pajamas, groggily washed up and went to the dining room to play with her phone. Suddenly, she was surprised. Where's my blue mountain coffee? Immediately, a cup of hot milk was placed in front of Li Mei. She thought it was brought by a servant and took a sip without looking. Why is it milk? Where's my coffee? Oh, Hu Chen, did you bring the coffee? Li Mei, who was used to drinking coffee, felt uncomfortable drinking milk and immediately questioned. You have a cold stomach. Don't drink coffee, which is stimulating to the intestines, every morning. This milk is sweetened with honey and is better for the stomach. Seeing Hu Chen come out of the kitchen wearing a floral apron, looking like a housewife, Li Mei frowned slightly, her gaze lingering on Hu Chen. Perhaps, after being together for a long time, she slowly found Hu Chen not so annoying. And, Hu Chen was not bad looking, tall and slim, with sharp eyebrows and starry eyes. If he paid attention to his appearance, he could be considered handsome. It's just a pity that the image of Hu Chen in her mind was really disappointing, and some handsomeness couldn't make up for it. Bring the coffee, I don't like milk. Li Mei's nose wrinkled in disgust. I've thrown away those harmful coffees. Hu Chen smiled foolishly. What did you say? That's the authentic Blue Mountain coffee I specially brought back from abroad. Do you know how expensive it is? Li Mei pouted at Hu Chen, her face full of anger. What's all this fuss about so early in the morning? Soon, Zhao Yani came downstairs. Hu Chen went back into the kitchen and came out with a plate of American-style nutritious breakfast, passing by Zhao Yani. Zhao Yani immediately smelled a tantalizing aroma, making her mouth water. Why does it smell so good? Did you put something in it? Zhao Yani blurted out without thinking. Mom, if you don't want to eat what I made, then don't eat it. Huo Chen responded emotionlessly. No, I can't miss out on something good. Zhao Yani snorted and took the breakfast from Huo Chen, starting to eat. Wife, I've prepared your favorite Italian steak for you. Immediately, Huo Chen went back to the kitchen and brought out an authentic steak, placing it in front of Li Mei with an extremely virtuous look. I don't want to eat. I have a lot of things to do today. I'm leaving. Li Mei pushed away the breakfast with complete dissatisfaction and went upstairs to change and prepare for work. She knew Huo Chen was trying to be good to her, but just making a meal wouldn't make her fall in love with him. Huo Chen looked at Li Mei's graceful figure with a gentle smile. If his enemies on the battlefield saw him now, they would probably be very shocked. The top general had become a son-in-law. A virtuous cooking husband? They probably couldn't imagine such a situation. Every time after Li Mei finished eating, he would send her to work like a virtuous wife. After some time, in the president's office of the MO group, Li Mei was busy. M.S. Li, there's someone outside who wants to see you. At this moment, Li Mei's assistant suddenly burst into the room. See me? Who is it? He said he's here to see his wife. This kind of mental illness, you just need to decisively let the security guard drive him away. Li Mei's beautiful face showed a very annoyed expression. The security guard couldn't stop him. The assistant hurriedly spoke. Do you want trouble? Call the police. Who dares to come to my company and cause trouble? Li Mei's eyebrows furrowed slightly. Even though there were often some mentally ill people coming to the company to find her, it was the first time she had heard that even the security guard couldn't stop them. That person just walked past the security guard, and they all froze and dared not move. The assistant also found it unimaginable. Li Mei decisively froze, and with a bang, the office door was suddenly knocked. Li Mei and the assistant looked towards the newcomer and found that Huo Chen had actually walked in. What are you here for? Li Mei immediately frowned and reproached. She had told Huo Chen not to come to the company to see her. Is he your husband, General Li? He looks quite handsome and sunny. The assistant immediately pointed to Huo Chen and spoke, as there were rumors that Li Mei had indeed held a wedding banquet a few days ago and had caused a scene. However, according to the rumors, her husband was a rural farmer who had married into the family. Handsome? Come on. Li Mei suddenly laughed as if she had heard a very funny joke and couldn't help but chuckle. Did her assistant have such mainstream tastes? However, her smile was like a spring breeze, intoxicating, and in Hu Chen's eyes, it was like a rare and delicate thread of affection. You go busy yourself. Li Mei's smile faded, and she immediately turned cold, asking the assistant to leave. Before leaving, the assistant also gave Hu Chen a few curious glances before closing the door and leaving. What do you want from me? Didn't I tell you not to come to the company? Li Mei reproached unhappily. Didn't you ask me to find a job? Since I passed by your company and you have time, why don't we have dinner together later? Huo Chen said gently. I don't have time to play with you. Li Mei decisively disagreed. Well, then I'll go home. Li Mei ignored him, so Huo Chen had to give up and prepare to leave. Wait. Li Mei suddenly remembered something and called out to Huo Chen. Wife, is there anything else? Huo Chen smiled. 
It seems like you still want to work. You're not just a deadbeat. I'll buy you a car for transportation. Li Mei rarely showed kindness. Buy a car? Hee <laughs> hee, my wife is the best to me. Huo Chen laughed, and his handsome face blossomed with a smile. Li Mei was truly a woman worth entrusting a lifetime to. It seemed that his eager attitude in recent days had worked, but he didn't want to be so high profile. He decisively let his wife buy him a car. Come with me. Li Mei glanced at Huo Chen indifferently, picked up her delicate coat and handbag, and walked out in high heels. Although a bit aloof, I like it. Hee <laughs> hee, sooner or later, I will melt her like spring water. Huo Chen's mouth curved, thinking to himself, and then followed. A few minutes later, Huo Chen pushed a newly bought electric scooter and walked out of the rabbit electric scooter store with a disappointed expression, alongside Li Mei. It turned out that Li Mei had bought an electric scooter for him. Would the war god, feared by countless powerful forces, still have an invincible aura when riding this electric scooter? But it was too shabby, and it was Li Mei who bought it for him, so he couldn't refuse. And riding an electric scooter bought by his wife wasn't embarrassing at all, it was quite happy. Now, he was just an ordinary retired person. You can pay me back for the car when you have earned some money from work. Li Mei spoke indifferently. She wouldn't give Huo Chen a free ride. After speaking, she decisively got into the Audi parked at the entrance of the electric scooter store. Then, he heard some mocking voices from the salespeople inside the electric scooter store. The world has really changed. The wife drives a good car, and the husband rides an electric scooter? Maybe this man is just relying on his looks, living off his wife. Such a beautiful woman is a pity. She actually married such a waste. After a while, a salesperson came out. Hey, you, move your electric bike away. You're blocking our business. A loser like you shouldn't affect our store's image, the salesperson said contemptuously, thinking that Huo Chen was just a useless person living off his wife. I have something to wait for here for a while, Huo Chen said coldly, looking at the time. Oh, you're just pretending. A person who even needs his wife to buy an electric bike, who cares about you? The salesperson immediately mocked. Huo Chen raised his head slowly, his eyes filled with disdain. Believe it or not, I can even buy your store. The salesperson was immediately frightened by Huo Chen's gaze and almost fell, rushing back into the store. You, if you continue to interfere with our business, we will take action. The store manager and several salespeople came out soon after. They were shouting as if Huo Chen had stolen something from them. You, a poor guy, still want to buy our store? Dream on. If you can buy it, I'll eat shit in front of you. At this moment, a car with the license plate number worth millions suddenly arrived and stopped decisively in front of the rabbit electric bike store. When the salespeople noticed, they were all shocked. How could such a car come to their store? Before long, a vigorous short-haired woman stepped out of the luxury car. She walked with unique grace and approached Huo Chen. The salespeople on the scene were stunned. This poor guy actually has such friends? These are two wealthy and beautiful women. Boss, what's the matter? The store manager and the salespeople were completely stunned to see the short-haired woman showing such respect to Huo Chen. I'm sorry to trouble you, Huo Chen nodded slightly and turned to the salespeople, his gaze emotionless. You just said I bought your store and that you would eat shit, right? The salespeople were immediately too scared to speak. A person who could call for a car worth millions to welcome him was undoubtedly wealthy. This time, they had truly underestimated him. I'm really sorry, we were blind, the store manager apologized hastily, his back feeling cold. You don't need to apologize to me, Huo Chen completely ignored these people. He would never bother with these insignificant ants. Tell me, how many electric bikes does your store have? We still have over a hundred in stock, the trembling store manager replied. He was already regretting it to the core. The store manager had a vague feeling that he might have to eat shit today. Surprisingly, although Huo Chen bought his store, he didn't make him eat shit. Instead, he asked the store manager to take the electric bikes to the outskirts and burn them one by one. Boss, big brother, these electric bikes were bought by you. Although they're not worth much, they're still your assets. How can you burn them? The store manager felt like his heart was bleeding at the thought of disposing of the electric bikes in this way. However, Huo Chen smiled and said, These are my things. I can dispose of them as I please. Hurry up! Huo Chen's tone was calm, but it carried an unparalleled power that overwhelmed the store manager. He was powerless to refuse and agreed on the spot. Huo Chen smiled faintly. The store manager was too weak and would never amount to anything. He shook his head and left. But at that moment, Wang Deng suddenly appeared and said anxiously, Master, the southern army is attacking with their troops. Huo Chen was first stunned, then squinted and smiled. The southern king is bold. I respect you as a man. The southern king is definitely well prepared this time. Should we summon the dragon prison army to resist them? Wang Deng said with some trepidation. 
If it takes some effort to deal with the Prince of Jinan, then it would be a matter of life and death to deal with a whole army. Hua Chen's strength has not fully recovered, and it is very likely that there will be unexpected incidents in the battle. This is the result that Wang Dang least wants to see. However, Hua Chen just sneered coldly, I respect the Prince of Jinan because he has the courage to come to me, and bringing an army over, then I will let him know what it means to have no return. How sacred is the Lock Dragon Prison Army, to deal with them? He, the Prince of Jinan, is not worthy. Wang Dang's eyes lit up, are you going to? No, you can't. That's right, I'm going to meet him alone, the Prince of Jinan, Hua Chen said decisively, and then disappeared in a flash. Wang Dang only reacted then, raised his head and looked around, but couldn't find a trace of Hua Chen. Not good, Lord Ho likes to take the initiative, this is too dangerous, Lord Ho, wait for me. Wang Dang followed suit and ran out like the wind. The next morning, Hua Chen appeared in the largest villa complex in Dengzhou, Xia country. He walked forward slowly, a hint of killing intent faintly flashing on his body. Several security guards were dozing off at the gate, suddenly a sound rang in their ears, and the security guards suddenly looked up to see a strange man walking towards them. Dressed plainly, with a common appearance, he looked as ordinary as can be. Damn, where did you come from, disturbing the Lord's meditation, get lost. The security guards grumbled, pointing, and scolding Hua Chen. These people are usually arrogant, relying on being security guards in the wealthy area, they don't put ordinary people in their eyes. Hua Chen never gets angry with the weak, but instead smiled and said, Sorry to disturb, can you tell me where the Prince of Jinan lives? Damn, this is the residence of the Prince of Jinan, all you can see are his villas, why are you asking us? Damn, how dare you call the Prince of Jinan by name? Don't you want to live? Where did this country bumpkin come from, if you don't leave, we'll have to take action. The security guards argued and woke up the head security guard behind them. He slowly got up, walked to the gate, glanced at Hua Chen, and said coldly, No, who the hell are you? The Prince of Jinnan is not someone you can just see? Get the hell out of here, or I'll beat you to death. The head security guard waved his fist, indicating that he was going to hit Hua Chen on the head. Hua Chen suddenly found it amusing and laughed unintentionally. The head security guard's face instantly turned livid, How dare you laugh? I'll call someone to beat you up right now. Hua Chen shook his head, smiling, it seems I've come to the right place. But, the Prince of Jinnan's dogs seem a bit fierce. What? Shu, the scene suddenly became quiet. Captain, it seems like he's insulting us by calling us dogs. Bastard, we are the Prince of Jinnan's security guards, and you're asking for death. Several security guards couldn't bear it and rushed forward. These security guards have extremely poor quality, calling them the Prince of Jinnan's dogs is already giving them too much credit, at best they are just the trash of the sewer. But they are hired by the Prince of Jinnan, usually they act arrogantly in the name of the Prince of Jinnan, but now being confronted by Hua Chen, they were all hopping mad, their faces turning green. Especially the head security guard, half of his face was twitching with anger. You bastard, this is the first time in my life that someone has insulted me like this. I'll kill you. With a swish, the head security guard drew a baton from his waist and raised it to hit Hua Chen on the head. This move was extremely fast, an ordinary person wouldn't be able to react. But Hu Chen just lightly raised his hand and caught the head security guard's wrist, then twisted it gently. With a crack, the bones in the head security guard's hand broke. Ah, my hand. The head security guard screamed in pain, quickly pulling back his right hand, which hung limp in the air above his wrist, looking extremely miserable. Hu Chen clapped his hands, looking at the head security guard with amusement. He had used a military grappling technique. One move to control the enemy, fast and precise. My hand. My hand. You bastard, I'll fight you, come on, kill him. The head security guard, pale with pain, gritted his teeth and ordered his men to charge forward. The rest of the security guards were already itching to fight, and when they saw their leader being beaten, they immediately became furious and shouted loudly, wielding rubber sticks and charging forward. Hua Chen remained calm, casually buttoning his cuff as the first security guard approached. With a slow step, Hua Chen dodged the guard's attack and struck another guard on the head with his stick. The injured guard screamed and rolled on the ground. Meanwhile, in a concealed room in the villa area, a man was engaging in intimate activities with four or five women. One of the women passionately embraced the man, gasping and saying, Tianhao, I'm not satisfied yet, I want more. The man, Tianhao, pushed the woman away impatiently, saying, I'm tired of you, get lost. Just as the man pushed the woman away, a commotion outside interrupted him. Angrily, he covered himself with a towel and hurried out. As he reached the door, a security guard fell from the sky and landed heavily at his feet. Tianhao was taken aback and demanded to know who was responsible for the attack. 
He then saw a man standing proudly amidst the fallen guards, seemingly in control of the situation. Tian Hao angrily confronted the man, who revealed himself to be Huo Chen. Enraged, Tian Hao insulted Huo Chen, but Huo Chen remained composed and asserted the strength and resilience of a soldier. As the confrontation escalated, a woman emerged from the room and pleaded with Tian Hao, but he dismissed her and boasted about his power. The girl turned her head slightly, her blushing face looking like it could squeeze out water. She glanced at Huo Chen with longing in her eyes, such a strong man. Lord Hua, what a powerful name. He's nothing, my lord will take care of him tomorrow, but I didn't expect him to come on his own today, Jin Tianhao said as he raised his towel and continued, Kid, my lord's business with you isn't finished yet. Just say it, how do you want to die? Huo Chen's face suddenly turned cold, I'm sorry, I want all of you to die. You, how dare you? Jin Tianhao was shocked, never expecting Huo Chen to be so arrogant. He pointed at Huo Chen and shouted, You're just a stinky soldier, I'll kill you right now. Whoever can take him down, I'll give you a million in cash. The others were already wary of Huo Chen, but at the sound of such a high reward, they all rushed forward, eager to try and take down Huo Chen. Suddenly, dozens of security guards appeared. This batch of security guards was far more powerful and capable than before. Brothers, did you hear that? A million in cash, if we miss this opportunity, it's gone. This guy doesn't look that tough, shall we go together? Can he really beat all of us? Let's go together, kill him, and split the money. The security guards immediately discussed their strategy, preparing to attack and take down their opponent. Just then, Wang Deng came bustling over. Boss, you're hard to find, Jin Tian Nan is gathering his forces, why did you come here? After speaking, Wang Deng looked ahead, where several security guards had surrounded Hua Chen, clearly intending to corner him. This is Jin Tian Nan's stronghold. Hua Chen looked ahead, his eyes shining. Wang Deng immediately understood and coldly said, I see, but these security guards are all lowlifes, it's beneath you to take action. Let me handle this, it's a good opportunity for me to stretch my muscles. Fine. Hua Chen stepped back. Wang Deng walked forward step by step, occasionally moving his arms and shoulders. Then he walked up to the group of security guards. Who's first? Or are you all coming at once? Damn, where did this guy come from? Too much talk, let's kill him first. The security guards, excited at the sudden appearance of another million, immediately changed direction, preparing to take down Wang Deng first. The first one to charge at him had a pair of nunchucks and started swinging them from a distance, making a swishing sound. But in less than three seconds, Wang Deng solved the fight with a left kick. Next were a man with an extendable baton and a strong man with brass knuckles. Faced with Wang Deng, these two barely had time to react before being sent flying. Clapping his hands, Wang Deng smiled at Hua Chen, Lord, how was my performance? Any improvement? Hua Chen gave Wang Deng a cold look, six seconds and five, three seconds slower than expected, your reaction is a bit slow. Wang Deng was stunned, then laughed heartily, Lord, I was just playing with them for three seconds, I won't play next time, quick and decisive. Their conversation truly shocked everyone. Six seconds and five minus three seconds, isn't that three seconds and five? To take down three trained fighters in three seconds and five, it was unheard of, terrifying. Some even thought, Wang Deng used Wing Chun, if those three had moved a bit faster, he might have taken even less than three seconds. This was a rhythm that normal people couldn't achieve. Jin Tianhao was very surprised, he looked Wang Deng up and down and said, Good kid, you seem to have some skills. But I'm curious, with your abilities, why follow a lowly soldier? How much can he pay you? Or how much benefit can he give you? Jin Tianhao rubbed his nose and continued, How about this, I'll offer you a 5 million annual salary, including room and board, and a car. Work for me, protect me well, and I promise you a lifetime of wealth and glory. After speaking, Jin Tianhao smiled at Wang Deng. He knew exactly what these soldiers wanted. Women, money, just one of them can bring him under control. If not, then increase the amount, or give both together. So, Jin Tianhao basically knew the answer and was waiting for the other party to speak. However, what he didn't know was that women and money are useful to most people, but to Wang Deng, they were like dung. The former Wang Deng was also a passionate young man. He wanted to stand out, achieve success, and return with honor, achieving a career. But when he really started, he found that these goals were too difficult, especially when he encountered Hua Chen. His so-called ideals, so-called glory, wealth, fame, and fortune all vanished. Even if he had spoken up at the beginning, he could have at least obtained a position as a staff officer in the war zone. However, he gave it all up. Now, all of Wang Deng's wishes are to follow Hua Chen, and he has no other thoughts. As for money, sorry, even if he were given all the money in the world, Wang Deng would not be moved, let alone change his mind and choose another master. 
Wang Deng hesitated to speak, his mind filled with thoughts of Hu Chen, and his expression became increasingly solemn. It was Hu Chen who laughed and said, Hey, Wang Deng, speak up, the opportunity to get rich is here, 5 million, and in two years it will be 10 million, and it might even increase. What a great opportunity, you must seize it. Wang Deng quickly turned his head, looked seriously at Hu Chen, and then laughed heartily, Ha, huh, boss, you really know how to joke. I've been with you for so long, and you still don't understand me? Besides, Wang Deng turned his head back, looked at Jin Tianhao, and said slowly, You may not know how powerful Lord Hui is. If I follow you, won't I end up dying with you? Jin Tianhao's face changed suddenly. What did he mean by saying this? Die together? Could it be that even someone as strong as Wang Deng is afraid of Hua Chen? This also shows that Hua Chen's strength has reached an incredible level. Good, good. You're all so fierce. Let my fierce beast show you how powerful it is. Jin Tianhao stepped back and whistled towards a distant iron cage. With a swoosh, a half-human-sized black mass shot out from the darkness. As everyone focused their eyes, they saw two shiny eyes in front of the mass, shining like tactical flashlights. It's a Tibetan Mastiff. Someone in the crowd shouted, and several security guards retreated. The Tibetan Mastiff roared, revealing its thick teeth, emitting a bloody breath that made people's tears flow. After a few roars, the Tibetan Mastiff obediently walked to Jin Tianhao's side. Jin Tianhao patted the Tibetan Mastiff's head, pointed at Wang Deng and Hu Chen, and said, Go, I'll allow you to eat live meat today, go charge, eat while it's hot. With a roar, the mention of live meat ignited the Tibetan Mastiff's wild nature. The Tibetan Mastiff charged forward, passing several security guards who had been knocked unconscious, lightly stepping on their faces and bodies, causing several blood holes to appear, continuously spewing blood. The onlookers were terrified, some even cowering on the ground. Hee hee, no matter how tough you are, you're still just a person. I don't believe you've ever fought a beast. Air bow, bite to your heart's content. Jin Tianhao continued to urge from behind. On the other side, seeing the Tibetan Mastiff, Wang Dang actually took a step back, and as the Tibetan Mastiff advanced, Wang Dang also unconsciously retreated. However, just as he took two steps back, Hu Chen grabbed Wang Dang and casually said, It's just a dog, what's there to be afraid of, I'm here. Wang Dang turned to look at Hu Chen, his expression seeming to say, Are you sure? Hu Chen nodded, then stood in front, staring at the Tibetan Mastiff with determination. The Tibetan Mastiff had been specially trained, highly aggressive, with a powerful bite force that could almost snap a wrist-thick steel bar. Moreover, the Tibetan Mastiff was very obedient, doing whatever its master commanded, and would not give up until it achieved its goal. However, strangely, this time the Tibetan Mastiff was unusually calm, not even making a sound. Strange, what's wrong with this beast? It used to get so excited when it saw people, almost wanting to swallow them whole. Why is it so quiet this time? Jin Tian Nan couldn't understand it. What Jin Tian Hao didn't know was that animals have spirituality and a strong sixth sense, which allows them to identify the strength of their target from their aura. If the target is weaker than themselves, the mastiff would immediately pounce and tear it apart with its teeth and claws. If the target is stronger, it would likely growl and wait for the right moment. But this mastiff was different from any other time. It was actually lying obediently on the ground, wagging its tail nonstop in front of Hu Chen. Everyone was astonished, feeling at a loss for words. Jin Tian Hao was the most shocked, as he couldn't figure out what was wrong with the Mastiff. All he knew was that the Mastiff seemed to have seen something terrifying, losing its desire to attack and instead behaving very docile. Following the Mastiff's gaze, it landed on Hu Chen. What had he done? Jin Tian Hao was puzzled. Just then, Hu Chen deliberately glared at the Mastiff, and it immediately shivered, whimpered, and covered its head with its paws, collapsing on the ground. After a while, a pale yellow liquid flowed from under the Mastiff, filling the air with a foul smell. The Mastiff was extremely loyal and would die for its master's commands, but upon seeing Hu Chen, it immediately felt a strong pressure. Initially, the Mastiff wanted to resist and confront this force with its will, but it only lasted less than a minute before its legs gave out. Perhaps the dog had never encountered such a situation in its life. It was not an exaggeration to say that there was a scent of death on Hu Chen. At that moment, Jin Tian Hao's worldview quickly collapsed and even faced fundamental destruction. It was at that moment that Jin Tian Hao suspected whether Hua Chen had used some kind of spell to make a bloodthirsty beast so obedient. Jin Tian Hao snorted and pointed at Hua Chen, shouting, All right, I understand now. So you've tampered with my precious dog. Everyone, come and see what this scoundrel has done. How shameless and despicable. The crowd murmured in agreement, saying, So that's it, tampering with someone else's dog in advance, how despicable and shameless. If you have the guts, confront the dog's owner. What's the point of messing with a dog? This method is too despicable, it's simply inhuman. 
The crowd knew they couldn't match Hua Chen in strength, but they could use this incident to morally suppress him. In any case, Hua Chen had to suffer a tarnished reputation. However, Hua Chen just smiled faintly and said, Heh, training a dog into a rabbit, today I'll show you what it means to train a military dog. After that, Hua Chen slowly squatted down, beckoning to the mastiff with his finger. The mastiff actually stood up and walked towards Hua Chen, whimpering softly. Everyone was shocked. How could the mastiff be so obedient? It seemed like the mastiff had recognized Hua Chen as its master. What about the promise of having only one master in its life? What about eternal loyalty? Everyone was bewildered, except for Wang Deng, who smiled knowingly. He knew Hua Chen very well. Climbing from the lowest ranks to his current position was not just based on strength. For example, now, Hua Chen was using military dog training methods. Just think back to when Hua Chen had tamed the world's top fierce dog, Xiao Tian, considered a textbook figure for training military dogs. Although the mastiff in front of them was fierce, compared to Xiao Tian, it was like a baby, making it much easier to train. Jin Tian Hao looked on in astonishment as the mastiff rolled on the ground and licked Hua Chen's toes, its silly appearance completely different from before. The fact proved that Hua Chen had already subdued the dog. How is this possible? Jin Tian Hao looked at the scene in front of him in astonishment and muttered, Strange, I trained for several years to achieve this, but you, in just a few minutes, have made everyone so obedient to you. How is that possible? Hua Chen smiled faintly and said, What do you think? Jin Tian Hao was so angry that his teeth itched. The security guards under his command lay motionless on the ground, not knowing whether they were alive or dead. Even the most loyal dog had turned against him. With such a special brew, there was no need to fight against others. Jin Tianhao was so angry that he almost fainted. He then looked at those who were still trembling and said sternly, You, you, all of you, attack, I will pay 10 million for each of you. The security guards standing in the corner did not move, staring ahead with fear of catching Hua Chen's attention. At this moment, Hua Chen was no longer the same as before. He now had a mastiff, whose combat power had increased by who knows how many levels. Is there no one? 20 million, 30 million. As long as you can injure him, I will pay 30 million. Jin Tianhao was trembling with anger. He made up his mind that even if it meant bankrupting himself, he would injure Hua Chen. As the saying goes, where there is a large sum of money, there will be brave men. Under the high reward, there were indeed people who stepped forward eagerly. Hua Chen laughed when he saw this and patted the mastiff's head. The mastiff immediately understood and let out a muffled roar as it pounced forward. Like a bullet or a black lightning bolt, the mastiff charged accurately. The security guards who stepped forward had never seen such a beast before and were so scared that their legs gave way, causing them to fall to the ground. The mastiff pounced on them, using its front paws to pin down their chests, causing a pool of red blood to flow from their ribcages. The security guards, terrified, lay on the ground, not daring to move, allowing the mastiff to do as it pleased. The mastiff let out another roar and sniffed the faces of the security guards, feeling in complete control. It then opened its mouth and licked the face of one of the guards. With a single swipe, the guard's face was immediately peeled, blood gushing out, almost revealing the white bones underneath. Ah! The guard screamed in pain, his mouth and nose covered in blood foam, unable to move. The mastiff's paw was like a steel plate, firmly pressing him down. The others watched in horror. What a ferocious beast! It had only licked him once, if it had bitten him, half of his head would have been gone. Seeing this gruesome scene, Jin Tianhao involuntarily took a step back, afraid that if Hua Chen became unhappy, the mastiff would attack him. Enough! Hua Chen, what do you want to do? I warn you, this is Jin Nanshan's territory. If you touch me, you won't be able to leave here alive. Jin Tianhao became extremely flustered and said, Do you want money? I can give you as much as you want. Do you think I need money? Hua Chen waved his hand, showing an extremely indifferent attitude, then his expression suddenly changed. I just want to see how powerful Jin Nan Tian is and if he dares to touch me. With that, Hua Chen rushed forward and grabbed Jin Tianhao's arm, breaking it with a snap. Ah, it hurts. Please, don't kill me. Jin Tianhao wailed, screaming loudly. Too noisy, Hua Chen said, then reached out to grab Jin Tianhao's neck. Stop. At that moment, Jin Nantian suddenly arrived and loudly stopped Hua Chen. It's grandpa, grandpa is back, grandpa, save me. Jin Tianhao sought his savior and shouted loudly. Hua Chen, you have some nerve. Jin Nantian roared angrily and rushed forward. Hua Chen then threw Jin Tianhao to the ground and looked at him with a cold expression. Hua Chen, you have repeatedly harmed my family. I will make you pay. Seeing his beloved grandson screaming in pain, Jin Nantian was filled with rage, and his killing intent seemed to be on the verge of erupting. However, Hua Chen remained unusually calm. Seeing Jin Nantian seething with anger, 
He not only ignored him but also stepped over Jin Tianhao. You said someone heard you? Is that so? Huo Chen exerted force under his feet, and the bones in Jin Tianhao's chest immediately made a cracking sound. Ah, grandfather, save me. Jin Tianhao felt like his bone marrow was being trampled out, crying out in misery. Stop, please stop. Despite being a powerful figure like Jin Nantian, seeing his grandson being trampled underfoot left him powerless, only hoping for Huo Chen to stop. Huo Chen faintly smiled and said, I can stop, but what about you? After speaking, Huo Chen pointed to a man behind Jin Nantian. This man was about one, seven meters tall, wearing a black tracksuit and a low-brimmed orange duckbill cap, making it impossible to see his face. The man's physique was exceptionally robust, with shoulders twice as wide as a normal person's, hands in his pockets, looking like an inverted triangle from a distance. Jin Nantian was stunned, his expression filled with astonishment. Standing behind him was the strongest martial monk of today, with combat strength ranking among the top. Due to his extraordinary martial prowess, he managed to establish himself in the martial world by relying on his fists. Jin Nantian had long known that Huo Chen was here, and the main reason he dared to come alone was largely due to the martial monk. He was well aware of the monk's strength, which was more than enough to deal with Huo Chen. However, this martial monk behind him had been hiding very well. How did Huo Chen discover him? Good eyesight, but it ends here. The monk, named Han Zhang, saw through the other's discovery and without hesitation, swiftly extended his hand in a claw-like shape and charged forward. Han Zhang's momentum was strong, taking less than two seconds to reach Huo Chen. His five-fingered claws pierced through the air, whistling as they rushed forward. Huo Chen opened his eyes, effortlessly dodging the attack, and said with a smile, he he, it seems that today is either your death or my survival. I've come to the right place. Immediately, Huo Chen raised his leg high and kicked Han Zhang in the back. With a loud bang, Han Zhang flew like a cannonball, crashing heavily onto the cement slab next to Jin Nantian. The tremendous impact turned the cement into powder, filling the air with choking dust and debris. Some strength. Huo Chen walked over, ready to see the true face of this martial monk. Boom! The monk stood up from the ruins, wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth, and coldly said, Kid, you're the first one to injure me. I was just testing you earlier, but this time, I'll use all my strength. The monk, Han Zhang, took a horse stance, extending his hands flat, his muscles bulging, resembling a dragon and tiger, then rotated his fists towards Huo Chen. Huo Chen smiled slightly, retracting one hand in front of everyone and slowly extending the other to block the attack. Bang! Han Zhang's fist struck Huo Chen's palm, emitting a piercing roar and a huge shockwave that lingered in the surroundings. So strong! Han Zhang quickly retracted his fist, looking at Huo Chen in astonishment. The force of this punch was enough to crush metal and stone, and no one could directly withstand it. Not only did Huo Chen catch the fierce punch, but he also stood in front of him as if nothing had happened, looking relaxed. Then, Huo Chen extended his fingers, completely enveloping Han Zhang's fist. Not good! Han Zhang inwardly exclaimed, immediately gathering all his strength for defense. As expected, the next moment, an extremely strong aura emanated from Huo Chen's palm, following Han Zhang's fist, and a massive force exploded at his arm. Boom! Three waves of energy burst from Han Zhang's body, shattering his upper body's clothes, revealing a bronze-colored physique. Ah! Han Zhang staggered backward, his body emitting a gong-like sound. This is... Iron cloth shirt? Huo Chen was very curious. With a bronze-like skin, this was the highest level of iron cloth shirt. It was said that in this state, the iron cloth shirt could easily withstand a standard rifle bullet. It was no wonder that being hit by that aura left him unscathed. He, young and quite knowledgeable. Not bad. This is the strongest defense of the Buddhist sect, the golden bell and iron cloth. Han Zhang was quite proud, after all, no one had been able to break his golden body. Kid, give up, you are not my opponent. Han Zhang said lightly, then clasped his hands together, closed his eyes slightly, and his ancient bronze skin on his body became brighter and turned into a reddish-orange color, and his skin also showed signs of hardening. At this moment, Han Zhang almost turned into a golden Buddha. However, Huo Chen remained calm and said, enough of your nonsense, really annoying. Then, Huo Chen rushed out directly, reached out his hand, took advantage of the opponent's distraction, and struck Han Zhang's temple with his hand, then bent down and tapped Han Zhang's waist, and finally the Qi Hai Acupoint. Bang! 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 After three strikes, the color on Han Zhang's skin suddenly faded, and the extremely strong and powerful aura just now disappeared. In the next second, Han Zhang actually returned to his normal appearance. What did you do? My iron cloth. Han Zhang's hands were still clasped together, not moving at all, and he didn't even know what had just happened, how he had suddenly been beaten back to his original form. And this, Huo Chen said to himself, 
then quickly raised his hand and lightly tapped Han Zhang's forehead. Ugh! Han Zhang spat out a large mouthful of blood, and his body collapsed like a deflated ball, soft and lying on the ground. He couldn't even understand how he had been easily broken through by Huo Chen. Not only had his iron cloth been broken, but all the blood vessels in his body had been pierced. Han Zhang, lying on the ground, was already unable to think. He had long been trapped in the fear of being controlled by Hua Chen, unable to extricate himself. Clap! At this moment, a crisp applause came from behind Hua Chen. Not bad, good skills, but, it's a pity. It was the voice of Jin Nan Tian. Cold and mocking, it seemed that Han Zhang's death had no impact on him at all. Hua Chen was about to turn around, but he felt something dark pointing at the back of his head. What does this mean? Hua Chen asked. It doesn't mean anything, I just think you're very powerful. Let's see if you can dodge the bullets, Jin Nantian said. In fact, Jin Nantian had long anticipated that Huo Chen would resist, so as a precaution, he had arranged for a marksman to come over, with the aim of eliminating any unforeseen factors. But he never expected that this sudden situation would appear in this way. The marksman was very confident, and didn't even need to aim, just shook the muzzle in the general direction of Huo Chen. The muzzle was less than 30 meters away from Huo Chen. As a professional killer, as long as he pulled the trigger, a big hole would be blown out of Hua Chen's forehead. This was the power of a large caliber pistol, and it was also a special gift prepared by Jin Nantian for Hua Chen. Knowing the current situation, Hua Chen smiled faintly, seemingly ignoring the gunman. You don't need to live in this world, I'll send you on your way, and remember my name when you get to the Yen Wang Palace. Jin Nantian was very arrogant, thinking that victory was in his hands, and the next step was to take Hua Chen's life, to settle the grudge in his heart. But what he never expected was that Hua Chen didn't even react at all, and even in front of the gunman, he said to Wang Deng in the distance, Why are you still hesitating? It's time for you to take action. Bastard, enough of you. Shoot him. Jin Nantian felt as if he had been greatly humiliated, and immediately urged the gunman to open fire. Bang! 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 The gunman's reaction was also quick, and in the blink of an eye, several shots were fired. After a choking smoke, Hua Chen actually stood firm, still standing in place? What's going on? The gunman was surprised, staring at Hua Chen, then at his own gun. He wanted to confirm whether the problem was with the gun or with the other party. After a careful check, the gunman found that the gun was good and the bullets were new. So the problem was with Hua Chen. And when the gunman looked at Hua Chen again, he was completely baffled. Hua Chen didn't know when his hand was protecting the back of his head, and he actually caught these three bullets. Clang clang clang. Hua Chen released his hand, and the three bullet heads fell to the ground, still spinning at high speed. This is impossible. Almost at the same time, everyone exclaimed in fear. They only heard a few gunshots, but they had never seen how Hua Chen made his move. It's no exaggeration to say that Hua Chen's hand suddenly appeared at the back of his head without any warning. What's even more terrifying is that when he fired the gun, Hua Chen didn't move a muscle. This is a large caliber pistol, and the impact of a bullet is equivalent to that of a heavy truck driving at full speed. Hua Chen didn't move at all. Could it be that he neutralized these three powerful impacts? No, I don't believe it. This can't be true. The shooter collapsed in an instant, then raised the gun again and fired several shots at the back of Hua Chen's head. Bang bang bang. The shooter emptied the magazine directly. However, Hua Chen remained motionless, catching all the bullets with his hands. This scene exceeded everyone's understanding. No one knew how Hua Chen did it, let alone when he made his move. These people only knew one thing. The movements of Hua Chen's hands had already exceeded the normal range of human vision. Damn it, a few shots should be enough, enough is enough. Wang Dang jumped out and snatched the gun back, then forcefully broke it in half with his hands and slammed it on the shooter's face, sending the shooter flying and crashing onto a distant rock. You don't know your place. Let me tell you, when you pointed the gun at Lord Ho, you were already a dead man. Wang Dang said coldly, but the shooter was already dead, so he couldn't hear it. Instead, the people around the king of Jinan were scared and scattered. Thump! The king of Jinan knelt weakly on the ground, whether out of fear or something else, and tremblingly said, I know I was wrong, please don't kill me. Wang Deng finally looked at the king of Jinan and said with a smile, regretting it now? Where's your so-called army? Shall we call them over for a play? The king of Jinan's legs went even weaker at the mention of calling the army to deal with Huachin. This was top secret information, how could it have leaked out? What's even more absurd is that after Hua Chen learned of his plan, instead of dodging or hiding, he took the initiative to attack. Thinking of Hua Chen's current performance, the king of Jinan finally understood. Hua Chen's strength had already exceeded everyone's expectations. Even close-range gunfire couldn't harm him, let alone those armies. Calling them to deal with Hua Chen would only result in a pile of cannon fodder. 
At this moment, the king of Jinnan's heart turned to ashes. He finally understood why Huichen was so tough, because his strength was there for all to see. This was Huichen's capital. I was wrong, I won't dare again, I'll disband the army now. Please spare my life, I'll give you anything you want. The king of Jinnan caught out again and begged for mercy. Spare your dog's life, that's not impossible, but you have to tell Lord Ho. Wang Dang said. The king of Jinnan hurriedly crawled over and caught out to Huichen twice, then said, Grandpa, I'll call you Grandpa, spare my life. Okay, but you have to hand over all your assets to me. Huichen knew that the king of Jinnan valued money more than his life, so he made this condition. Unexpectedly, the king of Jinnan agreed without hesitation. This surprised Huichen. He had wanted to vent his anger, but seeing the other party begging like a dog on the ground and handing over all his assets, Huichen reluctantly agreed for the first time. At this moment, the king of Jinnan seemed to have gone through the gates of hell, not daring to resist at all, obediently following orders. But in his heart, he was thinking that he would have to find an opportunity to take revenge on Huichen in the future. Huichen didn't even consider what the next step for the prince of Jinnan would be. The prince of Jinnan had handed over all his assets, so even if he were to make a comeback, it would be a matter of more than 10 years later. More than 10 years later, who knows how the world will have changed. Let's go, Hua Chen waved his hand, signaling Wang Dang and a few others to leave. Walking to the car, Hua Chen, for the first time, took the driver's seat and let Wang Dang sit in the passenger seat. Wang Dang was a little surprised. Ah, Lord Ho, what are you doing? If we're going to drive, I should be the one driving. How can you do this? Quickly get down, I'll drive. Wang Dang hurriedly walked over. Hua Chen smiled faintly and said, go to the side. I'm in a good mood today, so I'll let you drive for once. Sit properly for me. Wang Dang was stunned, looking at Hua Chen, wondering if he was joking. Hua Chen's expression was very serious, and his hand had already started shifting gears. Wow, this is actually true. Lord Ho is actually letting me drive. Wang Dang was overjoyed, and then happily sat in the passenger seat. When the car started, Wang Dang even remembered to take a photo of himself. Lord Ho letting him drive was something he could boast about for a lifetime. What are you laughing at? Sit tight. Hua Chen stepped on the gas pedal, and the car shot off, disappearing into the night in an instant. Several hours later, Hua Chen leisurely arrived at his old residence. There was a time when Hua Chen's old residence was bustling with people coming and going. Now, it was deserted and desolate, making it hard to accept. But strangely, even with such a desolate entrance, there were still a few red gift boxes placed. Hua Chen didn't want to open them, and didn't want to open them, so he glanced at them and turned to enter the room. Hua Chen, you're back. The first person to see Hua Chen was naturally Li Xiaomei. Li Xiaomei walked over with a smile on her face, exuding a happy smile. Hua Chen felt a little strange, and thinking about the things placed at the entrance, couldn't help but ask, Mother, what's wrong with you today? Did someone come to the house? Yes, someone came. Li Xiaomei took off her apron, sat down slowly, drank a glass of water in one gulp, as if only this could extinguish the fire in her heart, and then said, It's someone who runs a martial arts gym. Oh, that young man is so polite and talkative, he told me everything. He's also diligent and has good taste. As she spoke, Li Xiaomei pointed ahead, and Hua Chen looked over. The most dirty and messy utility room had now become clean and tidy, as if it had been renovated. He even helped clean our house? Hua Chen was a little puzzled. Yes, oh, you know, young people nowadays, they clean the house without even knowing us, I feel a little embarrassed. Li Xiaomei said, and then laughed, which made Hua Chen feel very puzzled. After a pause, Li Xiaomei took out a red piece of paper from the drawer. This is an invitation, take a look. Hua Chen took it with both hands, opened it, and inside was a message about the master's birthday, and that he must attend. This was a bit strange, he had just returned a few days ago, how did the master know? Hua Chen, this is for you too. At this time, Hua Sihai also walked in from outside, handing over a red leather notebook. Hua Chen flipped through the notebook and asked Hua Sihai, Dad, who sent this, and what do they want? Hua Chen knew the situation at home was very poor, so poor that he could hardly hold his head up, and it was not enough to have a so-called martial arts gym come to invite him. I don't know if you remember, when you were practicing martial arts back then, there was a senior brother named Zhao Tian. He had been practicing martial arts in the shop, but for some reason, he disappeared for a while. Now he has inexplicably reappeared. By the way, this is a birthday banquet, it's very likely that it's a celebration for your master, so you should go with them. Hua Sihai said. Hua Chen stopped and thought for a moment, indeed there was a person named Zhao Tian back then. In my impression, this person is very strong and was once known as a hidden powerhouse. However, this person is a bit lazy and has some issues with their character. Later, we didn't have much contact. 
Huo Sihai must know about Zhao Tian's dark history and seems a bit worried. When speaking, his tone is a bit strange. Huo Qin just smiled, patted Huo Sihai on the shoulder, and comforted him, saying, Dad, rest assured, I have my own arrangements for this matter. Naturally, Huo Qin will give a big gift to this mentor, and it won't be inferior to others. So, Huo Qin quickly had lunch and headed to the antique street with Wang Dang. With the previous experience, Huo Qin has the ability to spot genuine items at a glance. The antique street is a mix of good and bad, with countless so-called treasures, some fake and marked at high prices, and some real ones treated as junk. What Huo Qin needs to do is to find treasures among this junk. So, the two of them arrived at the largest store on the antique street, Moonlight Pavilion. It is filled with various treasures, and the storefront is magnificent. The three upper and lower layers of the huge hollow structure are the most exquisite, and with the embellishment of crystal lights, the entire attic becomes beautiful. Even in the Moonlight Pavilion, it would be mistaken for a private club if it were outside. There are many people in the Moonlight Pavilion. Huo Chen squeezed in during the chaos. He didn't immediately choose treasures but instead set his eyes on a young woman. Because he looked at her a little longer, Wang Deng laughed and said, Lord Ho, have you taken a liking to that girl? I'll find someone to help you get her. Huo Chen quickly turned his head and glared at Wang Deng, be serious, we are here to do business. Wang Deng smirked and didn't say anything else. Huo Chen continued to stare at the woman without turning his eyes away. When the woman turned to the side, Huo Chen also turned to the side to see her profile. Is it really her? Huo Chen murmured, seemingly deeply lost in memories. That year, she chose to study abroad, leaving Huo Chen alone in Huaxia. It was from that time that Huo Chen and this woman lost contact. Now, just seeing a familiar figure that resembles that woman has stirred up endless thoughts in Huo Chen. Perhaps sensing someone looking at her, the woman slowly turned around. When she saw Huo Chen, she exclaimed in surprise, Is it you, Huo Chen? It's me, Huo Chen replied very briefly, but between their eyes, a strange feeling arose. The woman's name is Yang Qing, a companion of Huo Chen since childhood. Later, Yang Cheng went abroad to study, while Huo Chen went far away. The decades-long relationship dissipated in a day, and now, meeting each other, there is always an indescribable feeling. It's been so many years. I never expected to meet you here. Are you doing well? After Yang Qing finished speaking, her face turned red instantly, and she looked at Huo Chen blankly, feeling a bit awkward. It's okay. I'm here to pick out a few things for my master. Huo Chen also felt a bit uncomfortable and could only respond to whatever she asked. Oh, I'm also here to pick out a gift. I just returned from abroad a few days ago, and it happens to be my father's birthday, so I came to see if I could find a few useful things. After Yang Qing finished speaking, she fell silent, her eyes fixed on Huo Chen, subconsciously licking her lips, and the atmosphere around them suddenly became strange. When they were young, they could talk about anything, but now, they are like strangers. They didn't know what to say after a few words. Wang Deng, who was on the side, held back his laughter and secretly reached into his pocket, wanting to take a picture of Huo Chen. Huo Chen, Lord Ho, a dignified king-level man, always acted decisively and vigorously in everything he did. Who would have thought that he would be so restrained in front of a girl, it's like he's a different person. It seems that Lord Ho will have to interact with women more in the future, otherwise, it will affect his development. For Huo Chen, no matter what state or stage he was in, he couldn't afford to have any weaknesses, otherwise he would be the one to suffer. Before this, Huo Chen had no weaknesses, but now that one had appeared, he had to be on guard. Just then, a heavily made-up woman walked out from behind Yang Qing. She walked over with a seductive gait, looked Huo Chen up and down, and with a cold smile on her lips, she slowly said, Xing, do you know this person? Seems a bit off. Zhou Tong Tong, this is my childhood playmate, Huo Chen, Yang Qing heard the disdain in Zhou Tong Tong's tone and introduced him proactively. Oh, how come I've never heard of him? Could he be one of your loser admirers? He he, Zhou Tong Tong chuckled. After all, Yang Qing belonged to the category of wealthy and beautiful women, and there were many people pursuing her, all queuing up in the local area. Don't talk nonsense, Yang Qing's face turned red instantly. Zhou Tong Tong sneered and mocked, Qing, how come he doesn't look like your childhood playmate? What were your conditions back then, and what's your status now? Look at him, dressed in rags like a beggar, he looks like a swindler to me. No, I know him, he's Hu Chen, Yang Cheng spoke softer and her face grew even redder, sounding as delicate as an inexperienced girl. Feeling uninterested, Zhou Tong Tong still looked down on Hu Chen, didn't even look at him directly, and said mockingly, I warned you, I won't be responsible if anything happens, but today, you must come with me. Zhou Tong Tong forcefully grabbed Yang Qing's arm and pulled her out. Yang Qing felt helpless and bid farewell to Hu Chen in a hurry before leaving. As the two women walked away, Wang Deng immediately emerged from the shadows, smiling and saying, Lord Ho, 
you still have some unfinished business, huh? An old flame, right? How about I create an opportunity for you to be alone? Huo Chen gave Wang Deng a disdainful look and said sternly, Watch your words, I'm not that kind of person. Ha, huh? Lord Ho, how could I not know what kind of person you are? That girl doesn't seem all that special, not worthy of you. By the way, Lord Ho, I know the woman next to Yang Qing, she's an employee at Moonlight Pavilion, quite attractive, so her performance is very good. She's somewhat famous in the antique street. Wang Dang said. Huo Chen nodded. So this woman was selling herself, no wonder she had such a bad temper. Yang Qing, who had always been a virtuous woman, how did she get mixed up with such a woman? As he pondered, Yang Qing picked up a white jade pot and walked over, placing it on the table and asking Zhou Tong Tong, do you think this is genuine? Yes, we're sisters, how could I possibly deceive you? Look at the texture, how beautiful it is, and the quality, this is at least a top quality item. Now is the time to buy, it will definitely appreciate in value after purchase. Zhou Tong Tong said earnestly. Yang Qing squinted to observe the jade pot, which looked extremely transparent, with faint fluorescent streaks, and many signs of antiquity at the edges, giving the impression that it was genuine. Whether this thing could appreciate in value was unknown, but what was certain was that it would not be a loss to buy it. I see, then it must be genuine, Yang Qing was very happy and placed the mutton fat jade pot on the table, asking, boss, how much is this? The boss chuckled, oh, young lady, you have a good eye. This mutton fat jade pot is a top quality item, it's a good buy, priced at 3. 2 million. As long as it makes the old man happy, this amount of money is nothing, Yang Qing said to Zhou Tong Tong, then continued, Tong Tong, thank you so much, if it weren't for you, I wouldn't have found such a good treasure. Zhou Tong Tong felt a bit embarrassed and shook her head, saying, it's nothing, we're good friends, just a small favor. The shop owner was also straightforward. As soon as he heard the other party had made up their mind, he immediately brought out wrapping paper. Just then, Hu Chin strode over in two or three steps, pressed his hand on the jade pot, and said coldly, Boss, hold on, Zhou Tong Tong, seeing that it was Hu Chen, immediately became angry and said angrily, Why is it you again? Stinky beggar, causing trouble here? Get lost, don't delay others from buying things. Tong Tong, don't be like this. Yang Qing couldn't stand it and immediately stepped forward to block. Qing, if you want to buy, then buy, don't let him influence you. Look at what he's wearing, a poor appearance, he's been wandering around here for a while, but hasn't bought anything? Don't you find it strange? This kind of person is definitely a thief. Xing, you better keep your distance from him, be careful. Zhou Tong Tong hated this kind of person, constantly slandering, just wanting to keep Hu Chen and Yang Qing apart. More importantly, the sheep fat jade pot has been agreed upon, it's time to pay, how can it be interrupted by an idiot? Tong Tong, stop it, Hu Chen is not that kind of person. Yang Qing desperately explained, because she knew Hu Chen better than anyone. A man of integrity, with a fiery spirit, is definitely not that kind of person. Forget it, I have a good eye for people, I won't argue with you. Qing, hurry up and pay, I'll treat you to dinner. Zhou Tong Tong couldn't wait any longer and urged Yang Qing to pay. Yang Cheng also knew it was not good to delay, so she immediately took out her bank card to pay. But the next moment, Hu Chen used his other hand to stop Yang Qing and said, Yang Qing, this jade pot is not right, don't make the payment yet. As soon as he said that, everyone was stunned, all looking at Hu Chen, wanting to know what he was doing. Hu Chen said very seriously, look at the texture of these jade pots, very clean, not at all like old items, the color on the lid is yellow, without any impurities, it's clearly been treated with sulfur. Just these two details are enough to prove that the jade pot is fake. Everyone's faces twitched as they listened and the shop owner looked at Huo Chen with a strange expression. Zhou Tong Tong was immediately angry and said angrily, Where did you come from? Are you a professional appraiser, or are you here to cause trouble? I'm telling you, this is a genuine jade pot, it can't be fake. After a pause, Zhou Tong Tong continued, Besides, I specially picked this for Yang Qing, how could it be wrong? At this time, the shop owner also came out from behind the counter and said seriously, That's right, everything I sell here is genuine, how could there be fakes? Be careful with your words, or I'll sue you. Seeing the two people coming to speak, Yang Qing was very worried and quietly walked to Hu Chen's side and said, Hu Chen, could you have made a mistake? My sister often looks at antiques, she has a keen eye, it's impossible for her to be wrong. Besides, the shop owner has been in business for so many years, it's impossible for him to sell fake goods to us. Is that so? In that case, have you two been doing this kind of cheating business for many years? Hu Chen's face was stern as he said slowly, if this is a genuine jade, why is there a scattered light inside? You say this is genuine, but how can I see that it's made of inferior jade material? The scattered light in the jade indicates that the jade itself is fake, 
but this kind of detail needs to be detected with professional equipment, ordinary people can't see it with the naked eye. Huo Chen's eyes have a resolution of up to micrometer level, so naturally he can see it at a glance. You can make over 3 million with just a few pieces of scrap, how is this any different from robbing? Huo Chen sneered. Kid, you better not talk nonsense. The shop owner immediately got angry and shouted at Huo Chen. Zhou Tongtong was anxious and quickly stood up, with a crying tone, Ching, look, this is your playmate, as soon as he comes up, he slanders us. I've been looking at Jade for several years, with just a few words, my reputation is ruined. Sob, do you want me to die? I think I might as well just die. Everyone was arguing, leaving Yang Ching at a loss, so she turned to Huo Chen and asked, Huo Chen, what's really going on? Can you really tell if the jade pot is genuine? Yes, Huo Chen said. Zhou Tongtong's face changed, and she immediately threw her bank card on the table. Enough, you pauper. There's 300,000 in this card, consider it a gift from me. Take the money and leave, or I'll call the police, Zhou Tongtong said. Huo Chen faintly smiled and ignored Zhou Tongtong. 300,000 was a small amount for Huo Chen. He didn't want to argue with this kind of person, nor did he want to lose his temper because of her. He took a step forward, picked up the bank card on the table, and gently threw it out. The bank card spun in the air and then fell directly into Zhou Tongtong's pocket. I'm sorry, miss, please don't litter, Huo Chen said coldly. You! Zhou Tongtong was furious, pointing at Huo Chen's nose with gritted teeth. The next moment, Huo Chen looked directly at the shop owner and said coldly, Boss, can you guarantee that this jade pot is genuine? The boss laughed, I've been selling jade for decades, when have I ever made a mistake? If it's real, it's real. How could it be fake? Well, let's make a bet. If it's real, I'll buy it for ten times the price, Huo Chen said. The crowd murmured in surprise. My goodness, ten times the price, that's over thirty million. This is the Moonlight Pavilion, how many years of antiques have been sold here? Saying it's fake, is there something wrong with his head? Who's right and who's wrong? And does he really have 30 million? With the crowd's discussion, more and more onlookers gathered to witness this unprecedented event. The boss chuckled, let's make a bet, who's afraid? The boss asked, if I win, I won't ask for anything, just pick any item in your store at will, Huichin said. Ah, huh, okay, you can do whatever you want, it's free for you, the boss said even more happily. The jade pot was originally worthless, but it was hyped up by Joe Tongtong's eloquence, and now someone questioned its authenticity and wanted to bet with a large sum of money. Well, I'll go along with it, and make a big profit. Huo Chen, forget it, where did you get so much money from? Stop arguing, Yang Qing couldn't bear to see it and kept advising Huo Chen. This is the Moonlight Pavilion, where genuine goods have been sold for over 10 years, how could there be fakes? Just then, the shop owner took a step forward and said softly, Oh, I forgot to ask. If you lose, the compensation will be a sky-high amount. Do you have the money to pay for it? Huo Chen's face changed, and he threw a black card onto the table. Everyone was curious, and even so, some people still couldn't recognize the card. Only the shop owner's eyes widened in horror, trembling as he said, This. This is the exclusive black card of Pluto? There are only five in the world. No one had heard of Pluto, but the words black card were well known. Those who have a black card are powerful figures. Moreover, this unknown Pluto black card. Mr. Zhao, don't believe him, what black card, it's probably a copy. I don't believe this kind of person has a black card. Besides, can someone with this kind of black card come to the Moonlight Pavilion? Everyone suddenly realized. Yes, those who have a black card are top-notch people, how could they come to such a place? Mr. Zhao was suspicious, and the stone in his heart instantly fell to the ground. He said softly, it makes sense. Not just anyone can have a Pluto black card, and the five people who have it can be traced. When the time comes, we can check and find out. Then, Zhou Tantan looked triumphantly at Yang Qing and said, See? They're starting to use black cards to deceive people. Do you still think he's not here to cause trouble? Zhou Tantan increasingly felt that Huo Chen was suspicious and just wanted Yang Qing to speak up and end this farce as soon as possible. After all, time is money, right? This. Now it was Yang Qing's turn to be embarrassed. When it came to black cards, Yang Qing had indeed seen a few, but had never seen this kind of Pluto black card. Perhaps it's true, or perhaps it's really possible that it's fake. Boss, do you dare? Huo Chen asked. The boss nodded repeatedly, realizing that this bet was not just about whether Huo Chen had money, but more about his own reputation. Once his reputation was damaged, no amount of money could buy it back, so he had to dare. Miss Show, let him try, this bet concerns the reputation of the Moonlight Pavilion, the shop owner said. Zhou Tongtong was puzzled, but still agreed. Mr. Huo, since it's going to be a fair competition, we should choose an expert in the field. Any objections? 
The shop owner asked. Fine, Huo Chen replied. Good, then please call Mr. Liang, the antique expert, the shop owner shouted, immediately sending someone to fetch him. Mr. Liang was a well-known figure in the antique world, famous for his expertise in appraising treasures. He had been in the industry for nearly 50 years and had never made a mistake, earning him the title of clairvoyant. About half an hour later, a vintage crown sedan appeared at the entrance of the Moonlight Pavilion. The shop owner immediately went to greet him, Mr. Liang, you're here, come in. Inside, Mr. Liang is here, hurry and serve him tea. Several young servants came over and led Mr. Liang inside. As they walked, the shop owner kept telling Mr. Liang about the situation, Mr. Liang, the situation is roughly like this. You see, can we not teach a lesson to someone who deliberately causes trouble? That's why we invited you. Mr. Liang chuckled and said, but then again, you've been in this business for quite some time. How could you not tell if even the sheep fat jade pot is real or fake? The shop owner shook his head and said helplessly, how could I not tell? The texture and patterns are definitely real. And Tong Tong also confirmed it's real. Even so, someone still claims it's fake. Mr. Liang nodded, looked at Hua Chen, observed carefully for a long time, and had a somewhat puzzled expression on his face. Young man, there's a limit to everything, don't take it so seriously. The shop owner has been appraising antiques for most of his life, when has he ever made a mistake? If you ask me, you're definitely going to lose this time, mister. Liang said, shaking his head with a tone of regret. No matter when, there are always young people who like to challenge authority to show off their abilities, but in the end, they will only end up in a bad situation. However, Hua Chen insisted on the competition and said solemnly, enough talk, let's see the results. You really have a strong character. All right, I'll take a look, Mr. Liang said. Mr. Liang walked to the counter, opened the yellowed oil paper, carefully examined the patterns on the sheep fat jade pot with a magnifying glass, and compared them with the patterns in his book. Mr. Liang spent more than three hours carefully examining the pot, then finally put down the magnifying glass, stretched and sat weakly on the rattan chair. The shop owner immediately went up to him, had someone prepare a cup of wolfberry and ginseng tea, and handed it to Mr. Liang, saying, Sir, have you figured it out? Mr. Liang took a sip of the hot tea, and immediately broke out in a sweat on his forehead, then looked disappointedly at the shop owner, I've examined it, and this time, you may have made a mistake. What? The shop owner was shocked, the tea lid fell from his hand and heavily onto the ground. Mr. Liang raised his glasses with his hand, looked at Hua Chen with awe, and said, A hero emerges in troubled times, Young Hua, no matter what method you used, if you can tell that the sheep fat jade pot is fake, your level naturally surpasses 90% of so-called experts. Impressive, truly impressive. In order to determine the authenticity of this treasure, Mr. Liang had almost exhausted all his strength. Not only that, when he first realized it was fake, his initial reaction was that he had made a mistake so he kept looking back and forth until he finally confirmed that the treasure was indeed fake. Then, Mr. Liang handed a business card to Huo Chen. This has my contact information on it, young man. If you have time, I will personally greet you, Mr. Liang said. Huo Chen was completely focused on the jade pot and didn't pay attention to Mr. Liang's words. He shook his head and said, I'll see about it later. This sentence truly surprised everyone. This was Mr. Liang, someone many people dreamed of meeting. It was said that Mr. Liang had a unique skill. With just a gentle nudge, he could quickly enlighten someone on the method of distinguishing the authenticity of antiques. So many people had invited Mr. Liang to dinner, but he had always refused. And from the beginning until now, Mr. Liang had never taken the initiative to invite anyone to dinner. Now, he politely invited Hua Chen to dinner, only to be rejected. This truly astonished everyone. What a great opportunity, and it's just gone like that. My goodness, does Huo Chen not even care about Mr. Liang? Why do I feel that Huo Chen's ability surpasses Mr. Liang's? Huo Chen only took a glance and figured it out, while Mr. Liang took three hours. That's the difference. People were discussing fervently, but ultimately they all believed that Huo Chen was the strongest. As for the shop owner, the shop owner stood there blankly, not daring to say a word. Ha! Huh? Where's the shop owner? Why isn't he speaking? I remember you used to be the most boastful, Hua Chen asked the shop owner. This is impossible. At this moment, Zhou Tong Tong walked out and said loudly, I had someone deliver this jade pot. How could it be fake? Oh, so the jade pot was sent by you? Hua Chen asked. Zhou Tong Tong immediately covered her mouth, looking extremely embarrassed. Yang Qing, who was standing beside her, also caught on and asked loudly, Tong Tong, 
What do you mean by having someone deliver it? I, it's not like that. Please listen to my explanation. It's not like that. Jo Tongtong's explanation became more and more contradictory, and she even seemed a bit flustered. From Jo Tongtong's performance, it could be inferred that she had colluded with the shop owner. Yang Qing was even more furious, but out of consideration for their relationship, he swallowed his anger. Stop arguing. Shop owner, do you stand by what you said earlier? Huo Chen asked. The shop owner gritted his teeth, thinking that with Huo Chen's keen eyesight, he would surely be able to spot the finest antiques at a glance. The most valuable items in the shop were just a few, and if they were really picked out, he would be in big trouble. Ah, what a mess. Yes, I stand by what I said. The shop owner was completely at a loss, and he spread his hands, allowing Huo Chen to choose at will. At the same time, he glared fiercely at Zhou Tong Tong and whispered, You wretch, I'll deal with you later, boss. Zhou Tong Tong looked very aggrieved. She had been cooperating with the boss for so long, and everything had been going smoothly. Who would have thought that things would go wrong this time? She couldn't understand it at all. Huo Chen said okay and walked straight into the room. Inside the room were three shelves, each with wooden boards blocking them, a total of ten layers, all filled with so-called rare treasures. As soon as Huo Chen started inspecting them one by one, the shop owner's heartache with each item he looked at. Huo Chen was looking at top quality items, but he didn't make a move. Didn't this mean that he knew there was a hidden treasure here? Sure enough, when Huo Chen walked up to a box made of peach wood, he suddenly stopped. The shop owner's heart began to race, and his breathing stopped. This was his most prized possession, the night pearl, the treasure of the shop. However, to the shop owner's surprise, Huo Chen casually glanced at it a few times and then placed it on the table. What do you mean by that? The shop owner was somewhat surprised. It's just an ancient glass bead, nothing special, Huo Chen said. What did you say? The shop owner was shocked and rushed over, picking up the night pearl and examining it carefully. It's impossible, this is my most precious treasure, how could it be? The shop owner thought of Mr. Liang, but after asking him, he received the same answer as Huo Chen's. The shop owner almost collapsed when he heard this. Onlookers couldn't help but sigh. They all thought that Huo Chen had come to the right place, otherwise the shop owner would still be in the dark. Huo Chen searched around but couldn't find anything useful. After searching a few more times, he finally set his eyes on a small tile at the corner of the table. This will do, Huo Chen said. Everyone, including the shop owner, burst into laughter. Ha, even a master can make mistakes. My goodness, is this for real? He actually picked a tile. What kind of eyesight is that? It's not as good as the glass beads from before. With a bang, everyone burst into laughter. Yang Cheng also walked over awkwardly, pulled Hua Chen's clothes with her hand, and said, Hua Chen, what are you doing? There are so many useful treasures, and you choose this broken tile? Who said this is a tile? Hua Chen's face changed, and with a strong finger, he easily split the tile in two. With a bang, a blood-red jade pendant was revealed in the middle of the tile. The jade pendant was red and lustrous, with a flowing water pattern under the sunlight, slightly turning, and four large characters engraved on it, sun and moon together. How can this be? Everyone was amazed. Clearly it was a tile, so how could there be a jade pendant inside? No, this is not a jade pendant, it's a jade tablet deliberately placed inside, someone shouted, and everyone suddenly understood. In ancient times, in order to preserve genuine artifacts or deliberately hide real treasures, most people sealed them in useless tiles or stones to preserve them in troubled times. This jade pendant was probably one of them. It's just that no one had discovered it before, and it happened to be found by Hua Chen. The shop owner thought for a moment and suddenly remembered that someone had given him the tile earlier, claiming it was some kind of treasure. The shop owner thought it was a joke and put it aside. However, this was the real treasure. Young man, this. The shop owner was completely dumbfounded. What's this? I want it. Hua Chen quickly took it and handed it to Yang Cheng. This is the real treasure. I'm giving it to you. Is this appropriate? Yang Qing was a bit hesitant, but couldn't resist Hua Chen and put the jade tablet in her pocket. Then, Hua Chen turned to look at Zhou Tong Tong and said, It's your turn. Do you have something to say? Zhou Tong Tong was stunned. What? What are you talking about? I don't understand. If you don't understand, I'll explain it to you. You know the shop owner here, and many of the goods here are supplied by you. Even if they are fake, you present them as genuine. The shop owner is in cahoots with you, turning a blind eye to your deception of customers. In the end, for the sake of making money, you don't even spare those close to you. Is what I said clear enough? Huo Chen spoke calmly, wanting to see how the other party would respond. Zhou Tong Tong exclaimed and stepped back, hastily saying, How? How did you know? So you admit it. Fine, please leave. Huo Chen raised his hand, and an invisible shockwave flew straight at Zhou Tong Tong's forehead. 
Zhou Tong Tong groaned, feeling a severe headache and trembling uncontrollably, then ran away in a hurry. Yang Chang had no idea what Hua Chen had done, but she felt that he had changed. Compared to his childishness in the past, Hua Chen now seemed more mature and steady, with a hint of imperceptible unruliness. Let's leave it at that for today. I'm leaving now, Hua Chen said, turning and walking away. Wang Deng, who was watching from a distance, frowned even more tightly. Strange, Ho Yi had always been decisive and efficient, but after meeting Yang Qing, he seemed to have changed completely. His speech was hesitant, and his actions were indecisive, completely different from before. Wang Deng could see it and walked straight over, saying, Ho Yi, I can see that you're uncomfortable. You just want to get to know her, right? I'll get her number for you. Wang Deng couldn't bear to see it anymore and was ready to take the initiative to get Yang Qing's number. At this moment, Yang Qing suddenly turned around and looked at Hua Chen with a shy expression, whispering, Um, Hua Chen, can I have your phone number? You've helped me so much, can I treat you to a meal? After saying this, Yang Qing's face turned completely red, looking just like an innocent girl who was not yet familiar with the ways of the world. Sure, Hua Chen nodded and gave his phone number. Yang Qing quickly noted it down and then left without looking back. Wang Deng initially didn't understand the trick Lord Ho was playing, and it took him a while to figure out that it was a high-level game called Lure and Release. It was not an exaggeration to say that with this push and pull, Yang Qing had already set her heart on Hua Chen. This was the work of a master. I see, Lord Ho, you are truly something, Wang Deng praised repeatedly. On the other side, in a room inside a boxing gym, Zhao Tian sat cross-legged. In front of him was a stack of thick banknotes and numerous pieces of gold and silver jewelry, all of which were gifts for his teacher. There was a time when the gym was unusually quiet, with few people coming in at any time, but now it was different. People were everywhere, and the atmosphere was lively. The disciples who came in were all eager to show their loyalty. After a while, Zhao Tian stood up, raised a glass of wine, and said to everyone, I am very happy that you all could attend the teacher's birthday banquet. I, Zhao Tian, offer a toast to everyone. I'll drink first, and you can follow suit. After saying this, Zhao Tian downed nearly half a cup of white wine. The people below clapped and cheered, well said, brother Zhao, well said. Zhao Tian was different from before. He had already achieved success and was a true successful person. He came here to rely on his reputation to celebrate his teacher's birthday. As the saying goes, the rich and noble do not return home, like walking in silk clothes at night. Zhao Tian also wanted to take this opportunity to promote himself and let everyone know that he, Zhao Tian, was not a waste, but the strongest among all the disciples. However, after waiting for several hours, Hua Chen still had not appeared. Strange, why hasn't Hua Chen come yet? Maybe he feels guilty towards his teacher and doesn't dare to come. He and Zhao Tian are from the same school. They should have become the top figures, but unfortunately, the most promising one turned out to be Zhao Tian. If I were Hua Chen, I wouldn't have the face to come here. Brother, you have the skills and the money now, and you like nothing. You even came back to see my father. I really appreciate it. These words were spoken by Huang Xian, who then raised his glass and drank it down. He he, I don't deserve it. Zhao Tian modestly declined, but his eyes were always looking into the distance. He was waiting for someone, someone he had been waiting for for decades. In fact, after organizing this birthday banquet, the first person Zhao Tian consulted was his master. His master was already old and had long been accustomed to a quiet and stable life. When he first heard about the birthday banquet, his first reaction was to refuse. However, when Zhao Tian mentioned Hua Chen's name and said that he would come, the master agreed for the first time. This surprised Zhao Tian. After all, he knew very well that he was the one in his master's heart, not the long-lost Hua Chen. But then again, Hua Chen was his master's disciple after all. Even if he had a grudge against himself, there was nothing wrong with coming back to see the master. But after waiting for a long time, there was still no sign of Hua Chen. On the other side, Hua Chen had already arrived at the so-called Old City area. There was a time when his master would always take him here to eat lamb offal soup. Hua Chen took a few steps and turned to look at the familiar alley. The lamb offal soup shop was still open, but the owner's hair had turned gray, and he looked much older. The alley was very long and had a distant smell. The lights gradually dimmed, and the air was filled with the smell of decaying wood. But for Hua Chen, this winding alley was so familiar. Hua Chen quickly walked through an alley and stopped in front of a gate. Suddenly, a fat man came over from the side and shouted loudly at Hua Chen, Xiao Chen, is that you? Hua Chen turned around and sought his childhood friend, Chen Long. Is that you, Chen Long? Hua Chen was surprised and hurried over to greet him. It had been over 10 years, and Chen Long had gained some weight. His eyes had lost the sparkle of his youth, and he looked simple, giving off an indescribable feeling. 
Chen Long chuckled, patted Hua Chen's shoulder, and said, Long time no see, you're still the same. After that, Chen Long invited Hua Chen inside, saying, I knew you would come. Come on in. Hua Chen nodded and followed him inside. As soon as they entered, Huang Chang came over, happily saying, I knew it, you are the master's most proud disciple. How could you not come? Come on in. Huang Chang quickly led Hua Chen to the largest room inside. Upon hearing some commotion outside, Zhao Long slowly stood up and, upon seeing Hua Chen, said, Look who's here, isn't this our junior brother Hua Chen? Ha, ah, you really came. Zhao Long's tone was somewhat strange, but Hua Chen didn't mind and continued walking inside. Hey, junior brother, did you come in empty-handed? Zhao Long glanced and immediately noticed that Hua Chen had indeed come in empty-handed. Everyone quickly realized and exclaimed, My goodness, I see it, he really came in empty-handed. TSK TSK, still under the master's wing, and yet like this? So incompetent, someone like this shouldn't come here. The more they spoke, the more tense the atmosphere became. They all thought that Hua Chen, who had been out in the world for so long, should know better and not come empty-handed, even if he was just a regular friend or even a stranger. What a heartless and despicable person, worse than a pig or a dog. I spit on you. People couldn't bear it and spat in Hua Chen's direction. Zhao Long is still the best. The master didn't make a mistake in choosing him. Zhao Long is a person of integrity and loyalty. The tone of the voices below gradually changed. People went from initial anticipation to current anger, and the situation began to develop in an uncontrollable direction. Hua Chen, don't listen to them, they are all superficial. Who says you must bring something when wishing someone well? At this moment, Chen Long walked over, patiently comforting, not wanting Hua Chen to be influenced by these people. Hua Chen shook his head and said slowly, it's okay, you go about your business, I'll handle this myself. Before coming, Hu Chen knew that these people would look down on him and knew that they would make things difficult for him. The reason was simple. Compared to that senior brother, Hu Chen's development in recent years seemed somewhat meager. Nowadays, the most basic standard for evaluating a person's success and achievements is whether they have money. If you have money, regardless of whether you stole it or earned it, people think you're okay, doing well. But if you have no money, even if you have many virtues, in the end, you are worthless. That's reality. Hua Chen understood these people too well and didn't take it to heart. He took a deep breath and slowly walked towards the master. The disciples paid their respects to the old man in order, and soon it was Hua Chen's turn. Disciple Hua Chen, here to wish the master a happy birthday. Hua Chen bowed deeply and politely said. Huang Chang smiled faintly, feeling that among these disciples, Hua Chen's greeting was the most heartfelt. The same words, the same bow, but Hua Chen's demeanor felt so natural and intimate. Even after all this time, Huang Chang still couldn't forget the strong affinity that Hua Chen exuded. Of course, his useless son could never compare. Beside him, Zhao Long kept observing the old man with his eyes and was surprised to find that the old man still favored Hua Chen, no matter how outstanding the other disciples were. This made Zhao Long very annoyed. What did Hua Chen have besides being obedient and well-behaved? Did he earn more money than himself, or was he more capable? No, he didn't. However, Hua Chen has been receiving such treatment from beginning to end, which makes people very envious and jealous. However, this is a big occasion, and Zhao Long, in order to consider the situation, still forcibly suppressed the anger, then reluctantly put on a smile and said, By the way, Hua Chen, you've been away for so long, why didn't you bring anything this time? Hua Chen knew what Zhao Long meant. He just wanted to make a big deal out of this and make it difficult for himself to step down. Ha, huh, he's thinking too much. Hua Chen smiled faintly and looked at Zhao Long, saying, Sorry, I'll bring it later. Zhao Long raised an eyebrow, turned his head to look, wanting to know what Hua Chen was preparing, but there was no movement outside the door, and he didn't know what Hua Chen was up to. We're all family, come in and sit down, don't stand. Hua Chen, come and sit here. Huang Chang pointed to the seat next to him, which was specially reserved for Hua Chen and marked with a sign. But when Hua Chen was about to sit down, Huang Xian suddenly stood up and said, Dad, are you mistaken? This is not his seat. Huang Chang was stunned, turned his head to look at the seat, his face changed slightly, and said, What do you mean? I assigned the seat, why can't he sit there? Huang Xian lowered his head and said, Um, Dad, you're mistaken, this is Zhao Long's seat, the one next to it is for Hua Chen. What Zhao Long's Hua Chen's, they're all seats, what's the difference who sits where? Huang Chang snorted angrily and scolded Huang Xian loudly. When the seats were first assigned, Huang Chang deliberately left a vacant seat, which Huang Xian was the first to notice, thinking that his father had come to his senses and wanted to arrange something good for himself through this birthday banquet, so he left the seat. But never did he expect that this seat was actually for Hua Chen. Hua Chen, he's just a useless person. Huang Xian suddenly felt like he had eaten shit. At this moment, 
Huang Xian gestured to Huo Chen and said, Come, sit here. Huo Chen was stunned, then walked over naturally and said, Yes, master. Who knew that as soon as Huo Chen was about to sit down, Huang Xian rushed over in a flash, blocking him with his hand and said, Huo Chen, do you think this is where you should sit? Huo Chen was stunned and was about to ask what was going on, but he felt a huge force pressing on his shoulder and exploded. Huo Chen quickly reacted and forcefully pushed back the force. Huang Xian opened his eyes, his face filled with surprise, and he thought to himself, this kid is strong, how come he's so strong? Then Huang Xian realized that Huo Chen was different from before, and he couldn't resist with force. Then he saw Chen Long next to Huo Chen. Chen Long came from the countryside, had no skills, and always brought local specialties to the old man, and this time was no exception. So Huang Xian gestured to a man next to him to go out and see the person who brought the wood ear. Several men in black quickly understood and turned to leave. Sure enough, there was a bag of wood ear left at the door. Young man, is the wood ear I left here okay? Don't break it or get it wet. At this time, a bald man in a black short-sleeved shirt and shorts walked in. When someone called him, Zhang Changdel immediately smiled and respectfully said, Brother Chen, you're here, I've been watching your goods, no problem. Absolutely no problem. Come, it's hot, drink more water. Zhang Changdel moved the chair like a servant and handed a pot of tea to the man. Calling a second-rate person brother? Huo Chen felt strange when he saw him bowing and flattering, and when he found out that this person was Chen Long's man, he was even more puzzled. He he, young man, it's best if there's no problem, my wood ear is more precious than yours, if there's a problem, you won't be able to afford it for the rest of your life. The young man sneered and turned and walked into the house. Zhang Changdel kept apologizing, with a fawning smile on his face. Just as he was about to leave, a woman inside suddenly shouted, Brother Han Chen, why is there water on the bag of wood ear? Han Chen made a sound of surprise, took the bag of wood ears, and got off the car. He opened the bag wide and kept fiddling with the wood ears with his hands. Goodness! Not only is the bag wet on the outside, but there's water inside too. Young man, what did you just say to me? No problem. Han Chen asked with a stern look. Brother Chen, really no problem, I've been watching the whole time, didn't touch anything. This is probably due, a little got on the outside of the bag, but there's definitely no problem inside. Zhang Changdel panicked and hurriedly explained. Do. Stop bullshitting, take a look, someone clearly poured water in. Han Chen grabbed a handful of wood ears and showed them to Zhang Changdel. Zhang Changdel took a look, the wood ears were fine, just a bit of water on the surface, probably brought in by his hand. See? Young man, I told you before, these wood ears can't get wet, now they're wet, what are you going to do about it? Han Chen put the wood ears back in, reached out with his right hand, and made a squeezing motion. The meaning was clear, he wanted Zhang Changdel to compensate. Brother Chen, don't be hasty, listen to my explanation. Explanation? What's the use of an explanation? If explanations worked, there wouldn't be wars in this world. My time is precious, I don't have time to listen to your explanation. Hurry up and compensate me according to our agreement, or I'll burn down your house. Han Chen impatiently shouted. As soon as he finished speaking, several young men came out of the car. They all looked tough clearly the type of troublemakers in society. Brother Chen, compensation? How much do you want me to compensate? Zheng Changdel said with a difficult attitude of wanting to avoid trouble. I'll tell you the truth. These wood ears are wild ones I picked from the mountains, let's calculate, 20 for 1. After picking, they naturally dry in the wind, and after that, they can't get a drop of water. Now that some have gotten wet, these several kilograms of wood ears are completely useless. I bought these several kilograms for a hundred thousand, I see you're usually pretty sensible, so I'll give you a discount, eighty thousand. Eighty thousand. Zhang Changdel's face changed, full of anger. Several kilograms of wood ears for eighty thousand. Isn't this a fantasy? Not to mention wood ears, even the top ingredients within a hundred miles are only worth a few hundred, eighty thousand for wood ears, this is clearly extortion. Ha! What? Angry? You've neglected your duty, and don't want to bear the consequences. Heh, yeah, if everyone was like you, society would have been in chaos long ago. Han Chen caught Zheng Changdel's anger and became even happier, speaking with a playful smile. Brother, 80,000. I can't come up with that. Zheng Changdel immediately calmed his expression, weakly said. You can't come up with 80,000. What a joke. I remember your house is quite big, at least worth tens of thousands, use that as collateral, are you still afraid you won't have 80,000? Han Chen laughed and looked at the broken house behind Zheng Changdel. No. I can't, I have to leave this house to my son, I only have one son, this is the only thing I can leave him. Zhang Changdel said, his eyes turning red, a halo of tears appearing in his eyes. Smack! Han Chen slapped Zhang Changdel's face hard and said fiercely, don't be ungrateful, leave it to your son? 
I bet your son is already dead. If you don't give it to me today, I'll make sure you won't even have a wheelchair to sit in. Brother, this is my only property. This is my lifeline. I can give you anything, but this property I can't give to you. Zheng Changle's mouth oozed a bit of blood, looking miserable. A person who's halfway into the ground still has a lifeline. Fine, give me 80,000, I don't want this house. 80,000. I. Don't have. Don't have. Heh, if you don't have 80,000 and don't want to mortgage the house, do you believe I'll beat you to death, you scoundrel? I'm telling you, today you either give me 80,000, or give me the house, otherwise I'll kill you right now. Han Chen became anxious and stomped on Zhang Chang'el's knee, roaring loudly. No. You want my life. The house, I won't give it to you. Zhang Chang'el let out a breath and slowly closed his eyes. Damn it. Han Chen cursed, kicking Zhang Chang'el away. With a loud bang, Zhang Chang'el flew backwards and crashed heavily onto the ground. If you don't drink the toast, you'll drink the penalty. Today, I'll make you meet the king of hell. Han Chen rushed forward and kicked Zhang Chang'el in the ribs, causing intense pain. Hey! Still resisting. I'll kill you. Han Chen lifted his right foot and rhythmically stomped on Zhang Chang'el's head, causing severe pain. Who? Han Chen turned around in a hurry, but before he could see anything, a furious punch from Huo Chen landed on his chest. Puff! Han Chen felt like he had been hit by a cannon, and he flew backwards like a kite with a broken string. After retracting his fist, Huo Chen's gaze fell on the injured Zhang Chang'el. There was blood all over the ground, and Zhang Chang'el weakly groaned. He slowly regained consciousness and looked at Huo Chen, saying softly, Young man, thank you. Thank you for saving me. In the future, you can store things here for free. Then he looked at Chen Long standing nearby. Sorry for causing you trouble. On the other side, Zhao Tian, seeing the situation, felt that he couldn't deal with Huo Chen in the same old way and had to adopt a more cautious approach. He signaled to the person at the door and said softly, I didn't expect this, Huo Chen. Your change is too drastic. But, you've been in the military for these years, why are you still in such a poor state? This hit Huo Chen hard. He had joined the military and come here to become stronger, to earn respect from others. Now that he had succeeded, he was still looked down upon and being taunted with words, which was a painful feeling. Not only Zhao Tian, but also a woman who walked over, with a mocking smile on her face, said, Indeed, Huo Chen, you served in the military with Zhao Tian, but look at him and then look at you. He has everything he wants, fame, fortune, power, and money. What about you? What do you have? The woman, heavily made up and smelling of cheap cosmetics, then snuggled up to Zhao Tian like a cat and coquettishly said, unlike our brother Long, he's amazing. As long as we follow him, we have everything we want. Seeing the woman flaunting herself in front of him, Huo Chen felt extremely disgusted and said, get lost, I have important matters to attend to. Someone nearby couldn't stand it and coldly said, if you have no money, you have no money. Why pretend? I despise people like you the most. Others commented that if Huo Chen continued like this, they would see how long he could keep up the act. Zhao Tian noticed Huo Chen's embarrassment and sneered, Huo Chen, it's not your fault. It's a matter of ability, no need to blame yourself too much. In addition, if you have any difficulties in life or elsewhere, remember to come to me. I need a few security guards here, the kind that watches the door, no technical skills required, just need to be physically fit. By the way, if you come, I'll give you double the salary, 4,000 yuan, how about that? Zhao Tian did his best to mock Hua Chen, just to see him suffer. However, Hua Chen remained unchanged, still as firm as ever. Huang Xian, who was beside him, saw Hua Chen's firmness and secretly said, This kid is really talented, but being poor is his original sin, and no one can forgive that. Hua Chen, Zhao Tian is talking to you, can't you hear? You're not young anymore, you have to get married and support a family in the future. Look at others, they are also soldiers, much stronger than you. Huang Xian walked over and continued, I suggest you follow Zhao Tian, at least there's a guarantee for your life, isn't there? Everyone present wanted to bring Hua Chen down. The goal was to suffocate him and make him give up the idea of the boxing gym. After all, the boxing gym was a huge real estate, worth a lot of money, whether it was demolition, sale, or rental, it was a big sum of money. Hua Chen remained unmoved, even finding these people's words somewhat amusing. Clearly, he came to celebrate a birthday, but why did it feel like they were all targeting him? These people are really messed up. With a strong sense of the overall situation, Hu Chen still maintained a very clear rationality, and then said word by word, I've been doing fine these years, so I won't trouble you. After speaking, Hu Chen had already walked up to the old master. It had been decades since they last met, and when he saw the old master again, Hu Chen felt that he had aged. The white hair on his temples became more prominent, and the wrinkles on his forehead had deepened. Hu Chen bowed respectfully and said, 
Today is the master's birthday, I, Hua Chen, offer a toast to the master. Huang Chang laughed heartily and also raised his glass, nodding at Hua Chen. Good, among all these disciples, you are the most sensible. When you left my hands back then, you took a different path from them. You went to the army, shed blood, and protected the country, which is what a martial artist should do. I toast to you. Huang Chang was a man, strong and liked men with a strong masculine aura, especially someone like Hua Chen, whom Huang Chang liked very much. So much so that when he spoke, Huang Chang stared at Hua Chen's body with his eyes. Hua Chen was naturally proud, he raised his head arrogantly, his eyes looking straight ahead, and that feeling from the army immediately emerged. But at that moment, a woman walked over from the side, glanced at Hua Chen, rolled her eyes directly, and then said, Ha, hey, no matter how much of a soldier he is, he's just a poor wretch, stinking, what kind of manly scent is that, it's disgusting. Sister, we are all from the same roots, saying this is not giving big brother face, right, big brother? Another glamorous woman said, and Zhao Tian burst into laughter, quickly reaching down and pinching the woman's buttocks hard. The woman hummed, her face turning red, and then quietly nestled in Zhao Tian's arms. These female disciples were all under Huang Chang, each one relying on their youth and beauty, extremely arrogant. But these women were only arrogant towards relatively weaker men. If they encountered wealthy and powerful men, they would immediately change their attitude, becoming like female sycophants, and even take the initiative to go to bed, using their bodies to please these strong men. Especially the first woman who spoke, she did some real estate business behind the scenes, had business dealings with Zhao Tian, publicly she was Zhao Tian's junior sister, but behind the scenes, she was sleeping with Zhao Tian at his beck and call, and even took birth control pills every day, which was widely known in the circle. They say soldiers are tough, but I haven't seen how tough Hua Chen is. I think people like Hua Chen are mostly the ones who rushed to the front lines to die during the war. Uh, you're right. These people are just cannon fodder, making money with their brains. Oh, when you say making money with their brains, I remember someone saying that these people keep their brains in their pants for safety, is that true? Ha ha, the crowd burst into laughter. Keeping their brains in their pants, perhaps only Hua Chen could do that under the heavens. However, Hua Chen remained silent, his eyes fixed straight ahead as he slowly said, I am guarding the territory of Dasha, fighting in the north and south, not as you all say. Moreover, the magnificent and beautiful landscapes of our motherland are incomparable to anywhere else. Huo Chen spoke loudly. Huang Chang nodded with a smile. He had high hopes for this disciple, who had more thoughts put into him than anyone else. Seeing Huo Chen being humiliated and still maintaining a broad perspective and composure, everyone was amazed. Not only that, Huang Chang also marveled at Huo Chen's broad knowledge. To have such impressive knowledge at such a young age was truly rare. But no matter how much Huang Chang valued Huo Chen, there were still people who looked down on him. The reason was simple, he was just a stinky soldier. What's so special about him? Dad, times have changed, don't be like this. Nowadays, society is not just about being powerful because you're a soldier. Look at Zhao Tian, our senior brother. Did he serve in the military? I don't think so, said Huang Xian. Huang Xian slowly walked out and said, Dad, senior brother Zhao is the one with great prospects. Huang Chang felt a bit uncomfortable after hearing this, and then said calmly, shut up. What prospects? Do you think having money is the only ability? Let me tell you, there are many precious qualities in this world that money can't buy. Dad, what are you talking about? Huang Xian felt wronged and quickly walked away, staring at Huang Chang, saying loudly, it's a money-driven society now. Without money, you are nothing. What so-called excellent qualities? Get real, without money, put him out in society for a few days and he'll probably starve to death. And besides, being a soldier, right? Dad, have you ever seen a normal soldier? How many good students have you seen become soldiers? And have you seen anyone with a good family background become a soldier? It's tough, but it's also a last resort. The truly capable and talented people, do they go? Huang Xian said a lot, his face turning red. If he continued, it would definitely lead to an argument, so he stopped abruptly, just looking at Huang Chang. Beside him, Zhao Tian looked at Huang Xian with admiration, as if to say, you're quite something, kid. You hit the nail on the head with just one sentence, impressive. Then, Huang Xian slowly walked over to Zhao Tian, getting close to him, and said to Huang Chang, Dad, to be honest, I just want to hang out with senior brother Zhao. I just want to make money, big money. Ha, <laughs> little junior brother, that's possible. With me, you can have everything, Zhao Tian said, laughing heartily as he saw that the kid was quite clever. Huo Chen couldn't bear it anymore. It was one thing for these people to humiliate him, but mentioning soldiers was something he couldn't tolerate. For Huo Chen, this experience was extremely valuable. During his training, he had witnessed firsthand what it meant to die in battle and what it meant to have piles of bones. 
On the Far East battlefield, Huo Chen had also seen those killed by heavy artillery. It was an endless plain, as far as the eye could see, with broken bodies and scattered internal organs everywhere. Huo Chen was about to stand up, but then he remembered that the person in front of him was his master. He slowly withdrew his hand and his expression suddenly became normal. Seeing no reaction from Huang Chang, Huang Xian became anxious and said, Dad, do you really insist on me joining the military? Look at what being a soldier has to offer. Are you really going to let me become a waste like him? Dad, you are really old. Just take care of yourself and don't worry about anything else. Huang Chang just looked at his son quietly, without saying a word, his expression surprisingly calm. This surprised Zhao Tian, who was watching the scene from the side, and he cursed in his heart, this old thing, why aren't you angry? If you're not angry, how can I deal with Hua Chen? Ah, he's really old and has lost his temper, hasn't he? Zhao Tian cursed in his heart, but he was helpless. Then, Zhao Tian pushed aside Hua Chen and sat in a very conspicuous position. This position originally belonged to Hua Chen, but Zhao Tian's actions seemed like a declaration of war. What are you looking at? Any objections? Anyone can sit in this position, including me, right? Zhao Tian seemed to be provoking Hua Chen as he glanced at him. Zhao Tian was of high status and had great wealth, so he was definitely a key figure here. He could sit wherever he wanted, and no one dared to oppose him, not even to have an opinion. In contrast, Hua Chen seemed very insignificant. Hua Chen, although the master values you, there is a distinction of respect and seniority here. You came later and are younger than us, so you should sit at the back. This is the most basic common sense, understand? Huang Xian clearly favored Zhao Tian and continued to find opportunities to attack Hua Chen. Chen Long, who was on the side, finally couldn't bear it and said with suppressed anger, You guys are going too far. What did Hua Chen do to provoke you? Or did he do something outrageous? How can you treat him like this? Zhao Tian, you are powerful and wealthy, but remember, each of your actions is more excessive than the last. Chen Long had a good relationship with Hua Chen since childhood, fearing that he would suffer even the slightest harm. When he was young, Chen Long was Hua Chen's protector. If anyone bullied Hua Chen, he would fight them with all his might. But times had changed, and he was no longer the reckless person he used to be. Chen Long knew how to assess the situation and was aware of his own abilities. He knew who he could provoke and who he couldn't. Someone like Zhao Tian was someone Chen Long wouldn't dare to provoke even with a hundred times more courage. The difference in strength was too great, and the consequences of conflicting with such a person would be unimaginable. But now things were different. Zhao Tian repeatedly humiliated Hua Chen, and his patience had reached its limit. What? Do you want to meddle in other people's business? Huang Xian was very dissatisfied, thinking, you, kid, can't even compare to Hua Chen, who are you trying to intimidate? Fatso, you have too much time on your hands. Haven't you caused enough trouble just now? Remember, this is the master's birthday banquet, not a market. You stink of filth, you look like you just crawled out of a sewer. Huang Xian was full of contempt for Hua Chen and didn't even consider him worthy. What I do is none of your business, I don't need you to teach me. Chen Long stood up angrily and left without looking back. Hua Chen quickly followed. Chen Long, this is the master's birthday banquet, come back, come back. Hua Chen shouted. I'm here, I've attended the master's birthday banquet, whether out of respect or obligation. Is there anything else I can leave for? Chen Long only had feelings for the old master, and he didn't want to see anyone else. He had given up on the gym and wished he never had to see it again. Hua Chen chased after him urgently. Chen Long suddenly stopped, turned around, and said angrily, Hua Chen, think about it. How many people from our past do you still remember? I can't help you anymore, and I can't help myself either. Yang Qing is the same. She's getting married tomorrow, Hua Chen, let's stop here. Chen Long said. What did you say? Yang Cheng is getting married. Hua Chen was shocked. Yes, tomorrow. She's marrying someone named Wang Lu, who is far more capable and talented than Zhao Tian. As the saying goes, Hua Chen, work hard and try to change yourself. Chen Long didn't want to say anything more, and he left with a sigh, leaving Hua Chen standing there in a daze. Hua Chen had made up his mind. No matter what happened, Yang Qing must not marry someone else. And so, Hua Chen ran all the way to the so-called wedding scene. That's the entire building of the Century Tower, filled with people from top to bottom. It can be said to be a gathering of distinguished guests, very lively. However, just as everyone was sipping wine and waiting for the two new people to say I do, the front door suddenly banged, and Hua Chen suddenly appeared in front of everyone. I do not agree to this wedding. His voice was loud, and everyone looked towards the door, and the atmosphere at the scene momentarily stagnated. Hua Chen scanned the crowd with his eyes, and his gaze fell on Yang Cheng. She was wearing a white wedding dress and looked so beautiful. Hua Chen, 
Yang Ching seemed to have seen a life-saving straw and tears flowed out. Naturally, the groom, Wang Lo, was by Yang Ching's side. He stared at Huo Chen with wide eyes and said coldly, This is unreasonable. How did this person barge in? What were the guards at the door doing? They couldn't even stop one person? Even more surprising was that not long after Huo Chen arrived, Huo Bingqing also came in. Similarly, she was looking at Huo Chen with excitement, with an indescribable feeling on her face. Wang Lu was even more puzzled. He had ordered people to control Huo Bingqing, so how did she escape? And how did she get in? Just then, a butler-like man walked in, his face full of injuries, half of his eye swollen, and he couldn't see clearly. Young master, it's not good. A man came from outside, and we couldn't stop him. Our brothers were beaten half to death and are lying at the door. The people present were instantly in an uproar. What's going on? Not to mention those guards nearby, who were all exceptionally strong and could easily take on a hundred opponents, but suddenly they were beaten like this, this shouldn't have happened. Everyone involuntarily looked at Hua Chen. Without thinking, they knew that all of this was done by this young man. Everyone gasped in shock. Who on earth is this, to be so fierce? After a pause, Hua Chen said sternly, release Yang Cheng, and I will spare your life. This statement was said in a calm manner, but it carried a strong sense of oppression, which came crashing down directly. The momentum was overwhelming, reaching the sky, and the powerful pressure made it hard for people to breathe. Upon hearing this, Wang Lu was not angry but laughed, and said coldly, how dare you cause trouble at my wedding? You're looking for death. After speaking, Wang Lu waved his hand behind him, and two burly men immediately stood up. These two men were very strong, almost to the point of being terrifying, and their physical strength had reached a frightening level of D. A level of D could easily kill an ordinary person. However, these two men had only stood for less than two seconds when they felt a very strong force rushing towards their faces. With a bang, the two men fell to the ground instantly, their mouths and ears filled with bright red blood. What's even more terrifying is that these people were in a twisted state, with all their cervical vertebrae shattered. Even if they could be saved, they would all be severely disabled. Hua Chen's appearance made Yang Ching, who was far away, burst into tears. But the next moment, Wang Lu directly shouted angrily, This is unreasonable, where did you come from? You dare to act recklessly here? Kid, if you can be two, I don't believe you can be ten. As soon as he finished speaking, dozens of bodyguards rushed over from behind. These were Wan Li's personal bodyguards, very fierce. When they stood up, their strength level was very high, and they were not opponents that ordinary people could defeat. The people present were very surprised. What they didn't expect was that Wang Lu not only had strong economic power but also had such a deep background of resources. He could call out so many thugs at once, showing Wang Li's profound strength in martial arts. Looking at Huo Chin again, he was still alone, facing so many men, he seemed so lonely. But what was strange was that there was no trace of panic on Huo Chen's face, and he even looked at Wang Lu with disdain. Is this your trump card? Mr. Wang, I suggest you call more, these are not enough to fight. After speaking, Huo Chen punched the air. Boom! There was a loud noise, and an astonishing mock ring appeared in the air. Everyone was extremely shocked. Kid, there are so many people, and you actually took the initiative to attack, aren't you looking for death? Huo Chen stood still, at least several meters away from the thugs. Nevertheless, the mock rings thrown by Huo Chen landed heavily on these people. In less than three seconds, these people either had broken legs or broken hands, and some had their bodies split in half. The scene was extremely bloody, and it made the onlookers' scalps tingle. At this moment, everyone was stunned. They had never seen this kind of attack, or perhaps they couldn't even see how Huo Chen was attacking the opponents. The only thing they knew was that Huo Chen's strength had exceeded the expectations of ordinary people. One person fighting against more than 10 highly skilled martial artists was something that ordinary people could not do. Wang Lu finally panicked. He was horrified to find that Huo Chen's combat power had surpassed everyone else's, but Wang Lu quickly reacted. If you cause trouble at my wedding for Yang Cheng, I will ruin Yang Cheng so that no one can have her. Wang Lu roared, snatched Yang Cheng back, and loudly asked, Yang Cheng, have you made up your mind? Will you marry me or not? I'll be up front, if you refuse me, I can kill you right now. Yang Ching bit her lip tightly, leaving a red mark on her teeth. At this moment, Li Yan also walked over. It was she who had brought Yang Ching and Wang Lu together in the first place, in order to free Wang Lu from his debt to Ajai. Yang Ching, what are you thinking? Don't forget about the debt your uncle owes, and your brother's school fees. You better think about it, don't be ungrateful. Coincidentally, this sentence reached Hua Chen's ears. This is ridiculous. I advise you to let Yang Ching go, otherwise there will be no place for you here. Wang Lu laughed as soon as he heard this. Hua Chen, are you kidding me? What place is this? 
I've lived for so long and I've never heard such words. As he spoke, Wan Le took out a blade, about one finger wide, extremely sharp on the surface, and pressed it against Yang Qing's face, sneering, Hua Chen, are you trying to force me? Fine, then I'll be straightforward. Yang Qing is just a toy to me, nothing special. I've played with her and had my fun. If she wants to leave me, no way. It's you, if you don't leave here, I'll cut her face right now, how about that? Wang Li's hand had already begun to exert force slowly, and the blade was about to cut Yang Qing's face. Some of the guests below couldn't understand why, at the stage of getting married, the violence was still so cruel. Could it be true, as Wang Le said, that Yang Qing was just a toy, and the game was over? Even without Hua Chen's intervention, Yang Chang and Wan Le wouldn't be happy. Some of the guests felt sorry, and just as they were about to step forward to dissuade them, they saw Wang Le throw a white blade, which then pierced straight into the head of a guest. After this, no one dared to interfere, and they all watched quietly. Hua Chen's eyes were fixed on Wang Lu as he said, Are you threatening me? Yang Qing realized it was not good. Although she didn't want to live with Wang Lu, she also didn't want to see Hua Chen get hurt. Wang Lu was the kind of person who would do anything, especially murder, when pushed to the edge. Hua Chen was very powerful, but everyone here was Wang Li's people, and in a battle of numbers, Hua Chen had no chance of winning. Hua Chen, leave quickly, don't mind me. Some things are not as simple as you think. Go, I'll stay here. Yang Qing was at her wit's end, and she also anticipated that she was a doomed person, and those beautiful lives were beyond her reach. The only thing she could do was sacrifice herself and fulfill everyone else. Thinking of this, Yang Qing couldn't hold back her tears anymore, and they flowed down her cheeks. Damn it, you bitch, I'll kill you. Perhaps Yang Qing's words were wrong, as Wang Le suddenly became furious and exerted force on his hand, preparing to cut a piece of skin from Yang Qing's face. However, just as Wang Lu was about to make a move, a dark figure suddenly flashed in front of him. With a swift movement, Hua Chen appeared directly in front of everyone. You! Wang Lu was greatly surprised, completely unprepared for Hua Chen's rapid arrival. Before he could say anything, a tremendous force suddenly struck his hand, shattering the bones in his shoulder. Ah, my hand! Wang Lu let out a painful scream and fell to the ground. The intense pain almost made it difficult for Wang Lu to breathe, his body contorted, emitting extremely unpleasant sounds. However, Hua Chen had no intention of stopping. He gently pulled and directly tore off Wang Li's right arm. With a terrified look, Wang Le watched as his arm, broken and limp, hung in Hua Chen's hand, the bones inside already shattered. The scene descended into chaos. Outside the hall, Wang Li's sister, Wang Qian, heard the commotion and walked in. When she saw Wang Le lying in a pool of blood with his arm torn off, she almost fainted. Who did this? Wang Qian rushed forward, but was quickly stopped by the bodyguards. Sister, you can't go over there. The person who injured Wang Lu is standing right there. It's very dangerous for you to go over. The bodyguard said. Due to anger and fear, Wang Qian was almost in an extreme state of emotion. I won't go, who will save my brother? Sister, even if you go, it's no use. The priority is to call an ambulance, and also, get Master Han Tanchi to come over. He's very strong and can definitely suppress the other party. In addition, causing such serious injury to Wang Lu has already violated the law. Call Captain Wu Kai to come over. He's specifically in charge of security here. Let him come and make sure this guy gets locked up. Someone suggested. Wang Xian stared at Wang Lu, her eyes red with anger. After listening to the advice of those around her, Wang Xian almost used all her strength to regain her composure. After a pause, Wang Xian coldly said, All right, do as you say. I want Hua Chen to suffer. It has to be said that the efficiency of Wang Qian's subordinates was truly fast. In less than five minutes, a black Alfred stopped in front of the building. A man in black clothes came down from it, wearing a neat suit and walking with great confidence. This man was the famous martial arts master, Han Tianqi. Han Tianqi was one of the top experts in the area, and most of his disciples were hired as bodyguards by wealthy individuals. Therefore, the bodyguards in the area who were well known were mostly Han Tianqi's disciples. This shows how high Han Tianqi's status was in the area. When Han Tianqi entered the building, everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Wang Lu was lifted onto a stretcher for first aid, and after being given anesthesia, his spirit slowly recovered. He glanced at Han Tianqi walking through the door and a cruel and eerie smile appeared on his face. Han Tianqi, a killer-level figure, had actually come. It was easy to guess that this was definitely arranged by his sister. Han Tianqi was ruthless and extremely stubborn with a temperament similar to that of a Tibetan Mastiff. In Han Tianqi's eyes, if someone bullied his disciple, he would make sure to punish that person severely. So basically, no one dared to provoke Han Tianqi or his disciples. 
Han Tianqi strode in, and upon seeing the disabled Wang Lo, he was instantly furious. Bastard, who did this? Come out and face me. Han Tianqi's words were like a heavy bomb exploding in the crowd. At the same time, the people also felt that there was a great internal force hidden in Han Tianqi's tone. Those who were a little closer to him had their eardrums shattered by Han Tianqi's voice, blood streaming from their ears. Wang Lo seemed to see a savior, smiled knowingly, and slowly got up, saying, Master, you're here. It was that bastard Hua Chen who beat me to near death. Master, you must avenge me. Han Tianqi's anger intensified as he turned to look at Hua Chen. It was you? Kneel down. Hua Chen didn't buy into it at all. He slapped Han Tianqi out of thin air, and Han Tianqi flew out like a piece of paper, crashing heavily into the stone wall in front. With a bang, a cloud of white smoke exploded where Han Tianqi landed. Surprisingly, Han Tianqi quickly stood up from the smoke. Good kid, you know Qigong, you've got some skills, but it ends here, Han Tianqi laughed, dusted off his clothes, lowered his body, and with a fierce kick of his right foot, he became like a cannonball, charging towards Hua Chen. Using the body as a weapon was something Hua Chen had never seen before. The opponent's momentum was fierce, and the tremendous impact even distorted the surrounding space. Wang Le cheered loudly, die, bastard. Yang Cheng, on the other hand, looked worried, Hua Chen, be careful. In the scene, apart from Yang Qing, no one believed in Hua Chen's strength. They all thought that Hua Chen was done for. Because anyone targeted by Han Tianqi would either die or be injured. But the next second, something shocking happened. Han Tianqi was suspended in the air, his body straight as a rod, his head firmly held by Hua Chen. Then, with a gentle shake from Hua Chen, Han Tianqi fell heavily. The legendary master lay on the ground like a dead fish, retching continuously, blood flowing from his mouth. Han Tianqi wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth, trying to stand up with the support of his hands, but after several attempts, he couldn't. Then, with a while, Han Tianqi spat out several mouthfuls of blood. Han Tianqi struggled on the ground, unable to get up no matter what, his body contorted in pain, looking exceptionally terrifying. If one observed closely, they would soon see a huge depression in Han Tianqi's lower abdomen, indicating internal organ damage. This was just a simple blow from Huo Chen, if he had used a little more force, Han Tianqi would have turned into minced meat. This so-called master was nothing in front of Han Tianqi. Seeing the result, Yang Qing finally relaxed. She had always believed in Hua Chen's strength. At this moment, Hua Chen was like a savior, and all of Yang Qing's hopes were pinned on him. At the same time, Yang Qing also sighed, realizing that she had never misjudged him, not in the past, not now. In stark contrast were the guests present. They looked at Han Tianqi in horror, speechless and petrified. They had come to watch the show, as Han Tianqi was powerful, and they had expected him to easily defeat Hua Chen. But no one could have imagined that such a formidable master would be severely injured by Hua Chen. My god, who is this Hua Chen? Someone blurted out unconsciously, then suddenly realized that if Hua Chen could defeat Han Tianqi in an instant, his strength must far surpass Han Tianqi's. Impossible. This is absolutely impossible. Wang Lu was the first to react. He couldn't believe that Hua Chen possessed such strength. The only master Wang Lu could think of was Han Tianqi, who was now half dead after being beaten by Hua Chen. Who else could match him? Hua Chen looked up and glanced at Wang Chen in the distance, thinking that his sister, Hua Bingqing, was still with her. A nameless rage surged in his heart, and he shouted angrily, Bingqing, why hasn't she been brought here yet? Wang Qian thought she was hidden in the dark, unnoticed, but when Hua Chen looked at her, she couldn't help but shiver. Seeing Hua Chen's gaze, Wang Qian realized that there was a force in this world that was unbreakable. Hua Chen's gaze was like the eye of heaven, in which her every move was laid bare. At this moment, Hua Chen also realized that the most influential speaker here should be Wang Qian. Wang Qian couldn't imagine how things would develop to this point. With no other choice, she couldn't hide anymore and decided to bravely step forward, saying, Hua Chen, you are strong, I admit, but your sister is in my hands. So, if you release Wang Lu, I will give Bing Qing to you. Hua Chen coldly smiled, is it that easy? If I hadn't come today, would Bing Chung have fallen into Wang Li's hands? With one sentence, he directly pointed out Wang Qian's weakness, causing her to feel flustered. Hua Chen had no intention of letting Wang Lu off, and he pressed his foot heavily on Wang Li's chest. With a crack, several of Wang Li's ribs shattered, and he let out a painful scream. With this kick, Hua Chen broke the third rib on Wang Li's right chest, the sharp bone piercing his heart. As the person in charge here, Wang Qian was well aware of Wang Li's situation. She clenched her fists in anger and said, Hua Chen, don't push it. I promise to release Bing Qing and will naturally hand her over to you. But you must give me an explanation for what you did to my brother today. Wu Kai will be here soon. He is the sheriff here, and the truth will come to light then. Hua Chen didn't feel afraid at all, 
but instead laughed. Ha ha, the sheriff? Okay, I'll wait for him to come. Han Tianxi, lying on the ground, was awakened by Hua Chan's laughter. He looked at the man in front of him in horror, his right hand covering his chest, feeling no blood flow in his body, only a faint heartbeat. The strength that Hua Chen had displayed made people shudder. If Hua Chen were to be raided, he would definitely be a terrifying presence surpassing A level. Wang Xian's call for the sheriff to come made it clear that she was aware of Wang Li's situation. Going too far. Han Tianqi regretted not being skilled enough and regretted not knowing who he was dealing with before hastily coming here. But there is no regret medicine in this world. Han Tianqi knew clearly that the other party's strength far surpassed his own, especially that unyielding force. Looking at this young man who was much younger and much stronger than himself, Han Tianqi felt completely hopeless. At that moment, a commotion outside was heard, and a man in black leather walked in. Who is causing trouble here? Catch them and bring them back. The man shouted loudly, his voice full of authority. This man was the famous sheriff, the nemesis of the local black forces, Wu Kai, the captain. Of course, he was also a well-known protector of the evil forces within a hundred miles. Along with Captain Wu, several special forces soldiers in black uniforms and black masks entered. They held extendable batons and were already in a combat stance, exuding a strong sense of killing intent. Their appearance made everyone present gasp. They were the special law enforcement team under Captain Wu, with strong autonomy. In plain terms, if they wished, they could enforce justice on the spot. This was a special wedding banquet, but the most formal authority in the city appeared, indicating the immense power of the Wang Le family. Wang Le smiled faintly and said coldly, Hu Chen, it's not much of a skill to beat up a few thugs. Do you have the guts to fight these people? Wu Kai walked over, pointing his black extendable baton at Hu Chen. Are you causing trouble? Do you know that this is Wang Li's wedding banquet? Obviously, Wu Kai saw Wang Li's miserable state and couldn't help but feel shocked. It had been many years since he had seen someone beat someone to death or maim them with their bare hands. Captain Wu, be careful. Hu Chen is very powerful. Master Han almost died at his hands, Wang Qian reminded from the side. Wu Kai turned his head and saw Master Han lying not far away. His body curled up, his mouth full of blood, his eyes scattered, and he was basically half dead. Is it all this kid's doing? Wu Kai seemed to be a little incredulous. If it took a lot of strength to beat Wang Lo, then it would take almost a hundred times the strength to beat Master Han. Moreover, Hu Chen looked very young and did not have the appearance of a master at all. How did he beat him? Or what did he use to beat him? Captain Wu, it's absolutely true. Hu Chen beat him up in just a few moves. Wang Qian couldn't wait to recount what had just happened, almost saying that Hu Chen was powerful and evil. Wu Kai snorted and glanced at Han Tianqi lying on the ground, a cold smile appearing at the corner of his mouth. Master Han, you don't look so good either. Being pressed to the ground and beaten by a young man. It really disgraces your status as a master. Han Master had always looked down on Wu Kai thinking that he had gotten to where he was today by pulling strings and only knew how to use force, nothing else. Now, he had been beaten by Hu Chen and seen by Wu Kai, which was simply embarrassing. Master Han couldn't stop trembling, and then said, Kid, you don't know his strength. If you're strong, come at me, I want to see how powerful you regular soldiers are. On the other side, Hu Chen looked at Wu Kai, sneered coldly, and said, You're the captain of the security team. Wang Lu forcibly took a civilian woman, and you didn't care? Are you looking for trouble with me? Wu Kai laughed as soon as he heard this. Ah, I only believe what I see. When I came in, I only saw you beating people, there's no such thing as forcibly taking a woman. You tell me, should I intervene or not? Violent assault is something I should intervene in. Captain Lee, take this man away, quickly. Wu Kai was already familiar with this routine, regardless of whether the other party was right or wrong, as long as they touched the interests of the benefactor, it was wrong and they should be arrested and brought to trial. But what puzzled Wu Kai was that Captain Lee had not made a move from start to finish, not even a slight movement, his eyes were full of fear as he looked at Hua Chen, and his body trembled constantly. Although Captain Lee was wearing a mask, his expression could not be seen clearly, but anyone with eyes could see that Captain Lee was scared. He seemed to have seen something terrible and didn't dare to move. Wu Kai was very puzzled, his brow furrowed, and he said impatiently, Hey, Captain Lee, I'm talking to you, hurry up and arrest him. After hesitating for a moment, Captain Lee suddenly drew a dagger from his waist, and the dazzling light flashed by, causing everyone in the room to cover their eyes. But what was incomprehensible was that the moment Captain Lee rushed out, he suddenly changed direction and strode towards Wu Kai, the dagger gleaming with a cold light, held directly in front of Wu Kai. This move was truly shocking. The person they were supposed to arrest was Hua Chen. When did it become Wu Kai? Could it be that Captain Lee had betrayed them? The public security brigade was known for its discipline 
and everyone in the team was very loyal. Never did they expect that someone would do such a thing. The members behind Wu Kai were all stunned. They couldn't understand what Captain Lee was doing. Captain Lee's actions could only lead to two results. Either he killed Wu Kai, or he died himself. He had reached a dead end. At first, Hu Chen was also puzzled, but then he thought for a moment and a satisfied smile appeared on his face. It was Wu Kai who was completely puzzled and muttered softly, Bastard, what are you trying to do? Put the damn knife down. My neck hurts. Wu Kai roared, thinking that Captain Lee was his subordinate and had long been tamed, very obedient, and wouldn't resist even if he was beaten on the ground. But just as Wu Kai was about to resist, he suddenly felt a strong sense of killing intent. The powerful killing intent filled the entire hall, stunning everyone, even the air seemed to stagnate. Wu Kai suddenly dared not move, trembling as he said, Captain Lee, this is illegal. Believe it or not, I'll send you to prison immediately. Captain Lee snorted coldly and said, Humph, at this point, who doesn't know what the outcome will be? Do you think I will let go? Wu Kai was stunned. Captain Lee was right. At this point, he had already shot the arrow and couldn't turn back. It was unclear whether Captain Lee was too nervous, but his hand was shaking lightly and accidentally cut Wu Kai's neck. In an instant, a crimson stream of blood flowed out, staining Wu Kai's collar and chest red. Kid, you're ruthless. Wu Kai finally realized the reality and was about to continue pressing for answers, but he heard Captain Lee whisper softly in his ear, Captain Wu, in terms of rank, you and I are the same. I can handle the things you can handle, but for this matter today, I advise you to interfere less, otherwise the consequences will be unimaginable. After speaking, Captain Lee slowly released his grip, dropped the dagger in his hand, and walked out without looking back. Wu Kai still couldn't believe what had happened. He vaguely felt that Captain Lee seemed to have some untold secrets, and more importantly, today's Captain Lee seemed like a different person, so unfamiliar. I must investigate this matter thoroughly. Captain Lee, you wait for me, kid. Wu Kai roared and followed Captain Lee's footsteps out. This scene was all seen by Wang Qian, and she suddenly panicked. Captains, don't leave. Wang Qian couldn't understand. Wu Kai and Captain Lee, both of them had mysterious powers backing them, but why did they both seem intimidated by Hu Chen? A woman's intuition told Wang Qian that they had really encountered a tough nut to crack, and this matter was not only out of control, but was also developing in a more serious direction. What was even more unexpected was that Captain Lee, who had not been gone for long, actually came back. He changed his dirty clothes and put on a clean, green military uniform, adding a lot of vigor to his capable body. Then, in front of everyone, Captain Lee did something unexpected. He actually saluted Hua Chen. It seemed that he had come back this time just to salute Hua Chen. Hua Chen then realized that the Captain Lee in front of him was actually a subordinate of his former subordinate. I see. Hua Chen smiled faintly and said, This place is full of filth and needs to be cleaned up. Yes. Captain Lee answered very seriously. Someone, take Wang Lo back and interrogate her properly. With a bang, many people came from behind and took Wang Lo, Master Han, and others away. Hua Chen smiled satisfactorily, looked at Wang Qian, and said, Wang Qian, did I let you go? Wang Qian was stunned and stopped in her tracks. What do you want to do? Wang Qian felt fearful and tremblingly said, I also want to ask you, what do you want to do? Do you think that today's matter will just end like this? Hua Chen walked forward slowly, speaking coldly, this city has become like this, and you have played a significant role in it. Nonsense, I don't understand what you're saying at all. Wang Qian felt the immense hostility from the other party and quickly turned and left. But just a few steps away, Captain Li swiftly threw a flying knife. Swish! The flying knife spun three times on Wang Qian's shoulder before embedding itself in a large wooden board ahead. This time, Wang Qian truly felt what death was like. The hairs on her body stood up, and the back of her clothes was instantly soaked with sweat. Captain Lee walked over slowly, looked at Hua Chen, and with piercing eyes that seemed to penetrate the other's body, asked, Miss Wang, did I just hear you threatening him? Wang Chen was so scared that she didn't dare to speak. Remember, don't provoke Hua Chen in the future, otherwise this will be your fate. Captain Lee threw another dagger, which forcefully pierced into the stone slab in front, causing the heavy stone to crack and turn into countless fragments. The power of the dagger is too terrifying, if it were to stab someone, it would be unbearable. Wang Qian was indeed frightened, standing still for a long time without daring to speak, but deep down she was stubborn, and she said, Captain Lee, are you abusing your power? Abusing your law enforcement authority? How will you explain to Captain Wu Kai after you go back? Captain Lee burst into laughter when he heard this. I can't believe it. Are you talking about that fool Wu Kai? Have you seen what he has done? He has no skills, yet he holds such an important position. Many people dream of getting rid of him. Do you think someone like that can control anyone? 
Come and control me? Then, Captain Lee's expression changed. I know you are close to Captain Wu Kai, but it's a pity. After tonight, you won't be able to call him Captain Wu anymore. What does that mean? Everyone present was shocked, finding it difficult to understand what Captain Lee meant. Captain Wu Kai was officially appointed and had supreme law enforcement authority. Even if he were to be dismissed, there would have to be a complete set of procedures. But from what Captain Lee said, it seemed that Captain Wu would step down tonight. What kind of situation was this? There were many people present who knew the ins and outs of the matter, and they quickly realized that since Captain Lee could say such things, it was definitely not groundless, and there must be a big shot behind it, otherwise no one would have such power. The more they thought about it, the more absurd and abnormal it seemed, and the more terrifying it became. Captain Lee didn't care much, he knew very well about Hua Chen's identity, he was stronger than anyone else. The two of them chatted and reminisced in front of everyone, completely ignoring these people, and finally raised a few glasses to everyone before slowly leaving. Only then did Hua Chen's expression soften. Yang Ching, it's okay now. After today, no one will dare to provoke you. Go and call Bing Chong, we'll go back, Hua Chen said. Yang Ching's eyes were filled with tears of gratitude. He never expected Hua Chen to be so powerful, nor did he expect that Hua Chen, who had achieved so much, would still not forget about him and act as his protector. Yang Ching even thought, what else could he be afraid of in the future? The few of them chatted on and off like this, and around 8 o'clock, they all returned to Yang Ching's residence. It was a shared house, in a very remote location, with a narrow alley at the entrance, and the air was damp, with a sour smell coming from the sewer everywhere. The garbage truck was stuck at the entrance of the alley, so they had to enter sideways. The three of them walked in one after the other, and when they opened the door, a strong foul smell hit them. Hua Chen endured the urge to retch and check the source of the smell. After looking around, he found it was coming from the large pipe on the roof. If he guessed correctly, that pipe should be the sewage pipe for the entire building. As for why Yang Ching and the others would live here, it was probably because the rent was low. In the core area of Xiagua, housing prices were very high, and rent was even more exorbitant. Many high-income elites, once they rented a house, would live frugally. Hua Chen sighed, made an excuse to go to a place where no one was around, took out his phone, and dialed a long string of numbers. This was a specially encrypted phone, and very few people could use it. The call went through, and a voice came from the other end soon. You're back. Where are you? The voice was very penetrating, as if it wanted to come out of the phone. Hua Chin did not answer directly, but said coldly, where I am doesn't matter, what's important is that you must give me an explanation. There was a moment of silence on the other end of the phone, as if they were deep in thought. On the other side, Wang Qian walked out of the building and let out a long sigh. This was the first time she had encountered such a situation. Hua Chen was too strong, even though he was just one person, why did she feel like there were thousands of troops and horses every time she saw him? This is unreasonable, this person is too powerful. Does he really think our Wang family is powerless? Wang Qian gradually emerged from the fear of Hua Chen, the panic in her eyes disappeared, replaced by infinite resentment. Then, Wang Qian called her father, Wang Ming, and detailed the events that had occurred. Wang Ming doted on his son, Wang Lu, to the point of spoiling him. As long as Wang Lu wanted something, Wang Ming would give it to him. Wang Lu, relying on his father's influence, behaved recklessly outside, impregnating dozens of women and engaging in robbery and fighting. The victims were either threatened or compensated by Wang Ming at a high price, and everything was eventually settled. After hearing Wang Qian's words, Wang Ming's expression became extremely heavy, that's my precious son, who dared to lay a hand on him. Arrange for the best medical team to treat my son, I am currently inspecting a project, I will come over once this matter is resolved. The project Wang Ming mentioned was the recently popular crystal mine. Previously, these crystal mines were worthless, only used as decorations or ordinary tools. However, a genius studied the molecular structure of the crystal mine and developed it into an energy source. From that moment on, crystal mines became military supplies and a strategic resource for a country due to their wide range of uses and precious quality. Of course, they were also purchased by individuals for collection, but this was not something ordinary people could afford. After hanging up the phone, Wang Ming felt his eyelids twitching and rubbed them, causing half of his face to twitch as well. He had a sense of foreboding. Wang Ming quickly took out his phone and called Wang Qian's number. Wang Qian, contact the head of public security and have the people released, Wang Ming said. This seems impossible. We need to contact the higher-ups. Captain Wu has been arrested, and Captain Li has also betrayed us, Wang Qian said. Wang Ming was very surprised. Who had such great power that even Wu Kai couldn't handle it? Okay, I understand, Wang Ming replied, squeezing the phone in his palm. Due to his anger, the phone made a cracking sound. 
Wang Ming's wife, Song Wanli, walked over and asked, Ming, who bullied our son? Hurry and have someone kill him. He's our only precious son, obedient and honest. If anything happens to him, I don't want to live anymore. Song Wanli cried as she spoke, then continued, It must be that wretched woman Yang Qing causing trouble for our son. Since she treated my son like this, I will have someone disfigure her now. Everything was because of Yang Qing, and Song Wanli would not let the culprit go unpunished. At that moment, an unfamiliar call came in. Wang Ming looked down and saw that it was a call from the head of security, Huan Linxi. Lin Shi was the superior of Captain Li and Wu Kai. Wang Ming had intended to call him, but now he was calling himself, which puzzled Wang Ming. However, it was also good. Since Lin Shi took the initiative to call, Wang Ming could ask about his son's situation and see if he could help. But before Wang Ming could speak, Lin Shi loudly said, Is this Wang Ming? You've caused a big disaster. Wang Ming suddenly had a bad feeling. Normally, Lin Shi had a good relationship with him and always called him Xiao Ming no matter the occasion. But now he called him by his name directly and asked if he was Wang Ming. It was obvious that Lin Shi had deleted his number and checked the call history before calling. And the big disaster he mentioned, wasn't it about his son? But how could this be his fault, or his son's fault? Where did this talk of causing a big disaster come from? Wang Ming became angry and asked, Since you already know, why didn't you help my son? And he was even arrested by your people? You are in charge of public security here, we have a good relationship. Why didn't you help me when such a big thing happened? Wang Ming took a deep breath and said slowly, So, help me again, get my son out, and I will give you whatever you want. On the phone, Lin Shi kept sighing and finally said, Lao Ming, it's not that I don't want to help you, but this matter is not as simple as you think. You have no idea. The entire headquarters now knows about this matter and is planning a major arrest operation to catch those who have neglected their duties and abused their power. I am also in a difficult position. Wang Ming was shocked. This was not right. The public security team had always been very stable, and it was unlikely for such a situation of internal arrests to occur without special circumstances. Wang Ming furrowed his brows slightly, thinking that something must have happened for it to come to this. Then, Lin Shi spoke in a very secretive tone, I really can't help you with this matter. Hey, it's already good enough that your family's young master wasn't sentenced. Be content. What are you saying? Wang Ming was shocked. At most, Wang Lu might have been involved in a fight, but it wouldn't lead to a sentence. However, from Lin Shi's tone, it seemed that this matter would result in a severe punishment. How dare they? Wang Ming was instantly filled with anger and said coldly, Lao Lin, you're being a bit ungrateful. Don't forget how you got into your position in the first place and how you got to where you are today. To put it bluntly, you're being ungrateful. I've raised a white-eyed wolf. Lin Shi immediately became displeased upon hearing this and said with a smile, times have changed, it's not like before. Captain Wu Kai has been placed under detention order and will be taken away for execution tomorrow. Wake up. Shit. Wang Ming took a sharp breath. Damn it, all the people he had nurtured were finished, and now this. Wang Ming didn't know what else to say, and his phone slipped from his hand as he collapsed to the ground, feeling powerless. If Bayan City was like a stagnant pool, then Hua Chen's arrival was like a surge of magma in that stagnant pool, causing the entire Bayan City to boil. The news spread quickly, and some people feared Hua Chen's power, becoming very low-key during this time. Others applauded, saying that spring had come to Bayan City, as someone was standing up for them and finally speaking up for justice. Some young girls discussed Hua Chen's appearance. You have no idea. Hua Chen is so handsome. I couldn't resist him at first sight. Exactly, and he has six-pack abs, so mesmerizing. It's said that his martial arts skills are extremely outstanding, even Master Han Tianqi can't beat him. And also, you know about the Wang family in Bayan City, they were almost completely taken down by Hua Chen. It's terrifying. I think this matter is not simple. The people from the Wang family are not easy to mess with, and there will definitely be a bloody storm following this. Everyone in Bayan City was discussing this matter. As one of the main characters, Yang Qing was surprisingly calm this time, lying on a soft velvet bed and sleeping soundly. When Yang Qing woke up, a strong smell of chicken soup wafted into the bedroom. She stretched her neck and sniffed, her stomach involuntarily growling. You're awake. I made this chicken soup, try it. Huo Chen, wearing an apron, carefully approached with a bowl of chicken soup. He didn't ask Yang Qing to get up but instead brought a plastic board for her to sit and drink on the bed. Bing Qing is still sleeping. Hurry and drink it, then switch with her. Hua Chen placed the chicken soup on the plastic board, his fingers already red from the heat. Yang Qing smiled happily, her eyes squinting, her waterfall-like hair hanging down, not very glamorous but full of a woman's charm. Wow, it's really delicious. Yang Qing blew on the hot soup and took a sip, a happy smile on her face. 
And so, the two women savored the most precious and rare chicken soup in the world. On the other side, Mr. and Mrs. Wang Ning were discussing an unprecedentedly valuable business deal. However, it was clear that their hearts were not entirely focused on the business. They were most worried about their son. If there was no external intervention, once he entered the trial process, Wang Li's future would be over. The negotiations were conducted with the world's largest ore manufacturer, the renowned FU Group. This time, the FU Group sent the well-known negotiator, Rolls, as their representative. However, it was strange that Rolls arrived very late, more than an hour late. The Wangs were constantly checking the time, worrying about the business, fearing that this delay would add many variables. On the other hand, they were increasingly worried about their son. Just as the Wangs were feeling restless, a crisp sound of high heels was heard from outside. A woman named Ileana walked in. With her blonde hair, blue eyes, and high nose, she looked like a member of the royal family with noble blood. Compared to Roll's reputation, Ileana appeared particularly mysterious. She often appeared suddenly in important places and had a say in decision-making power on key issues. However, few people knew much about Ileana. This time, Ileana's personal visit added a layer of mystery to the already complex negotiations. Ileana was serious and when she sat down, the atmosphere in the room suddenly became tense. Wang Ming felt something was not right for the first time. Looking around, he noticed that Ileana had brought several close bodyguards. These bodyguards had a very weak presence, clearly intentionally hidden, indicating their strong abilities. In the next moment, Ileana suddenly turned and slapped Wang Ming in the face. Smack! A loud slap, almost knocking Wang Ming off his feet. The famous richest man in Bayan City was publicly slapped by a woman. This was simply incomprehensible. Miss Ileana, what's the matter with you? We are partners. Wang Ming covered his face, full of confusion. Song Wanni rushed up, tightly holding Wang Ming's head in her hands, glaring fiercely at Ileana and said, Miss Ileana, is there a misunderstanding? This is my husband. Ileana smiled faintly and said, I slapped your husband. He deserves it. And you, a woman who doesn't know her place, also deserves it. After speaking, Ileana slapped Song Wanni in the face. You. Song Wanni had a hot temper. If it weren't for the family business, she would have fought back long ago. Now, she looked angrily at Ileana, full of rage. Why did you hit me? Song Wanni finally couldn't help but speak out. He he, you should ask yourselves. You have offended the wrong person, understand? Ileana clapped her hands, looking very pleased with herself. As soon as she finished speaking, several well-trained bodyguards immediately rushed over and surrounded the Wangs. Wang Ming had never seen such a situation before and was so scared that his legs went weak. He pushed Song Wanni forward and said, What are you doing? Ileana giggled and walked up, saying, In the past, I would have torn you to pieces. But now, someone has asked me to spare your lives. So I'll spare you. Remember, go back now, apologize to that big shot, and ask him to spare you. Otherwise, your Wang family will cease to exist. With a bang, Wang Ming felt like he had fallen into an abyss, surrounded by endless fear, and drenched in cold sweat. Wang Ming quickly thought of someone, the overlord who had beaten Wang Lu. Now, only this person had the greatest suspicion. Otherwise, who else could have the power to make the entire group come after him? On the other hand, since Hu Chen moved in, Yang Qing had finally felt a sense of home, especially during this time, Hu Chen had been taking care of her like an older brother. Just as Yang Qing was immersed in Hu Chen's tenderness and care, a rapid knocking on the door was heard from outside. Yang Qing, open the door, it's me, your uncle. It was Zhang Gang. Zhang Gang was knocking frantically, even to the point of banging on the door. Yang Qing's face changed suddenly, and she quickly walked to the door, shouting loudly, Uncle, won't you leave me alone? Upon hearing someone inside, Zhang Gang didn't care about what was being said inside. He kicked the door open with force. Yang Chang was startled and unconsciously stepped back, her delicate face filled with grievance. Uncle, what more do you want? You are not welcome here, leave. The reason Yang Qing married Wang Lu was partly because of Zhang Gang. Zhang Gang was a well-known gambler who had incurred a huge gambling debt to the Wang family. This was a debt that Wang Ming could never repay in his lifetime, so he came up with a plan to marry off Yang Qing to offset a portion of the debt. Yang Qing was a rare beauty in the local area, and many people pursued her but suddenly she was handed over, leaving her almost speechless with joy. Later, Huo Chen appeared, and then the following events unfolded. Zhang Gang forcefully held the door and said fiercely, Yang Qing, you've caused me a lot of trouble, let me in. That's right, let us in, came the voice of Aunt Li Yen from behind. Yang Qing turned her head and saw her younger brother, Zhang Yinqi. With the arrival of the entire Zhang family, fear immediately appeared on Yang Qing's face. At this moment, Hu Chun walked out. 
He glanced at Zhang Gang but remained silent, sitting on the side and quietly observing the scene. Zhang Gang, a notorious gambler, Li Yan, a well-known prostitute, and Zhang Yunqi, who often roamed the streets, stealing from and bullying people, was a notorious thug. This family rarely gathered together, so their sudden appearance to confront Yang Qing could lead to anything. Yang Qing didn't want to escalate the situation and coldly said, hurry up and speak, then leave. Since Wang Li's wedding, Yang Qing had made up her mind to cut ties with her uncle's family. She had seen it all. In the face of money and interests, so-called family ties meant nothing and could even harm you. As the saying goes, the more familiar someone is, the deeper the hurt they can inflict. Bastard. Zhang Gang burst in, tearing a hole in the back of Yang Qing's clothes. Yang Cheng, you ungrateful wretch. Have you forgotten how we treated you in the past? What do you have? The clothes you wear, the car you drive, the food you eat, all given to you by Wan Lu. And what have you done? Nothing, except betraying us. Causing a scene at the wedding, making us lose face, all right, Yang Qing, you only think about yourself, have you ever thought about our family? You are free to come and go as you please, but what about us? Have you ever considered us? Zhang Gang's voice grew louder and more emotional. Yang Qing didn't want to hear what he had to say. Tears of pain slowly streamed down her face as she continued, What have you done to me? You gave me to Wan Lu without my knowledge. That night, you drugged me, didn't you? If I hadn't woken up in time, I would have been violated by Wang Lu. When I caused a scene at the wedding, threatening me with a knife, why didn't any of you see that? Who stood up for me then, who considered my feelings? You all treated me like an object, a tool for making money, nothing more. Yang Qing finished speaking, tears streaming down her face. Zhang Gang was left speechless, unable to utter a word. He knew better than anyone what he had done and what he had thought. He had thought everything would go according to plan, but who knew it would turn out like this? Li Yin couldn't hold back and interjected, Yang Qing, listen to me. You are a woman, and naturally, you have to marry. Wang Li's family conditions are very good, marrying him is a blessing for you for the rest of your life. You say he drugged you, threatened you with a knife. But have you ever thought, if you had obeyed him, if you had followed his lead, how could he have treated you like that? Yang Qing, you are not a child anymore. When something goes wrong, you should first look for the problem within yourself, instead of blaming others. This woman was really something. At first, it was about love, but later it turned into moral coercion, saying that one should find the reasons from within oneself. If Yang Qing had listened to Li Yan's words, it would have been a disaster. Hua Chen looked at Li Yan with force, this woman looked sharp, just like a shrew. Yang Qing was almost faint with anger. Uncle's family was determined to make things difficult for her, but she was the victim, and yet she was treated like this. Li Yin was puzzled when she saw that Yang Qing was not giving in. Strange, Yang Qing is usually very timid. She would agree to anything with just a little intimidation. Why is she so strong this time? Li Yin muttered to herself, then took a few steps forward and said in a compelling manner, Yang Qing, I can overlook what you have done to us, but you have caused great harm to our family both mentally and physically. You must compensate us for our mental and economic losses, lost wages, transportation expenses, nursing fees, etc. Totaling 2 million. Li Yin finally revealed her purpose, to make Yang Qing pay a huge sum of compensation. Hua Chen still sat beside her, sipping his tea lightly, a cold smile flashing across his face. Zhang Gang's family had gone too far. Not only did they not apologize, but they also came to demand money. Such a strange thing had never happened before. Yang Qing was trembling with anger. She knew that Zhang Gang's family was ruthless, but she had not expected them to be so ruthless. You dare to ask me for money? How shameless. Who was the one who harmed me in the first place? I will never forgive you. Please leave here quickly. Yang Qing said angrily. Yang Qing, I am giving you face. Don't be ungrateful. Li Yin slammed the table, stood up suddenly, and was about to pounce on Yang Qing. Hua Chen turned his head and saw that Li Yin was holding a dagger apparently intending to disfigure Yang Qing. He immediately threw the teacup in his hand. Ah! The scalding tea splashed on Li Yan's face, causing her to scream in pain. What are you doing? Zhang Yunqi shouted, picking up a stool and charging forward. Hua Chen slapped him and sent him flying like a cannonball, crashing heavily into the corner of the wall. Adults are handling things. What's a child's business? Hua Chen asked, looking at Zhang Yunqi. You seem to be an adult now, he said with a cold sneer. After that, Hua Chen kicked Zhang Yunqi, sending him flying dozens of meters away. Zhang Yunqi was completely dazed, his eyes filled with golden light, not knowing what had happened. Zhang Gang, who was far away, looked terrified. This scene was too familiar, it was like a replay of Yang Qing's wedding. It was this Hua Chen who had single-handedly disrupted the wedding scene. Hua Chen slowly stood up, 
looked at Zhang Gang, and said with a cold smile, I hit you, do I also need to compensate you for medical expenses and mental damages? Then he looked at Li Yan, and you, do you want compensation for your burns? Li Yan's face was covered in tea leaves, but she didn't care and stood up to argue. Huo Chen punched her directly and then stomped heavily on her chest, causing her sternum to crack. Ah, it hurts. I have no grudge against you, why are you treating me like this? Li Yan screamed in pain. At that moment, Huo Chen seemed to remember something and turned to Zhang Gang, asking coldly, I almost forgot. We need to be fair. So, I'll ask you, what do you want now? Zhang Gang was trembling with anger, don't play with me. I'm giving you a chance, so that people won't say I'm bullying you, Huo Chen said coldly. Fine, then compensate me with money, the more the better. Not only that, you have to apologize to the Wang family, and kneel down to apologize, Zhang Gang said. Huo Chen had thought that these people would resist, seek revenge, and so on, but in the end, they just wanted money. As for the apology, it was simply ridiculous to Huo Chen. At this point, these people still haven't seen the situation clearly. Smiling, Huo Chen said, you can keep your opinion, but I think, whatever compensation you want for Yang Qing, you should give it to her. Seven days, do you understand? At this point, Huo Chen was concerned about how to make up for Yang Qing's injury, and also about the aftermath of these people's actions towards Yang Qing. Zhang Gang couldn't help but shiver. Who could come up with over 2 million in compensation? This is really causing trouble, how did we end up with this situation? Just as Zhang Gang was pondering how to get out of this, there were suddenly a lot of breaking sounds outside. Huo Chen used two fingers to pull back the curtain and saw a long line of cars, with a bulletproof dodge at the front and a row of Porsches behind it, quite a scene. Interesting, the expected guests have arrived. Huo Chen closed the curtain and leisurely made himself a cup of tea. Before long, the neighbor Aunt Zhang hurried over, pulled Yang Cheng out and gasped, Yang Cheng, it's not good, the richest man Wang Ming is here. We all living here are elderly, weak, sick, and disabled, there are not many young people, so I thought of coming to find you. We are all ordinary poor families, hurry and run, there's nothing good for you here. Yang Qing wiped away her tears, feeling very grateful. Aunt Zhang was always kind to her, caring and giving gifts on holidays, so Yang Qing treated her like family most of the time. Now, hearing her come to report the news, Yang Qing shed tears of gratitude. After a pause, Yang Qing said, Aunt Zhang, I understand, this matter is very complicated, I don't want to involve you, please leave, I will handle it alone. Aunt Zhang exclaimed, My good girl, that's the richest man, with money and power, what can you do as a young girl? Hurry, I'll go report to the police. It's useless, Yang Qing said weakly, her eyes filled with despair. When Zhang Gang heard that the richest man was coming, he was almost jumping for joy. He must be coming for Yang Qing's matter, he must be. Now, someone will deal with this group of scoundrels, we are saved. Zhang Gang burst into laughter and said, Ha, one the richest man must be here to help me. Yang Qing, and you, Huo Chen, you're finished. You better apologize later, you still have a way out, otherwise, you will all die. Li Yan also realized, and stood up, saying, Ha, retribution, this is retribution. You don't know who Wang Ming is, let me tell you, once you provoke him, none of you will have a good ending. Especially you, Yang Qing, you better apologize to him, or you're finished. Smack. Before the other party could finish speaking, Huo Chen slapped her, making Li Yan dizzy. Did I let you speak? Huo Chen said coldly, pulling Yang Cheng and quickly walking downstairs. Under the building, dozens of luxury cars were lined up, and Mr. and Mrs. Wang Ming were standing at the front, as if they were welcoming someone important. When Huo Chen came downstairs, Mr. and Mrs. Wang Ming looked at him for a full 10 seconds. They couldn't believe that the person causing such a stir in half of Bayan was a young man in his 20s. Huo Chen was indeed very young, so young that it was unbelievable. Zhang Gang, excited, quickly walked over, rubbing his hands and saying, Mr. Wang, you've finally come. It's that kid Huo Chen, he's the one who hit your son, quickly deal with him, he's very bad. Ironically, even though Zhang Gang said this, Wang Ming remained unmoved, his eyes fixed straight ahead, with a serious expression, as if something important was happening. Soon, Zhang Gang saw Huo Chen in front of him, and his body couldn't help but tremble, sweat dripping from his forehead. At this moment, Huo Chen also walked out, and when he saw Wang Ming, he smiled faintly, standing calmly beside him. His actions were very obvious, as if he was waiting for Wang Ming to do something. The next moment, Wang Ming knelt down directly and knocked three times in front of everyone. Bang! The sound was not loud, but it was enough to shock everyone's hearts. The richest man in Bayan kowtowing to Huo Chen, what on earth is going on? Everyone was stunned, completely unaware of what had happened. The only thing they knew was that Huo Chen's status had surpassed Wang Ming's. Even in front of Huo Chen, Wang Ming was as humble as an ant. 
Mr. Huo, please forgive me, it was my fault. Please forgive my son for everything he did to you. Mr. Huo, I sincerely apologize to you, it was my fault, I'm sorry. After Wang Ming finished speaking, he knocked his head a few more times, and his body remained low on the ground, showing no intention of getting up. Suddenly, everyone held their breath and looked on in fear. With Wang Ming's strength and background, shouldn't he be seeking revenge? Why is he apologizing? What the hell is going on? The plot is not what everyone expected. But strangely, Hua Chen remained unusually calm, as if to say that everything was happening as it should, and even within his expectations. In the fearful eyes of the crowd, Hua Chen slowly walked over. If the father fails to discipline his son, your son's misbehavior is closely related to you. Hua Chen said slowly, his tone filled with the sternness of a caring father. Wang Ming was two whole rounds older than Hua Chen, almost the same age as Hua Chen's father. However, in front of Hua Chen, he seemed like a grandson, being reprimanded by him, and instead of getting angry, he continued to kneel on the ground, saying in a very humble manner, Mr. Hua, you are right, it's our fault. I didn't educate my son well. I'm willing to compensate you with everything I have. Everyone was shocked to hear this. What on earth is going on? What's wrong with Wang Ming, not getting angry even when reprimanded by Hua Chen in person? It doesn't make sense. Sam Wani had been staring at Hua Chen, hoping to see him make a fool of himself, and even more so, to see him kneel and beg for mercy, and then accept all conditions like a grandson. However, she never expected that Hua Chen not only did not apologize, but also pointed and scolded the other party. Song Wanni was very angry and was about to argue, but when she looked into Hua Chen's eyes, sharp, piercing, and wolf-like, she suddenly shivered and couldn't speak for a long time. It was the first time she had seen such a look, a deep gaze with a chilling coldness that made her shudder. What kind of look is this? that can pierce through everyone's soul like a steel knife? Song Wanni was ultimately a person with integrity, and in the face of such a fierce look, she stood straight, without any intention of kneeling. This scared Wang Ming. He suddenly stood up and slapped Song Wanni hard across the face. Smack! The force was so great that it sent Song Wanni's beautiful eyes flying. Bitch, kneel down to Mr. Hua, or I'll kill you. Wang Ming cursed and was about to slap her again. Song Wanni was also a lady from a good family and had never been treated like this before. Before the second slap could come, Song Wanni reflexively knelt down, imitating Wang Ming, and kept kowtowing to Wu Chen. Part of this was due to the fear of Wang Ming's slap, and the other part was a genuine reverence for Hua Chen. In this way, the couple continued to kowtow to Hua Chen, creating an extremely bizarre scene. Some even said that it was like a big family reunion. It was ridiculous. Wang Ming was almost incoherent, calling him brother one moment, and then grandfather, in stark contrast to his previous dignified demeanor. Song Wanli couldn't bear it either, kneeling and begging Hua Chen, and in the end, she even said that as long as Hua Chen forgave her, she was willing to dedicate her body to him. Hua Chen was also at a loss. These people had been so powerful before, but now they were in such a sorry state, it was simply unimaginable. What was even more unexpected was that Song Wanli had a high vision, she was a magical woman with eyes higher than the top. But this time, Song Wanni knelt down directly in front of so many people, shattering the so-called dignity in face. Hua Chen shook his head and said to Wang Ming, Do you think kneeling, begging for mercy, calling me grandfather, or letting your wife serve me with her body will make me forgive you? Is that the end of this matter? With a swoosh, Hua Chen stood up and said, I'll tell you the truth, this matter is not over. Wang Ming was dumbfounded. Kneeling was not enough? What does Hua Chen want to do? Does he want to push people to the brink of death? For people like Wang Ming, the most precious thing is not money, but face and dignity. In order to be forgiven by Hua Chen, Wang Ming abandoned all these things. But the other party still wouldn't let go. For a moment, Wang Ming felt a kind of indescribable panic in his heart. Mr. Hua, all I can do is this. As long as you can forgive me, I am willing to pay any price. Hua Chen smiled faintly and said, any price? Ha, huh, I'm afraid you can't afford it in your lifetime. What does that mean? Wang Ming was shocked and felt like he had fallen into an abyss. Wang Ming is a businessman and can quickly discern the other party's hidden meaning. Hua Chen's refusal to forgive is just because the bargaining chip is not enough. After considering his present and future, Wang Ming gritted his teeth and said angrily, Mr. Hua, Wang Lu is extremely important to me. As long as you release my son, I am willing to give you two-thirds of my property. In addition, I will give you my daughter. You have seen my daughter. She is very beautiful and many people pursue her. I will give her to you, you can have her tonight. At this point, Wang Ming had exhausted all his methods. Even if he had to give away his daughter, he, Wang Ming, would not hesitate. It seems that in Wang Ming's world, Wang Lu was everything, even his two-thirds of the property. 
Song Wanni remained silent on the side, indirectly agreeing with Wang Ming's thoughts. Perhaps this couple had planned everything when they came, predicting the worst possible outcome and giving a solution that they never wanted to give in their lifetime. A smile appeared on Hua Chen's face as he said, You still remember your daughter? Oh, I remember she also needs to apologize to me. Why hasn't she come? At this time, Wang Qian was sitting in the front room, listening clearly to her parents' conversation, and even their kneeling and begging for mercy to Hua Chen. She could not imagine that her usually serious and even somewhat arrogant parents would be so servile in front of Hua Chen. Wang Qian realized that the Wang family had completely failed this time. Although they were usually very powerful, when they encountered someone like Hua Chen with absolute strength, they had almost no strength to resist. What surprised Wang Qian even more was that her own biological parents were using her as compensation to atone for their sins to Hua Chen. This was a terrifying operation. The Wang family was the largest family in Bayan City, and in order to continue the family line, Wang Qian had spared no effort to make the Wang family seem like her child. However, ironically, as the head of the Wang family, Wang Ming and Song Wanni had come up with such a plan. At this moment, Wang Qian felt as if her heart was being twisted by a knife, and the immense sorrow almost made her faint. All the efforts she had made in the past had been in vain, and now the most pure blood relationship in the world had cracked. What kind of experience was this? Along with Wang Xian, there was also the group's secretary, who sighed and said, Miss, Grandpa had no choice but to do this. The other party's strength is too powerful, and there is no one in Bayan City who can resist it. That's why Grandpa used this last resort. Miss, you have to understand Grandpa. If he didn't do this, the entire Wang family would be sacrificed. At this point, Wang Qian was on the verge of collapse. She tilted her head slightly, and tears flowed from the corners of her eyes. No matter what, I am still his daughter. Can he be so heartless? Wang Qian could no longer hold back her sadness and burst into tears. At the same time, Wang Qian also realized that Hua Chen was not as simple as she had thought. Rather be a shattered jade than an intact tile. Wang Qian decided not to apologize and to confront the other party to the end. She wanted to see how much power this so-called Hua Chen really had. After about half an hour, Mr. and Mrs. Wang Ming returned to their home. The first thing they did when they entered was to look for Wang Qian and have her apologize to Hua Chen in person. However, after searching all around, they couldn't find Wang Qian, only a note was found in her bedroom. It simply said, from now on, I have no connection with the Wang family. Wang Ming collapsed to the ground with an awe. Wang Qian, you let me down at a critical moment. Quick, someone come and find her, by any means necessary. Wang Ming was furious. Song Wan Ni was also extremely angry. The fate of the Wang family rests on Wang Qian. Now, at a crucial moment, she's disappeared without a word. She's completely disregarding our Wang family. We must find Wang Qian and bring her back, otherwise our Wang family is finished. Over a dozen bodyguards immediately set out to find Wang Qian. And so, half a month passed, and in every corner of Bayan City, there were rumors circulating about the miraculous legend of Hua Chen. Some said that Hua Chen's background and power were far beyond what ordinary people could imagine, which was why he was pressing the Wang family so hard. Others said that Hua Chen had obtained some secret of the Wang family, and the Wang family feared him, which was why they had gone to beg for mercy. Still others said that Hua Chen was an enemy of the Wang family, seeking revenge, and had scared the family into sending away their daughter. But no matter what was said outside, ultimately there was only one truth. Hua Chen was too powerful, and no one could match him. After all, to make the head of the Wang family kneel before him was already a display of power beyond measure. On the Wang family's side, the bodyguards sent out never found Wang Qian, and so the matter of sending away their daughter was left unresolved. The conflict with Hua Chen was eventually resolved, reportedly because Wang Ming had offered up all of the family's assets to barely obtain Hua Chen's forgiveness. But soon, someone said that Wang Lu had not yet been released, he was still in prison, and Wang Ming was still making a final struggle. In less than a month, Wang Ming had lost his son, his daughter, and 90% of the family's assets, truly a cause for endless sighs. Overnight, Wang Ming's hair turned white, and Song Wanni had turned into an old woman. The wicked shall not go unpunished, this saying was perfectly demonstrated in Wang Ming. On the other hand, Hua Chen, upon learning that Wang Qian had cut ties with the Wang family and had not been heard from since, became interested in this woman. Interesting, she's a principled and courageous woman. I'd like to meet her, Hua Chen said lightly. Regardless, Wang Qian was a participant in this matter, an accomplice, and could not be forgiven. Watching her brother commit crimes and atrocities, and doing nothing, the sister was not just failing to fulfill her duties, but was excessively protective and indulgent. A person with a normal sense of justice would not do such a thing. 
Just as Hua Chen was considering how to find Wang Qian and how to deal with this woman, on the other side of the world, in a certain federation that hadn't been seen for hundreds of years, a document suddenly appeared. The document had only an S at the beginning, indicating an extremely high level of confidentiality. To put it bluntly, only such documents would appear between nations. Just then, a woman walked over and slowly opened the document. When she turned to the third page, her expression instantly froze. Hua Chen, he's really not dead. The woman seemed to have seen something terrifying, her hands trembled uncontrollably, and her expression began to twitch. Quick, report to the higher-ups, request an elimination. Request an elimination. The woman felt an unprecedented crisis, even a fear that penetrated to the bone marrow. Also, tell the military, restart Project B, immediately. The woman shouted loudly. On the other side, while Yang Qing was asleep, Hua Chen dialed an encrypted number. As soon as the call connected, the other side began speaking. The voice was very soft, a female voice, he he, finally decided to call me? Hua Chen, I thought you would never call me in this lifetime. The other party chuckled, full of sarcasm in her tone. Hua Chen seemed to have something difficult to express, speaking with extreme caution. I just need your help, you pick a place, and I'll come in the next few days, Hua Chen said. The other party hesitated for a few seconds, then said, are you asking for help in such a tone? Brother Hua, can't you be more gentle? I remember you weren't like this before. Hua Chen snorted coldly, directly denying the other party. Business is business, no way. Oh, are you in a bad mood? Do you really disagree with what I said before? The female voice asked again. Our paths diverge, we don't collaborate, that's it. Hua Chen had experienced a lot, some of which he took lightly, with the purpose of not getting involved in certain matters. Especially the female voice on the other end of the phone, seemed to have deeply hurt Hua Chen, to the point where he didn't want to say another word. I need your help with this matter, because she is Yang Qing's person, Hua Chen said. When the other party heard the words Yang Qing, she fell into a strange silence. Obviously, the other party had recognized Yang Qing and had placed her under surveillance. Perhaps, from the moment Hua Chen left, his every move and those around him were all under the woman's watchful eye. I want you to help me with something, to send someone to study at the military headquarters, Hua Chen said. There was a surprised sound on the other end of the phone, feeling a bit unexpected. When she heard it was Yang Qing, she was even more puzzled. Yang Cheng was an ordinary person, who had never undergone special training. Why should Hua Chen recommend her? It felt like a fantasy. Okay, I understand. I will go find someone to escort Yang Qing. From now on, Yang Cheng will be a top priority for protection. All her information will be classified as top secret. The woman quickly realized that there was some kind of relationship between Yang Qing and Hua Chen, or perhaps she was the person the entire Xia country was looking for. Her emotions became extremely tense, and her tone became more serious. All information is top secret? Hua Chen was somewhat surprised. Well, thank you. There was a crisp laughter on the other end of the phone. Is this how you thank me? It's really insincere. The voice on the other end said. What do you want? Hua Chen asked. Hua Chen had long known that this woman was not easy to deal with, but he didn't expect it to be like this. He, Hua Chen, was already doing her a favor by saying thank you, what more did she want? The woman laughed even more when she heard this, and it took a long time before she said, I've seen you, you look decent, average build. So, I'll just lower myself and ask you to marry me, can you? This statement was like a thunderbolt in Hua Chen's mind. There had been many women who had said this to him before, including beautiful but married women, seductive older sisters, and cute and lovely girls, but without exception, Hua Chen had rejected them all. Now this again, did she really think I, Hua Chen, am a woman? No. Hua Chen refused as always, without any hesitation. I haven't even seen you, I don't even know what you look like. What if I get the short end of the stick? Hua Chen said. There was a long sigh on the other end of the phone, followed by, forget it, with your character, I wouldn't want it even if it's free. So, I'll take care of this matter for you, you owe me a favor, and after it's done, you'll have to help me with something. Hua Chen became cautious and asked, what do you want me to do? I haven't figured it out yet, I'll tell you when I do. Okay, I'm sending someone to protect Yang Qing now. After that, the other party immediately hung up the phone. Hua Chen shrugged, indicating that the matter was settled. Compared to the people on the other end of the phone, his own strength was somewhat weak, so there were some things that had to be handled by them. On the other hand, life was not easy for Zhang Gang and his family. They witnessed Wang Ming and his wife kneeling to Hua Chen, which indicated that in Bayan City, Hua Chen's power had reached an overwhelming level. Unfortunately, they had provoked such a person. The result was obvious, their family was doomed. Hua Chen had the audacity to ask for money from them, leaving Zhang Gang feeling hopeless. 
he was known as a gambler, and making him pay would only lead to his demise. Zheng Gang sat on the ground, despondent, with tears streaming down his face, regretting his actions. Li Yan, on the other hand, was anxious and repeatedly asked Zheng Gang for a solution. She even questioned his manhood. As for their son, Zhang Yunqi, Li Yan decided to keep him away from the family business for the time being, fearing potential trouble. Li Yan was furious at the situation and blamed Zhang Qing for bringing in a powerful man that could destroy their family. Zhang Gang, with tears and snot on his face, expressed his helplessness and hopelessness. He admitted to kneeling as he had no other choice. Li Yan, infuriated, scolded him for being useless and incapable of borrowing two million. She urged him to go and borrow the money. Zhang Gang, enraged, refused to borrow the money and threatened to hit Li Yan. However, before he could act, a shadow suddenly flashed outside the door. With a loud thud, Zhang Gang was kicked and sent flying by a man in a long robe. Overwhelmed by fear, Zhang Gang saw that it was Master Han. As he tried to approach him, Master Han kicked him again, causing Zhang Gang to feel the pain and cry. Master Han then asked if they were disrespectful to Mr. Hua, as he had heard it from the surveillance. Zhang Gang and the others realized that their actions were being monitored, and they had spoken ill of Hua Chen. They were in big trouble. Master Han asked if he should slap himself or if they wanted him to do it. Zhang Gang immediately admitted his mistake. Li Yan saw her man acting so weak, and instantly became furious. She stood up abruptly and angrily said, How dare you? Hey, not only do I dare, I'll even slap your mouth. Han Dashu threw out a remark and then slapped the faces of the couple. Slap, slap. The two of them were silenced by the slaps. Zhang Gang lay on the ground, holding his face, looking defeated. But it wasn't over yet. Han Dashu called his disciples and had Zhang Gang's hands and feet separated, then ruthlessly beat him on the ground. Due to fear, Zhang Gang had given up resistance, but when he saw these people holding his limbs, he wet his pants in fear. He was horrified to find that each of these people had a big hammer in hand, all resting on their shoulders. That sight said it all. He had to repay the money within a set time, otherwise the hammers would fall on his limbs. No, Han Dashu, let's talk, don't hit me, please. Zhang Gang begged loudly. Ha ha, do you think I would agree? Besides, the time for repayment has come, where's the money? Han Dashu roared and immediately ordered his men to act. The thugs paid no attention to Zhang Gang's pleas and swung their big hammers. Bang, bang, bang. Three loud bangs, and Zhang Gang's knees and wrists were all broken. Then, the thugs turned towards Li Yan. At this point, Li Yan was lying face down on the ground, her limbs spread out at a wide angle, forming a large character. The bodyguard grabbed Li Yan's face and rudely said, just an ordinary person, and you still pretend to be innocent? Smash her legs. Li Yan was completely terrified, and was about to say she would protect herself by offering her body, when the big hammer came down. With a bang, Li Yan's hands and feet were broken, and she passed out from the pain. On the other side, Zhang Yunqi also couldn't escape being hit. No, if you want to hit someone, hit my parents, not me. I'm still a child, Han Dashu, are you not even sparing a child? Han Dashu burst into laughter. You didn't say, I almost forgot, a child, right? We specifically target children. After saying that, Han Dashu signaled to the thugs, and they immediately raised their big hammers and viciously struck. This blow directly flattened Zhang Yunqi's arms. In less than half an hour, the Zhang family of three had their arms and legs broken by the iron hammers. Such serious injuries couldn't be healed even in the best hospital in the provincial capital. Bones shattered, muscles extensively strained, ligaments torn, it would take at least a hundred or eighty years of deep hatred for someone to do this. To put it bluntly, these people were finished. One of the disciples couldn't bear it, dropped the iron hammer in his hand, and quietly asked, Master, what should we do with these people? These people have their hands and feet broken, no different from disabled people. So, go find some decent ceramic jars and put these people in them. Throw them on the street and let them fend for themselves, Han Dashu said. Han Dashu had a motto, kindness to enemies is cruelty to oneself. That's why he used the cruelest method on the Zhang family. Do as I say, only this way can I relieve my deep-seated hatred. The Zhang family lay quietly on the ground, their eyes slightly closed, barely breathing. Han Dashu spat at them and said, a family of waste, you brought this upon yourselves, no one is to blame. Reflect on yourselves in the future, understand? With that, Han Dashu turned and left. The remaining disciples split into two groups. One group provided basic bandaging for the Zhang family to prevent them from bleeding to death. The other group quickly bought three large jars and put the Zhang family inside, then threw them onto the busiest pedestrian street overnight. And so, the news of the Zhang family having their legs and arms broken spread throughout Bayan, and even reached the ears of Hua Chen. Hua Chen knew what Han Dashu had in mind. 
He knew that Master Han was wary of him because of what had happened before. Master Han was eager to get close to him and even wanted to find his own enemy to kill or maim in order to show his loyalty. However, all of this was done by Master Han himself, and Hua Chen just watched and listened without making any comments. Hua Chen had more important things to do, such as Yang Qing's important exam tomorrow. In order to ensure that Yang Qing was in a good state for the exam, Hua Chen deliberately escorted Yang Qing to school. When they parted, he gave Yang Qing a warm hug and patted his head, saying, Go to the exam and show your best state as usual. Yang Chang nodded and happily bounced into the school. However, this scene was seen by a man in the corner. He looked fierce and said, Strange, when did this girl have a boyfriend? Who is that man, and why did he hug Yang Qing and pat his head? This is outrageous. The man clenched his fists and told the people around him, Go, find out who this person is. Doesn't he know that Yang Qing is my girlfriend? Who gave him the courage? I'll kill him. The man's teeth gnashed. This man was called Lu Xiao, a genuine playboy who had no hobbies other than playing with women. Now, he had set his sights on Yang Cheng again. Earlier, Lu Xiao had pursued Yang Qing, but she had rejected him, saying that studying during her student days was the most important and she didn't want anything else. Lu Xiao was confused at the time, thinking that Yang Qing was very aloof and only focused on studying, knowing nothing about love and relationships. But seeing the scene today, the pure image of Yang Qing in Lu Xiao's mind collapsed instantly. This is outrageous. She rejected me so nobly before, but now she's with a wild man, hugging and cuddling? Damn it! Lu Xiao cursed angrily, spitting everywhere. At this moment, a man with glasses walked over and said with a smile, Lu Xiao, don't think too much. It's just a rumor for now. We need to find Yang Cheng and let her explain the situation. Also, Lu Xiao, with your skills, not to mention Yang Cheng, even her mother could be pursued by you, right? The man with glasses smirked. Lu Xiao coldly smiled, showing that he was very pleased with the flattery from the man with glasses, and then said, Yang Cheng, oh Yang Cheng, with me, you would have everything. You rejected me and then turned around to hang out with a stinky man. All right, after the exam, I'll make sure you regret it. Lu Xiao knew his ability to pursue girls. At present, there was no woman he couldn't pursue. Yang Qing was just an exception, but Lu Xiao was very clear that it must be the wild man who had used some method to stop him from pursuing Yang Qing, or had spoken ill of him behind Yang Qing's back, which led to Yang Qing's resolute refusal to meet him. If he couldn't have her, he would ruin her. In the afternoon, Hua Chen and Yang Cheng returned to their residence. On the way, Yang Cheng walked slowly, and after the exam, she underwent a strange change in her heart. Hua Chen also behaved differently from usual. He was very clear that as soon as Yang Qing's exam was over, the military would come to pick her up. Perhaps, after the military arrived, he wouldn't see Yang Qing for a long time, or maybe not in his lifetime. Yang Qing had a special physique, which determined that she would inevitably take a special path. On this path, Yang Qing didn't have to worry about food or clothing, and she could have whatever she wanted. But in return, Yang Qing might lose her freedom for a lifetime. During this period of time together, both Hua Chen and Yang Qing had developed a very serious dependence on each other, and they had come to see each other as family, living together leisurely and freely. But in the end, Hua Chen couldn't help but tell Yang Qing about the situation with the military and the mysterious woman. Yang Qing listened quietly, feeling uneasy in her heart, but still accepting it bit by bit. However, Yang Qing quickly realized that this must be the best arrangement that Hua Chen had given to herself. Whether it was going to the military department or somewhere else, as long as it was beneficial to her growth, it was a good place. Joining the military from the military department was something that many people dreamed of, something that many people longed for. Now it had finally come true, which made many people feel relieved. Yang Cheng looked up at Hua Chen, his brows exuding a heroic spirit, and her heart tightened, as if her mind was filled with Hua Chen. Yang Cheng knew that she was going to the military department, and her heart felt very heavy. Hua Chen could only do some ideological work and instructed her, this is your first time going to the military department, it may be very hard, there are some things you must bear on your own, and there are some things I need to tell you. Hua Chen did not want Yang Qing to follow in his footsteps. This was not to say that he was not good to Yang Qing, but he wanted Yang Qing to enjoy this journey of life better. Yang Qing was full of expectations for the unknown world, eager for new environments and new tasks. So she held her chin with her hand, looking at Hua Chen earnestly and said, I'm listening carefully, please go on. Hua Chen told her some valuable experiences, things that others couldn't buy even if they spent money. The fact that he specifically told Yang Qing was enough to show his feelings for her. In this way, Hua Chen told her how to enter the military department, how to train, how to take advantage of opportunities, and even how to maintain good relationships with superiors and subordinates, all with the purpose of making Yang Qing not feel like a new recruit. As he spoke, 
Huo Qin suddenly noticed that Yang Qing's expression had become dim, and he hurriedly asked, Yang Qing, are you listening? Why aren't you speaking? Huo Qin noticed that Yang Qing's eyes were red, and many ripples appeared in her bright eyes, spreading out in circles. Yang Qing sniffed, the gloom on her face disappeared, and she smiled, saying, It's nothing, I'm fine, I just feel a little reluctant to leave soon. Anyway, Yang Qing was still a child, so it was normal for her to have some attachment. You go and do well. You will learn a lot at the military department. Oh, by the way, when you go, remember to mention my name. There are people there who know me, and they will take care of you. At the very least, they won't treat you like a new recruit. Huo Chen said. Thank you. Yang Cheng nodded, seeming a little at a loss. After Huo Chen left, Yang Cheng went to her bedroom immediately. In the bedroom, Yang Qing stared at herself in the mirror. Her face was flushed, looking so unnatural. Maybe she shouldn't have let Huo Chen leave just now. It was a moment of parting between a man and a woman, and the lighting was very dim. It was such a good opportunity, she really should have done something. Unfortunately, she was too nervous and forgot the most important thing. Now it was too late, he had already left, leaving behind a damp bench. It was really embarrassing. On the other hand, after Wang Qian left home, she immediately went to Ningzhou City. This was a place with a GDP of over a hundred billion, where there were wealthy and influential people everywhere. Due to geographical limitations, the news of Wang Ming kneeling and begging for forgiveness had not reached here, and they themselves had not been to the provincial capital, so the people here had no idea about Wang Ming's family. Wang Qian, what kind of relationship do we have? If there's anything I can help with, just let me know. As long as you recognize me, your business is my business, and I will definitely help you to the end. The speaker was a man in a smart suit, looking to be in his twenties. When the man spoke, he looked straight at Wang Qian, occasionally licking his lips as if he wanted to swallow Wang Qian whole. Wang Qian nodded and said very seriously, Wang Deng, thank you. In fact, there are some things that you don't need to get involved in. Huo Qian is too powerful, and there is no one in the whole Bayan who can match him. Even my brother Wang Lu is still in prison, and no one can get him out. I understand. The head of the security team can't do anything about him, right? Those who lead the wages are all poor ghosts, it's too easy to buy them. Wang Deng took a puff of smoke and felt that the matter was not as complicated as Wang Qian said. Wang Deng's strategy was very simple and rude, that is, to use money to attract a large number of people. This is his consistent style of doing things. Wang Qian frowned and said, is this okay? I feel that Huo Chen is also very rich. Is it really like this? It is very likely that we will end up hurting each other. At this point, Wang Chen did not think that the cause of the matter was on her own, but rather felt that Huo Chen had a problem. From beginning to end, Wang Qian was thinking of getting rid of Huo Chen, thinking that this was the best way to solve the problem. It's okay, I'll take care of this matter. I have a good relationship with the public security brigade, and my words are still very effective. Wang Deng patted his chest, but his eyes went down, staring at Wang Qian's chest and thighs. Wang Qian bit her lip and said thank you very reluctantly. It seemed that while thanking him, Wang Qian also tacitly accepted some of his conditions, which made her feel very humiliated. Indeed, women not only have to spend money to get things done, but also have to sell their bodies. This is an eternal truth. Sure enough, after a moment of silence, Wang Deng spoke again, Well, I'll help you with this matter, but I can't do it for free, right? You have to show some appreciation, give us some return. After finishing speaking, Wang Deng's gaze fell on Wang Qian's lower abdomen, and then never moved away. This meant that Wang Deng had not fully exploited Wang Qian, and now only that mysterious area remained. Wang Qian thought for a moment. At present, she had no bargaining chips left. The family had already become like that, and there was no money. The only thing Wang Qian could use was her own body. Okay, Wang Deng, as long as you can drive Huo Chen away and give him some punishment, I am willing to cooperate with you. Wang Qian said. Wang Deng immediately laughed heartily, Ha, huh, I like your straightforwardness. Although I don't know what kind of bastard Huo Chen is, but you can rest assured, you are now mine, if anyone bullies you, they are bullying me. I will take care of him, and also give you some relief. Wang Deng put out the cigarette he had finished smoking under his foot, and continued, Speaking of which, since you are mine, I want to protect you to the end. The Wang family's business also belongs to you, I want it back for you. Upon hearing this, Wang Qian almost burst into tears. What she needed most now was a man she could rely on. It seemed like one had appeared now. Although not perfect, he was usable, so what else mattered? On the other hand, Wang Ming had been very depressed these past few days. In order to gain Hua Chen's forgiveness, Wang Ming had tried every possible means. But without exception, none of them worked, and he couldn't even save his own son, which meant that Wang Le might be stuck in prison for the rest of his life. 
This was the last thing Wang Ming wanted to see. Up to now, Wang Ming didn't even know where his daughter was, and a once happy family had been shattered like this, making him feel like his heart was being cut with a knife, feeling very uncomfortable. Ah, I said to get rid of this daughter, but you insisted on giving birth to her. Look, what's the use? What's the use? The family has become like this, not only does Wang Qian not try to help, she even ran away. How could I have raised such a daughter? Wang Ming angrily scolded. Beside him, Song Wanyi remained silent. She was also very angry and couldn't understand what Wang Qian was thinking. Although the Wang family had suffered, it wasn't completely finished, so why did she leave like this? How would the family face each other in the future, and how would Wang Qian stay in Bayan? What made the Wang family most uncomfortable was that the matter of Hua Chen was not over yet, and the Ifu group had terminated its cooperation with their family, saying that they had found a better family, and the purity they extracted was much higher than that of the Wang family, so they chose someone else. Under the double blow, Wang Ming felt that he was on the verge of collapse. After a pause, Wang Ming said to Song Wani, forget it, let's take this as a lesson. Our Wang family has suffered enough. In the future, we will live an ordinary life, and it will be just fine. You go and use your connections to bring Wang Qian back and have her apologize to Hua Chen. That will be the end of this matter. I don't want to deal with it anymore. After finishing speaking, Wang Ming looked out the window and continued, if necessary, use any means to bring Wang Qian back and send her to Hua Chen. He can do whatever he wants. Hurry up, this matter cannot be delayed. On Hua Chen's side, he was patiently waiting for Yang Qing's exam results. Joining the military had almost been finalized, but there were still many conditions, one of which was Yang Qing's performance. Her performance directly affected whether she could enter the top military unit. In the military, the starting point was crucial, and the place where one took the first step was even more important. Fortunately, Yang Qing's academic performance was not bad. Although she didn't fully demonstrate her abilities in the exam, she still achieved a good result, ranking in the top five in the city. This meant that Yang Qing could smoothly enter the top military unit without having to consider anyone's opinions. This truly delighted Hua Chen. In the evening, Hua Chen planned to treat them to a good meal and chose the Rui restaurant. It was the most expensive and high-class restaurant within a hundred miles. After everyone sat down, Hua Chen handed the menu to them and said, Ladies first, order whatever you want. Yang Qing felt a bit embarrassed. After all, in this kind of environment, it was more appropriate for couples to dine together. Their situation felt awkward. However, what Yang Qing didn't know was that as they sat down, a group of people in the distance cast malicious glances at them. It was Lu Xiao and his so-called friends. Lu Xiao, do you see that? That bitch is actually having a candlelight dinner. Who do they think they are to come here? Someone incited and ignited Lu Xiao's anger. Lu Xiao gritted his teeth in anger and said, This is outrageous. This damn bitch is so happy now, she might go to a hotel tonight. Damn, she doesn't even know she'll be held down like a dog. The more Lu Xiao thought about it, the angrier he became. He felt that this woman was beyond redemption. Even if she changed her mind and followed him, the DNA in her body could never be erased. What Lu Xiao hated the most was a woman who had been with someone else. He clenched the glass tightly in anger, and with a bang, the glass shattered, startling the people around them. Lu Xiao, let's teach him a lesson in private. Find a place where no one is around and beat him up. Lu Xiao, don't be angry. We'll beat him up tonight and make him wish he were dead. Several so-called brothers were brainstorming, thinking about how to deal with this person. However, Lu Xiao just nodded and said, beat him up? That's letting him off too easily. I want him to remember that a woman I, Lu Xiao, doesn't want, he can never touch in his lifetime. With that, Lu Xiao called the waiter over and whispered a few words. The waiter quickly went to the wine cabinet and brought a bottle of aged wine, carefully placing it in front of Hua Chen. This lady, someone is inviting you to have a drink, the waiter said, explaining, this is our most expensive wine, worth 200,000 RMB. Yang Qing glanced at it and showed no sign of envy, lazily saying, I already have wine, I don't want it, thank you. The waiter seemed surprised and continued, Miss, please take a look. This is our most expensive wine. The waiter accepted Lu Xiao's tip, but with a condition, to serve the wine. The waiter thought that since she was a girl, she would surely be vain and would want to take a photo of such an expensive wine and then agree to it happily. To their surprise, Yang Qing didn't even spare a glance and directly refused, leaving the waiter flustered. Yang Qing saw that the waiter had not left yet, turned to take a look, and found that his expression was not good. There must be some difficulty. With a smile, he said, I understand. You received a favor from someone, right? Okay, you wait here, I'll go talk to him. Yang Cheng volunteered and took the drinks and walked forward. Just as Yang Qing was walking over, the people at Lu Xiao's table started walking over in this direction. 
Even though the distance was far, Yang Qing could still see Lu Xiao's sinister smile. Yang Qing was stunned and said, So it was you who sent the drinks? Huo Qin had never seen this kind of lackey like Lu Xiao and asked, Yang Qing, he looks like your admirer, why does it feel strange? As an experienced person, Huo Qin had seen many of these ruffians and hooligans. They usually had no skills but knew how to pursue girls. If some girls refused, they would act like hooligans, always up to no good, focusing on inappropriate things. Oomph, I thought it was someone else. I don't want to deal with him. Compared to me, Huo Chen, he is far behind. Yang Qing snorted and simply stood back, not taking the other party seriously at all. Invisibly, she regarded Huo Chen as a reference, which was quite strange. Do you know that the drinks were sent by me to you? Are you sure you don't want to accept them? Lu Xiao curiously asked, feeling that this was very strange. After all, Yang Qing was a woman, how could she not be interested in luxury goods? But what Yang Qing didn't know was that Lu Xiao's focus was on Huo Chen. He coldly smiled and said, Who is this? Miss Yang Qing, don't you want to introduce me to him? This is. Yang Qing was about to say Huo Chen when suddenly she had a thought. Lu Xiao's intention was very clear, he wanted to be in a relationship with her, slowly testing the waters at first, and then furthering the relationship. Yang Qing didn't want this at all, so she thought of a way and directly said, He is my boyfriend, Huo Chen. After speaking, Yang Qing actually pulled Huo Chen up in front of the other party. Little did she know, this action directly ignited the anger in Lu Xiao's heart. Lu Xiao kept sizing up the man in front of him, thinking to himself, isn't he just an ordinary person? What's so special about him? Lu Xiao even felt that this young man named Huo Chen was more ordinary than the most ordinary person on the street. Yang Qing was at least a well-known beauty, why did she have such low standards? Huo Chen was caught off guard, he didn't expect Yang Qing to answer like this which could easily lead to misunderstandings. He coughed twice and said, Um, hello. Lu Xiao's expression instantly froze, cursing in his heart, Why do you look like a loser? What right do you have to talk to my woman? Lu Xiao coldly smiled and said, I heard you are Yang Qing's boyfriend. That's great, I've been pursuing Yang Qing for so long and haven't caught up, but you, little guy, have intercepted me. Congratulations. The last sentence was obviously sarcastic, and Hu Qin could tell, but in order to provoke the other party, he made a puzzled expression and foolishly said, Okay, thank you for your blessing. Lu Xiao was even more angry and said angrily, You little guy, you have a thick skin. Okay, since you have chosen Yang Qing, I'll give you some advice. Take care of Yang Qing, remember that. After speaking, Lu Xiao used a threatening expression and said, Hu Chen, remember, we will meet again, and I hope you will be as happy as you are now when we meet again. Lu Xiao didn't get any response, and he was very unhappy. Coupled with Hu Chen's thick-skinned appearance, he looked like an idiot no matter how you looked at it. Such a person could still find a girlfriend, it was simply unbelievable. Let's go. Lu Xiao couldn't stay for another moment and turned to leave. After these people left, Yang Qing stuck out her tongue at Hu Chen and said, Hu Chen, thank you, I just used you as a shield, don't take it to heart. Hu Chen just chuckled and didn't say anything. Actually, from the beginning, Hu Chen could feel that Yang Qing was interested in him, but neither of them said it out loud. They were both waiting for the other to break the ice. Who knew that Lu Xiao would suddenly appear and make Yang Qing's fake show real? As the saying goes, the speaker has no intention, but the listener has intention. Huo Chen wanted to play dumb for a while, could Yang Qing keep up? Ahem. Huo Chen cleared his throat and shook his head, saying, Of course not, I feel that you, my classmate, have a big problem. You should be more careful in the future. Yang Cheng nodded, Thank you for the reminder. I know Lu Xiao, a typical second generation rich kid. He must have whatever he wants, otherwise he will cause trouble. It's okay, now he thinks I have a boyfriend, so he definitely won't come to harass me in the future. Although Yang Qing said so, she was a little worried in her heart, afraid that Lu Xiao would cause trouble for Huo Chen. Yang Qing had seen Huo Chen's strength and naturally was not afraid, she just didn't want to cause trouble for him. Who doesn't want a peaceful life and enjoy life? After hastily finishing their meal, they started chatting casually. Outside the restaurant, seeing Hua Chen and Yang Cheng still chatting and laughing after finishing their meal, Lu Xiao was furious. He walked straight to his Aston Martin DBX and kicked it. Bang! There was a loud noise, and a big dent appeared on the side of the Aston Martin. The accompanying man with glasses couldn't stand it and angrily said, Lu Xiao, I can't swallow this anger. Damn it, how dare you bully people like this, I have never seen such shameless person. Exactly, let's find a chance to teach him a lesson, he's making me so angry, touching a woman of mine. Lu Xiao, we must not let him off, tonight I will call someone to break his third leg. Smack! Lu Xiao slapped these people, making them dizzy. You're all making a fuss, deliberately adding fuel to the fire, aren't you? I'm so angry, 
If you keep provoking me like this, I'll be the first one to hit you. Lu Xiao took a deep breath, trying to keep himself calm. Before this, every time Lu Xiao encountered a situation, he would let his men beat someone up. But now, he couldn't do that. Simply and rudely beating up Hua Chen would be too cheap for him. What I want is for them to kneel down and beg me. Hua Chen, Yang Cheng, you two lovebirds, just wait for me. After speaking, Lu Xiao took out his phone and called his mother. Hello, mom, tell dad to contact the education system and expel a student. The phone on the other end made a clattering sound, clearly playing mahjong, and then a woman's voice came, sounding extremely impatient, son, just leave me a message, I'll pass it on to your dad. I'm busy right now, I'll contact you later. Lu Xiao made a sound of agreement, a barely noticeable smile appearing on his face. His mother was playing mahjong, which meant that no matter what conditions Lu Xiao set, his father would agree. So Lu Xiao edited a text message, with Yang Qing's name and the subsequent punitive measures. As long as these measures could be executed well, Yang Qing's life would be over. When the time comes, she would naturally know who did it and come to him. Lu Xiao pressed send on his phone, then lay on the sofa, imagining how Yang Chang and Hu Chen would come to beg him. Ha, huh, I just want to see how Hu Chen will be able to laugh then. Lu Xiao said fiercely. Time passed quickly, and a week later, the school began to announce the results. For Yang Qing, with her grades, she could easily enter her desired university. The next step was to see the rankings, and then how the school would allocate majors. A good school was one aspect, and good grades in the major were another. One without the other wouldn't work, both had to be good to enter a good university and a good major. According to the usual process, the school's admission notice would be sent to the school first, and then handed over to the students. If the students agreed, they would go to register, if not, they could ignore it. At this moment, all the students in Yang Qing's class are sitting in the classroom. They are excitedly looking ahead, full of spirit, and not a single person is speaking. The students' hearts are pounding, each one extremely nervous. Due to his practice, Hua Chen did not come to the classroom with Yang Cheng. Yang Qing's class is the rocket class, and the teacher is Zhou Wan, a national top 10 teaching expert and educational leader. Upon entering the classroom, Zhou Wan placed a large bag of folders on the table, all of which contained the students' admission lists, very detailed. Zhou Wan looked at everyone and said with a smile, everyone is very excited, but actually, my mood right now is the same as yours, very excited. Then, Zhou Wan read out the names on the list one by one. When she read the name Lu Xiao, Zhou Wan hesitated slightly, and then said in an incredulous tone, Lu Xiao, Yanzhou University? Zhou Wan knew better than anyone else about Lu Xiao's capabilities, he was a typical playboy, who didn't know the first thing about studying. And yet, he was admitted to Yanzhou University? Zhou Wan turned the list over and looked at it, and found that the admission notice was indeed real, Lu Xiao had really been admitted to Yanzhou University. After confirming repeatedly, Zhou Wan affirmed that Lu Xiao had been admitted, comforting herself that Lu Xiao must have worked hard behind the scenes, it must be like this. Truly, a leopard can't change its spots. Zhou Wan felt a sense of relief, then said in a loud voice, congratulations to Lu Xiao for being admitted to Yanzhou University. As soon as the words were spoken, everyone looked at Lu Xiao with strange eyes. They couldn't understand how Lu Xiao, who never studied, could be admitted to such a good university. It's really strange, is Lu Xiao so amazing? I can't figure it out, and also, is Lu Xiao so powerful, does his family know? The crowd whispered, all expressing their confusion. A barely perceptible smile flashed across Lu Xiao's face, and facing everyone, he raised his hand high, then picked up the admission notice, provocatively glancing at everyone. His actions and expression had already explained everything. Lu Xiao stood up, he was no longer the tail ender as people used to call him, nor was he the kind of wealthy playboy who was good for nothing. From now on, he, Lu Xiao, was both intelligent and brave, talented and versatile, capable of anything. Ha ha, thank you, thank you all. Lu Xiao continued to mock, thanking everyone. Then, Lu Xiao's gaze fell on Yang Qing, raised his eyebrows, as if waiting for something, and then said to everyone, you all saw it, this is a genuine admission notice, not fake. If you're not convinced, try to get into Yenzhou University next time, understand? After that, Lu Xiao returned to his seat in a victorious manner. When he passed by Yang Cheng, Lu Xiao deliberately paused and said, Oh, you're Yang Cheng, right? After this is over, I'll give you a surprise, he he. Lu Xiao's extremely sly smile made Yang Cheng shiver involuntarily. There was nothing good that could come out of Lu Xiao's mouth, and if he said it was a surprise, it was probably something unspeakable. Suddenly, Yang Cheng felt a hint of unease. Zhou Wan was puzzled when she saw Lu Xiao take the notice. She was well aware that Lu Xiao was not the type who could be considered a good student, not even close to being a student. But somehow, he had obtained the admission notice. There was definitely something fishy going on. 
However, Zhou Wan couldn't find evidence for the time being, so she couldn't expose him. Zhou Wan just thought about it for a moment, then continued to read the notices. There were no more surprises, just ordinary universities, going to one was the same as not going at all, all contributing to the country. However, as she looked at the empty folder, Zhou Wan felt that something was amiss. Ha! Huh? Why is there one person missing? Just as Zhou Wan was puzzled, Yang Qing suddenly raised his hand and said, Teacher, where is my admission notice? Zhou Wan was very surprised. She lowered her head and opened the bag, and found that all the notification letters inside were gone, not a single one left. Strange, this shouldn't be happening. You study so well, how is it possible that there are no notification letters for you? Just wait a moment, I will ask the academic affairs office. Okay, thank you, teacher. Yang Qing nodded and watched the teacher leave. Yang Qing was very confident in her academic performance and believed that she would definitely be admitted to Yenzhou University. So she sat quietly in her seat and waited. In stark contrast, Lu Xiao, who was in the corner, had a malicious smirk on his face. On the other hand, after leaving the classroom, Zhou Wan hurriedly walked towards the academic affairs office, turned on the computer and carefully checked, only to find that Yang Qing's name was not on the list. Could it be that Yang Qing didn't even get into the worst university? This is impossible. Zhou Wan said sternly. Yang Qing is the best student in our class. Even without performing exceptionally well, she could easily get into Yenzhou University. There must be a mistake. There must be. The head of the academic affairs office was also very embarrassed and said, I have checked several times, there is no mistake. Just then, Zhou Wan thought of Lu Xiao, who inexplicably passed the exam, and immediately bent down and asked, by the way, our classmate Lu Xiao was admitted to Yenzhou University, but his grades are much lower than Yang Qing's. What's going on? The head of the academic affairs office naturally did not know the situation and kept explaining that Yang Qing's failure to be admitted and Lu Xiao's admission were not necessarily related. No, there must be a problem. Please help me check again, Zhou Wan kept pleading, wanting to know what was going on. After all, there was something fishy about this, and there had to be evidence. What, do you still suspect the school? Just then, an old voice came from outside the door. The school principal, Chen Cohen, pushed the door open and walked in slowly. Seeing the principal coming in, Zhou Wan hurried over and said, Principal Chen, I've been looking for you. There's a problem with this year's exam. The best student, Yang Qin, failed to get admitted, while the bottom student, Lu Xiao, was admitted to a prestigious university. Principal, you must investigate this thoroughly, otherwise it will ruin the school's reputation, and the students won't study well. Chen Koen smiled faintly, looked at Zhou Wan and said, I know about this matter. In fact, it's very simple. You just need to tell Yang Qing to arrange a meeting with Lu Xiao, maybe things will work out. Remember, it's in the evening. After speaking, Chen Koen walked out with his hands behind his back. Zhou Wan instantly understood that everything was just as she had thought. Yang Qing's failure to be admitted and Lu Xiao's admission were definitely related, and not only that, Lu Xiao did it on purpose, just to meet with Yang Chang. Of course, the principal was very clear about these things and naturally knew the ins and outs. He just didn't want to get involved and pretended not to know. Zhou Wan was suddenly filled with anger. Principal, I am very disappointed in you. You know about this matter, and you know that it could have been avoided, but as a principal, you chose to turn a blind eye. Is this what a principal should do? Zhou Wan said loudly and then left the principal's office. Back at her seat, Zhou Wan became more and more angry as she thought about it. This matter was not trivial and could potentially change Yang Qing's life. And this matter had to be explained to Yang Qing, so she had to tell her as soon as possible. Yang Qing, come out with me for a moment. After thinking it over, Zhou Wan called Yang Cheng out. Yang Cheng slowly stood up from her seat and walked outside. Lu Xiao had known the result for a long time and couldn't help but mock Yang Cheng. Yang Cheng, remember to wear stockings tonight. Yang Cheng's mind buzzed, and she was no longer calm. What was going on? When did Lu Xiao become so arrogant? What surprised Yang Cheng even more was that Lu Xiao actually said in front of the whole class, Yang Cheng, keep a positive attitude. So what if you didn't get admitted this time? You can take the exam again next year. What? Yang Qing was shocked. And not just her, the whole class was shocked. Yang Qing actually failed to get admitted? This is almost as unlikely as the probability of Mars colliding with Earth. Seeing that something was amiss, Zhou Wan immediately stepped forward to dissuade them. Lu Xiao, you knew all along, didn't you? Tell me, does Yang Qing's failure have anything to do with you? Lu Xiao smirked and said, Teacher Zhou, you have to be responsible for what you say. What do you mean by whether Yang Qing's failure has anything to do with me? I'm just a student. Where would I have the ability to do such a thing? Besides, failing an exam is normal. She can just retake the year next year. No big deal. Lu Xiao's words sounded casual, 
but they were extremely painful for Yang Qing to hear. She was the top student in the entire school, so how could she have failed? Not to mention the idea of retaking the year, which was simply humiliating for Yang Qing. Zhou Wan nodded slightly, understanding the situation and its causes and effects. At the same time, Zhou Wan also understood that Yang Qing's current situation was largely due to Lu Xiao. Lu Xiao was too despicable. Lu Xiao, tell us what really happened. Things have come to this point, and I want to know the truth about your grudge. Zhou Wan took a deep breath, thinking that it wasn't too late to change things as long as Lu Xiao could reveal the root of the problem. However, Lu Xiao just snorted and said, You want to know? Go ask Yang Qing what she did. I'll tell you. Besides, I've already graduated. What does it have to do with me? Lu Xiao shrugged, looking indifferent. This immediately infuriated Zhou Wan, who angrily said, Lu Xiao, you've gone too far. You've completely disregarded respect for your teachers and education. Do you know what you're doing? You're committing a crime. You're ruining Yang Qing's future. Lu Xiao, I advise you to do good, revoke your acceptance letter, and give it back to Yang Qing, or else I will call the police. Call the police? Lu Xiao snorted and looked at Zhou Wan as if she were a monster, sneering, Teacher, why don't you try calling the police now? You! Zhou Wan was trembling with anger. She couldn't believe that she had educated such a student. Not only that, but he had also targeted the best student in the class. It was simply outrageous. Fine, you want to call the police, do it. Do you really think I'm afraid? Zhou Wan immediately took out her phone to call the police. Just as she was about to dial the number, there was a sudden loud noise outside. The students all turned to look, horrified to see a sharply dressed man standing at the door. He exuded a strong sense of danger and was not to be trifled with. The students fell silent, all sitting down in fear. Erkiu, you're here. Lu Xiao's eyes lit up as he stood up. Erkiu was the bodyguard and assassin sent by his mother, dedicated to ensuring Lu Xiao's safety. He was extremely loyal and would do anything for Lu Xiao without hesitation. Behind Erkiu stood two other men, exuding a strong sense of danger, seemingly on par with Erkiu. Seeing the fierce expression on their faces, Zhou Wan was filled with panic and said, What are you doing? This is a school, leave now. Wherever the assassins went, they would inevitably cause bloodshed and chaos, regardless of the location or situation. Zhou Wan could even foresee that this man would injure most of the students here, and no one would be able to stop him. Erkiu glanced at Zhou Wan and said with a smile, Oh, a young woman, not bad. But today, I'm not interested in you. You'd better stay away, or I won't be polite to you. Erkio sneered and looked at Zhou Wan's chest. Bang! Zhou Wan's bra burst open. Ah! Zhou Wan screamed and covered herself as she stepped back. Because her outer clothing was intact, no one knew what had happened to Zhou Wan, they just saw her leaving in a panic for no apparent reason. But Yang Cheng had already seen through everything and stood up, angrily saying, This is outrageous, Lu Xiao, if you have a problem, come at me and let go of teacher Zhou Wan. The loud voice caught the attention of Lu Xiao and Erkiu, and they both turned their heads almost simultaneously, smiling at Yang Qing. He he, you finally spoke, good, I like your attitude. By the way, the young master ordered that you go to the room by yourself tonight, bring a few pairs of stockings, spray some perfume inside, and wait for my young master. As for what to do, we are all adults, you know it yourself. As long as you have a good attitude and serve the young master well, everything today can be resolved perfectly, Erkiu said, clearly saying a lot. In general, he was asking Yang Qing to apologize to Lu Xiao, and it was the kind of apology using her body. Yang Qing suddenly realized everything. She understood everything, and it was all because of Lu Xiao. And having to apologize alone at night, she could even guess what Lu Xiao wanted to do. Yang Qing felt nauseous and felt that these men in front of her were full of foul odor. But this was reality. When these people left, tears streamed down Yang Qing's face. She knew the strength of these people, and she knew the consequences of opposing them. Only one word, death. The classmates in the class were all indignant for Yang Qing, but what could they do? The other party were martial artists, while the rest were students, completely unmatched in strength, so no one dared to speak up. Zhou Wan was so angry that she almost fainted, supporting herself against the wall, and it took a long time for her to recover. But compared to Yang Qing's future, what was a little humiliation to herself? Zhou Wan pulled Yang Qing over and said earnestly, Yang Qing, this is very troublesome. The strength of Lu Xiao's family is very strong, with connections in the education system. If they are determined to target you, you may not be able to compete with them. So, I suggest you find the gentleman who helped you solve the problem last time, only he can help you. Faced with Yang Qing's situation, Zhou Wan felt powerless. Zhou Wan even thought that if she knew a little bit of martial arts, she wouldn't have ended up like this. Now, she and Yang Qing were in the same boat. If Yang Qing could handle this, she would be safe as well. 
But if something happened to Yang Qing, Zhou Wan might become a plaything in Erkia's hands. This was the result Zhou Wan least wanted to see. After several hours, Yang Qing came to Hua Chen's side and recounted everything that had happened today. Hua Chen listened calmly, without any emotion on his face, not even a ripple. After a long time, Hua Chen spoke. Strange, doesn't that person know about our relationship? We are about to leave soon, and he's still causing trouble? Hua Chen shook his head, showing his incomprehension. After the last incident, people in Bayan City should know him. Whatever the situation, the first thing to consider should be himself, and whether there would be revenge. Generally, no one dared to do such a thing. But there were always people who didn't know any better. It seems that this Lu Xiao really wants to die, Hu Chen said. At this time, Zhou Wan also came over, anxiously asking, Mr. Hua, what should we do now? We can't just let Lu Xiao bully us. And, Lu Xiao brought a lot of thugs, those people look fierce, we are no match for them at all, Zhou Wan added. In fact, the most frightening thing was those thugs. By the way, do you know the name of that thug? Hua Chen asked. I know, his surname is Bai, called Bai Erkia, Zhou Wan said. Then it's the Bai family. Don't worry, I'll accompany Yang Qing to go and see tonight. Teacher Zhou, you stay at home and rest assured. Wait for my good news, Hu Chen said. Teacher Zhou had been worried about this matter, but the rest didn't need to be worried about, just wait patiently. Zhou Wan nodded. Although someone had stood up for her, she still looked worried. After all, the Bai family was extremely powerful, with influence in both the legal and illegal realms, and such a family was really not to be trifled with. Just as they reached the door, Zhou Wan seemed to remember something and turned back, saying, I remember now, Mr. Hua, let's go together. If we encounter an emergency, I can help you call the police and be a witness. Zhou Wan had already thought of the worst case scenario, that Hua Chen might not be able to defeat the opponent, be beaten, and then humiliated. She would call the police, and they would collude to slander Hua Chen. If that happened, it would be a disaster. Hua Chen smiled and glanced at Zhou Wan, suddenly realizing that although she was a teacher, she was very brave. Faced with such a brutal enemy, she could calmly analyze the situation and come up with a strategy. For this reason alone, Zhou Wan was stronger than many people. Okay, since that's the case, let's go together. Also, I might have to use force later, and it won't be pretty. You should be prepared for that, Hua Chen cautioned. Zhou Wan nodded. She understood what Hua Chen meant. He wanted to make a scene, to have a real fight with the other party. Yang Qing's untimely laughter broke the tension, and she sweetly said, you seem very concerned about my teacher. How about after this is over, you two make plans alone? Hua Chen almost burst out laughing, glared at Yang Qing, and said, you silly girl, what nonsense are you talking? Focus on what you need to do. Zhou Wan's face turned red instantly, and she unconsciously covered her chest. She then realized that her bra had been torn by Erkiyu just now, and under the thin silk short-sleeved shirt, there was nothing there. It was so embarrassing. After Zhou Wan calmed down, she realized that today's events were indeed very unexpected. But even more surprising was what kind of mindset Lu Xiao had to tamper with the admission letter. Time passed quickly, and it was already evening. At 8.10, Lu Xiao and Bai Erkiyu were sitting in the restaurant drinking. In the spacious living room, there were only Lu Xiao and Bai Erkiyu. They sat quietly, occasionally looking around, and were already a bit impatient. This young Qing, how dare she make me wait? This is unacceptable. I must teach her a lesson tonight, Lu Xiao took out a small box from under his feet, which contained belts, whips, and other items. Anyone with a discerning eye could tell that Lu Xiao had come tonight to play. Bai Erkiyu was also getting a little impatient and shook his head, saying, yes, she's late. I was looking forward to trying out some new moves with her. The conversation gradually turned to adult topics. Just then, Bai Erkiyu's phone rang, and he quickly took it out to check. It turned out to be a call from his mother. Mom, what's up? Bai Erkiyu asked. Bai Erkiyu's mother, Chang Yang, had a very hot temper. Erkiyu, you must handle Lu Xiao's matter well. Also, I've sent my nephew Chang Xian over to help you. He has brought several high-level martial artists with him. When you meet them, make arrangements for them. They are all your people, just in case, Bai Erkiyu suddenly became excited. They were all his people, and so many reinforcements had arrived. Things would be much easier from now on. After speaking, Chang Yang hung up the phone and complained. Lu Xiao is already an adult, and yet he still makes people worry. His family is really something. Obviously, Chang Yang was very dissatisfied with her husband, Lu Sanpao. It was not good to leave their son alone outside. She had suggested before that no matter where their son went, they should send dedicated bodyguards. But Lu Sanpao had directly refused, saying that it would be too ostentatious and inconvenient. Now that something had happened, they needed reinforcements. Wasn't this just a waste of time? 
Because the phone volume was loud, Lu Xiao heard what was said inside and laughed, My goodness, my lecherous cousin is here too. Is he going to join us tonight? I wonder if Yang Qing can handle it. What if she can't take it and dies? Lu Xiao even began to fantasize about the situation at night. Yang Qing faced the three of them alone, a whole night of battle, even an Iron Man wouldn't be able to withstand it. At the same time, Chang Xian's car slowly drove onto the highway. Once on the highway, the car became much smoother. Chang Xian lit a cigarette and smiled, saying, This Wang Qian is really a fierce woman. I want to see how she will refuse me after this is done. The Wang family is a mining magnate, and it is said that they have delved deep into the crystal industry. This is a big piece of fat. When I get it, I will have everything, and people will be envious. Sitting in the back was a man in a Zhongshan suit. The man paused and said, Chang Xian, are you planning to marry Wang Qian, and then form an alliance with the Wang family and take over their assets? Ha, huh, you're thinking too much. I don't want to get married. Wang Qian has a good figure, I just want to have some fun. If we get married, she will have to share my family's assets, right? Besides, Wang Qian only has a good figure, what else does she have? Can she match up to me? The middle-aged man nodded and said, you're right, Wang Qian is no longer part of the Wang family. The only useful thing about her is her body. It's just a matter of time before I get bored. I, Hu Tai, am a rough man, only good at fighting. If it weren't for standing in the right place at the beginning, I wouldn't have made it to where I am today, that's fate. Hu Tai's seemingly simple words told Cheng Xian from another perspective that he was very loyal, no matter what he did, he wouldn't talk about it. This was the reason why Hu Tai was hired as a bodyguard. The middle-aged man nodded and said with a smile, although that's what you said, I have many experts on my side. If we win by unconventional means, can you stop them? The one speaking was Chang Xian. The unconventional means Chang Xian mentioned probably involved assassination and the like. Don't worry, no matter what happens, I will protect your safety. This is my creed. Hu Tai seemed to realize what was about to happen in the future. A hint of worry flashed across his face. The roar of the car's engine filled the entire cabin, drowning out all other sounds. Chang Xian opened the car window and saw several planes flying by, leaving red tails in the sky. Why are military planes? It looks like more than one, they should be heading towards the direction of Bayan. What's happening over there? Chang Xian quickly thought of the conflicts that had occurred between Heidel and Bayan. Heidel and Bayan would occasionally have conflicts, the situation was very unstable. Never mind that for now, let's hurry. Chang Xian was well aware of his own abilities, no matter what kind of disturbance he caused, he wouldn't get involved with the military, which was why he urged the driver to go faster. But Hu Tai was different. He had returned from the army and knew things that only he understood, things that outsiders didn't know, especially about these planes, which were not conventional military aircraft. Something terrible must have happened over there, otherwise it wouldn't be like this. Hu Tai swallowed and said, Driver, please drive faster, it looks like something is about to happen up ahead. As the driver sped up, Hu Tai's feeling of unease became more and more apparent, to the point where he became tense. On the other side, Bai Erkiu put down the phone and said, Madam said that young master Chang Xian will be here soon, probably within an hour. Lu Xiao sneered coldly, full of playfulness, and said, It looks like there's a good show to watch tonight. Watch carefully tonight, don't let Yang Qing die. With that, the two of them chuckled and began to entertain their own thoughts. At this time, Bai Erkiu suggested, Why not go up now and have some fun, and then let Chang Xian come up later? Lu Xiao thought this was a good idea and immediately led by Erkiu and the others upstairs. When the door opened, there were three women and one man standing in front of them. Lu Xiao recognized Yang Qing at a glance, his eyes lit up, and he said, Yang Qing is here, and also Bing Qing. My god, they're all beauties, it's going to be a great night. Yang Qing was wearing yoga pants and a short-sleeved top, showcasing her slender curves and attracting the attention of onlookers. Standing next to her was Hua Bing Qing, exuding an imposing presence that captivated the viewers. To make matters worse, teacher Zhou Wan also arrived. Her mature figure exuded a different charm compared to Yang Qing and her companions. Bai Erkia stared intently at the three women, completely ignoring Hua Chen beside him. Lu Xiao chuckled and said, Bro, how about we take turns with these three? Sure. Bai Erkia's mouth watered as he scanned the women's bodies with a predatory gaze. After a pause, Lu Xiao approached and said slowly, Yang Qing, you seem to be quite generous. Not only did you come, but you also brought two girls with you. Not bad. So, do you want to apologize like this? Or should I remind you that as long as you serve me and my brothers well, we will forgive you. I guarantee that you will be admitted to Yenzhou University immediately. In fact, this was not the first or second time Lu Xiao had done such a thing. 
He often used his resources to coerce female students into submission, either by taking advantage of their bodies or forcing them to become someone else's plaything. At this moment, Lu Xia thought that Yang Qing was genuinely apologizing to him, rather than trying to please him with her body. Yang Qing was infuriated and said, "You've gone too far." Oh, what do you mean by that, Yang Qing? Are you going to Yanzhou University or not? Lu Xiao's words completely silenced Yang Qing. You're asking for it, Huo Chen said calmly. Only then did Lu Xiao notice that there was another person in the room, the fearless Huo Chen. Damn, how is there a man here? What did you just say? Do you believe I will kill you right now? After speaking, Lu Xiao signaled to the bodyguards behind him, and several of them rushed out. They surrounded Huo Chen, ready to strike at any moment. This was the first time Zhou Wan had seen so many bodyguards, and she turned pale with fear. However, Yang Cheng and Huo Bingqing remained composed, and their nervousness gradually subsided. Huo Chen looked at the group coldly and said, "Good, you even brought bodyguards." Lu Xiao, you're quite capable. Lu Xiao was very pleased. Anyone could attend school, but not everyone could afford bodyguards. Ha! It's good that you know. These people are all martial artists, and I think you know how powerful they are. Be sensible and step back, or you'll regret it. Lu Xiao continued to threaten in order to scare off Huo Chen and then enjoy these three women. Normally, an ordinary person would agree to anything after being threatened by Lu Xiao. However, Huo Chen was not an ordinary person. He remained still, staring at Lu Xiao as if he were a fool. Bai Erqiu, seeing the other's arrogance, became angry and said, "Kid, did you hear what my young master said? Do as he says, or I'll beat you to death." Bai Erqiu clearly underestimated Huo Chen and thought he was just an ordinary person without any threat. Zhou Wan stood behind Huo Chen and could clearly feel that the people around her were looking at her with a deep sense of evil. Just then, Huo Chen suddenly had a flash of inspiration. To be precise, he just slightly moved his body, and the bodyguard in front of him instantly flew out and crashed heavily into the door in front. Everyone was shocked. They barely reacted and couldn't even see what Huo Chen had done. Suddenly, the whole room fell silent, and everyone looked at each other in disbelief. Several seconds later, the bodyguard lazily stood up, with extensive soft tissue injuries and large areas of swelling on his back. Blood was flowing from his mouth, and he had completely lost his ability to fight. This was Huo Chen's strength, swift and precise, incapacitating the enemy in one move. Huo Chen's kick stunned by Erkio, who said, "Being able to defeat an opponent with one move shows some strength. In my opinion, you are definitely not an ordinary person." However, Lu Xiao had not yet realized the seriousness of the situation and continued to urge Erkio, "Go on, kill him. Then we can have fun with the women." Shut up! Bai Erkio angrily rebuked, telling Lu Xiao to be quiet. Lu Xiao looked at Bai Erkio in confusion. Bai Erkio had always shown him great respect, never raising his voice at him no matter what happened. Why was he now yelling at him? Just as Lu Xiao was about to ask why, a noisy sound of footsteps suddenly came from outside. Lu Xiao looked up and saw several men in uniforms standing in front of him. The leader of the men wore a mask, so his face couldn't be seen. But from the armband, it seemed that he was from the security team. This puzzled Lu Xiao. Sure enough, as soon as the men stood firm, they immediately identified themselves. We are law enforcement officers from the Bayan security team. We are currently on a mission, and anyone who obstructs us will be killed without mercy. After speaking, these men took out weapons, all of them one foot long batons with sharp blades at the top. For a moment, the scene became quiet. People looked at the men in surprise, unable to say a word. At that moment, another person walked out from behind the group. This person was Wang Deng, a loyal member of Huo Chen's team. Wang Deng had already noticed that Huo Chen had gone out, but he didn't know where. It seemed dangerous, so he had gathered a small part of the security team to come over, just in case. Seeing the security team, both by Erkiu and Lu Xiao's faces turned pale. At least the official forces of Bayan City had appeared. Lu Xiao, still unable to understand the situation, said with a smile. The security team is here, just in time. We are from the Lu family of Bayan. We are not afraid. Lu Xiao also said to the members behind him, "Don't be afraid. The security team can't control us. Later, give it your all. And if anyone dares to be cowardly, I will immediately fire him." These henchmen all relied on Lu Xiao for their livelihood, so the words "fire" had a great impact on them. They all became spirited, ready to charge at any moment. Wang Deng couldn't stand these people. Sneered, drew his long knife. And swiftly struck down several bodyguards. The rest of the people couldn't react, and they watched in horror as those who were lying on the ground groaned in pain. Wang Dang put away his weapon and sternly said, "Are you deaf? I told you to put down your weapons. Can't you hear me?" Wang Dang almost used the authority of a law enforcer to oppress the others, and his imposing manner made them dare not make a sound. 
Lu Xiao's face turned pale in an instant. He never expected that the one who would be ruthless to him was not Hua Chen, but the security team that he couldn't reach. By Erki Yu also couldn't believe how strong the other party was. He felt that there might be some misunderstanding, so he rushed forward and kept explaining, Gentlemen, can't we talk things out? We have always had a good relationship with the security team, and we hope to get along well in the future. Wang Dang sneered coldly and then looked at Bai Erkiu. How many times do I have to say it? We are on a mission. Understand? Put down your weapons, quickly. Wang Dang almost shouted loudly. It had to be said that Lu Xiao had never taken Hua Chen seriously from the beginning. In Lu Xiao's eyes, Hua Chen was just an ordinary person who could be scared off with a few threats, and then he could leave three women in the room for himself and Bai Erkiu to enjoy. But he never expected that the security team would suddenly appear. This was not good for him at all. As soon as Wang Dang finished speaking, the so-called bodyguards of Lu Xiao all dropped their weapons and retreated, their faces filled with fear. It was only then that these bodyguards realized that, no matter how strong they were, they couldn't confront the security team. The security team was from Bayan City, while they were private individuals, and they were not on the same level at all. After understanding this, many of the security team members became much calmer. Lu Xiao also reacted, constantly retreating, but when he looked behind him, there was no one there. The bodyguards who had been surrounding him just now were all gone. Damn it, come and protect me. Lu Xiao shouted loudly in fear, but no one came to protect him. This made him tremble with fear. If the security team could target these bodyguards, they could naturally target Lu Xiao, and even by Erkiu. Even so, there were still bodyguards who surrounded him and protected Lu Xiao with their lives. By Erkiu frowned and said, are you sure the security team wants to do this? You are breaking the agreement with us, which will provoke our resistance. Captain, have you thought about the consequences? Although he said this, Bai Erkiu was panicking inside. He had a vague feeling that the security team had some connection with Hua Chen, otherwise they wouldn't act this way. Let me handle this. At this time, Hua Chen walked over. He didn't want to embarrass Wang Deng, and he didn't want Wang Deng to lose face. So he took a step forward and said, do you think you are qualified to negotiate with us? Also, your young master tampered with the Yang Qing admission notice. How do you see this? Bai Erkiu finally understood. Hua Chen was here for revenge, and he was on the same side as Wang Dang. If he continued to be tough and stubborn at this time, he would likely be eliminated by the other party in the name of law enforcement. After thinking for a moment, Bai Erkiu said solemnly, This. It was wrong of my young master. He just wanted to play a joke. It wasn't serious. I will talk to him later and make sure Yang Qing is admitted. You see, you have also injured many of our people, let's call it even, how about that? In Bai Erkia's view, calling it even was the best outcome. But Hua Chen coldly smiled, his expression fierce and cruel, do you think this matter can be settled? Hua Chen was well aware of the methods of these people. If he didn't intervene, tonight, the three women would undoubtedly suffer in human treatment. But according to the other party's words, was this just a joke between Lu Xiao and Yang Cheng? Ridiculous, in my dictionary, there has never been such a thing as settling. Hua Chen said firmly. Bai Erkiu was stunned, he didn't expect Hua Chen to respond like this. He sneered, young man, what do you want then? Don't you know the relationship between our Bai family and the security team? The security team is under the management of the public security team, it's like the relationship between roots and leaves. Do you really want to challenge these two behemoths? Hua Chen completely ignored the other's words and said, I want to see what kind of behemoth it is. Today, you two must leave with one leg, otherwise neither of you will leave. Every word Hua Chen spoke was filled with immense power. The people felt a strong sense of killing intent and couldn't help but retreat. Bai Erkia's face was extremely ugly. He never expected that Hua Chen would be so tough. From a distance, Zhou Wan wanted to step forward to stop them, but quickly realized that Hua Chen was not an ordinary person, but a well-known martial artist. Since he was a martial artist, there was no point in trying to persuade him. Their only way of dealing with problems was through fighting. Whoever won was right, and whoever won set the rules. Just then, Lu Xiao's phone rang. He took it out and saw that it was his cousin's number. Wow, it's my cousin, Hua Chen, you're finished. Lu Xiao quickly answered the phone and shouted excitedly, Cousin, it's me, come and save me, there's trouble here, hurry. The person on the other end of the phone was Chang Xin. Chang Xin had no idea about Lu Xiao's situation at all, and joked, Are you having trouble with women? How can I save you? Ha ha. As soon as Lu Xiao heard this, his face instantly turned black. Was this how his cousin acted? What's the situation now? And he's still joking around. Chang Xian thought the other party was busy since they didn't respond, so he asked, By the way, Lu Xiao, you're in Bayan, right? Help me find out about someone named Hua Chen, he's quite impressive, 
I want detailed information about him. He's still asking about him. Lu Xiao was speechless. Bro, you really know how to pick your timing. Huo Chen is right in front of me, Lu Xiao said. Aha, uh -huh, great, are you apologizing to me? Tell Bai Erkia to be gentle when he strikes, don't kill him. I'll be there soon to ask him myself. After saying that, Chang Xian hung up directly. This directly left Lu Xiao at a loss, he tightly held his phone, his face turning extremely ugly. On the other side, several fixed-wing aircraft descended from the sky and landed steadily in front of the building. A woman walked down from the plane, looked around, and her expression was quite strange. There's no one in the room, find out where the person is, the woman said. Colonel Xia Meng, are we being too conspicuous this time? It's just one person, there's no need for this. Look, there are planes everywhere, a soldier said. It should be done this way. You don't know how powerful this person is. In the whole Xia country, there's probably only her, Xia Meng said. The soldier nodded, seeming to understand something, his eyes looking ahead, anxiously waiting for the appearance of the mysterious person. On Chang Xian's side, after hanging up on Lu Xiao, he suddenly felt triumphant. It's really like finding something without searching. It didn't take any effort at all. I didn't expect to find it so quickly, Chang Xian happily laughed, then said, This Hua Chen is really troublesome, his shadow can be seen everywhere. This time, he must be dealt with, otherwise it's very annoying to look at. In Chang Xian's view, Hua Chen was like a burden, completely useless. Hu Tai, on the other hand, kept looking at the sky, silently counting the number of planes flying by, his expression becoming even more serious. He had a premonition that something big would happen tonight, but Hu Tai couldn't imagine that what would happen later would affect his whole life. On Hu Chen's side, he coldly looked ahead and said with a smile, very good, it's the young master of the Chang family, just in time. Hu Chen's voice was very low, but it had a strong penetrating power, instantly piercing through the other party. By Erkiu even covered his chest with his hand, feeling uncomfortable. Looking at the others, there was hardly any reaction. What's going on? Why is it like this? What he didn't know was that Hua Chen was selectively exerting pressure on people. The last two words he said carried a strong force, giving Bai Erkiu a heavy blow. Bai Erkiu was puzzled and felt it was unbelievable. At the same time, Bai Erkiu also wondered what the other party's identity was and why they could emit such a powerful sound wave attack. This was so unbelievable to Bai Erkiu. Was this the power of a martial artist, or was there another reason? Just then, a flash of light appeared in front of Bai Erkiu, and a blade flew to him. Bai Erkiu was surprised, looked down, and saw a dagger without a handle. The dagger carried a great force, plunging deep into the ground. Looking at the deeply inserted dagger on the ground, Bai Erkiu's face showed fear. Young master, it's not good, this person knows Qigong, very powerful. Quickly call madam for support. Bai Erkiu was completely awakened. The other party's strength was far above his own. Once a real fight started, he would be the one getting hurt. Okay, I'll call her right away. Lu Xiao quickly realized that the situation was not right, immediately took out his phone, and called Chun Yang. As soon as the call connected, Lu Xiao shouted anxiously, Mom, it's not good, something's happened to me, come and save me, someone wants to break my leg. What about Bai Erkiu? Didn't I send someone to protect you? What's going on? Chang Yang showed nervousness for the first time, but there was no time to speak on the other end of the phone, followed by a scream, and then there was no more sound. Chang Yang heard it clearly, the voice came from Bai Erkiu. In other words, Bai Erkiu was in danger. Not good. Chang Yang's first reaction was that they encountered a formidable enemy. After all, Bai Erkiu's strength was unmatched, not just anyone could defeat him. In addition, even if Bai Erkiu encounters a martial artist stronger than himself, he will not be defeated so quickly. What exactly happened over there? Chang Yang was completely panicked. On Bai Erkia's side, just as Lu Xiao was calling for help, a black shadow suddenly flashed in the air, and before anyone could see it, Bai Erkia fell heavily to the ground. The next moment, a lot of blood flowed from Bai Erkia's knees, staining the ground red. Just now, Bai Erkia seemed to have seen Hu Chen move, but it seemed like he didn't, out of instinct, Bai Erkia immediately picked up the dagger on the ground. But the opponent's movements were too fast, too fast to bear and then he knelt on the ground, his knees emptied by someone. Sorry, this is called even. Huo Chen smiled faintly and took out the short blade in his hand. There were still traces of blood on it, as if it had just cut open a wound. With this simple action, Bai Erkiu realized that the opponent's strength was far above his own, and no matter what method he used, he would not be able to defeat the opponent. This is absolute strength, in the face of absolute strength, any resistance is futile. Lu Xiao had never seen such a scene before and he was so scared that he wet his pants and kept shouting for his mother on the phone. Bai Erkio quickly raised his hand and forcefully sealed his own acupoints, enduring the pain and said, 
Hu Chen, if you're a man, come at me, spare the young master, he's still a child. Hu Chen turned coldly and said, is that so? I like to bully children. Swish, swish, swish. At this moment, several bodyguards rushed over and surrounded Hu Chen, using their bodies to protect Lu Xiao. Hu Chen looked at these bodyguards and said, get out of the way? The bodyguards seemed to ignore him and stood quietly in place, apparently determined to protect Lu Xiao to the death. Seeing so many bodyguards coming over, Lu Xiao felt a lot more at ease in his heart. Quick, kill him for me, one million each, hurry. Hua Chen looked coldly at the other party, his expression becoming even calmer. You may not know who I am, but remember, from the moment you intercepted the Yang Qing notification, your legs were already crippled. After that, Hua Chen lightly flashed to the side, turning into a phantom in an instant, moving forward like a ghost, wherever he went, the bodyguards fell to the ground, screaming in pain. Hua Chen did not fully attack, he just wanted to give a warning to the people behind, and then said coldly, gentlemen, I have no grudges with you, you can leave now, I will spare your lives. Otherwise, this will be your fate. Hua Chen's voice was powerful and forceful, like a heavy weight, pressing on the remaining people. This was the first time they had heard such a voice, and their internal organs were all churning. If he increased the power, the internal organs of the people present would probably be shattered. The other bodyguards were suddenly filled with fear and turned to run away. Run, this man is unbeatable. He's a martial arts expert. We're no match for him. This is serious, it could be fatal, it's not worth risking our lives for money, run. Several bodyguards ran away in an instant, not looking back. No matter how Lu Xiao shouted, those people just wouldn't come back, and they had disappeared without a trace. Hu Chen didn't want to chase after them, they were just small fries, not worth it, and he said with a smile, the Bai family values loyalty the most, these people who flee in the face of danger will be executed by the Bai family. Just sit back and watch the show. The Bai family has an unwritten rule. As a bodyguard, you should be loyal and dedicated to your master, and in case of an emergency, you should prioritize your master's life over your own. Otherwise, the result will be death. This is also the cruelest aspect of the Bai family. Lu Xiao's eyes widened, and he sat on the ground, his lower body soaked, emitting a foul stench. Huo Qin picked up a short stick from the ground and slowly walked to Lu Xiao's side. So, you should know your fate, right? Once the words were spoken, Lu Xiao felt as if he had been struck by something heavy, and he fell to the ground with a thud. His phone dropped from his body and happened to dial Chang Yang's number. Chang Yang's voice immediately came through the phone, full of questions. Lu Xiao, what's going on over there? What happened? Why did the call get cut off? Are you injured? Is Bai Erkiu with you? With a series of uninterrupted inquiries, Lu Xiao's will was completely crushed, and he burst into frightened tears. Before he could speak, Hu Chen snatched the phone and said, Your son has ruined Yang Qing's future. Do you know about this? The other person hesitated for a moment, then quickly said, Who are you? Why are you holding my son's phone? I don't know any Yang Qing. What does her failure to pass have to do with my son? What do you want? Oh, you don't know? Well then, I'll teach Lu Xiao a lesson for you, Hu Chen said with a cold laugh. Who are you? Let go of my son, or the Bai family won't spare you. Chang Yang became anxious, realizing at the same time that this person was not to be trifled with, and even more terrifyingly, he was capable of anything. From the call, Hu Chen learned that the other party was also a rude and unreasonable person, and as the saying goes, like mother, like son. In that case, there was nothing more to say. You talk too much. Come to Bayan to collect the body, Hu Chen said, then pulled out a long knife and stabbed at Lu Xiao's thigh. Ah! Lu Xiao screamed in pain, his face drained of color as he curled up into a ball. Lu Xiao, what's wrong with you? Bastard, what have you done to my son? Don't hurt my son, don't hurt my son. The person on the other end of the phone almost burst into tears. Hua Chen was getting annoyed, so he casually threw the phone to the ground, and the call was immediately disconnected. Chung Yang slumped to the ground on the other end of the line. She realized that she had been stubborn and that Lu Xiao was in danger. At that moment, a middle-aged man in his forties walked over, took a deep drag on his cigarette, and half of the long cigarette was gone in an instant. I told you, Lu Xiao's personality was bound to get him into trouble. He's always been arrogant and domineering, and I've told him countless times that he needs to be low-key. But he just wouldn't listen. Now look, he's in trouble, and it's a big one. How do you expect these people to handle it? I just asked the school. Lu Xiao intercepted a student's notification letter named Yang Qing. Isn't that making an enemy? He's too bold, too shameless. The man cursed loudly, throwing the cigarette but to the ground. Chang Yang's tears flowed, and she cried, I raised Lu Xiao single-handedly. How could I not know what kind of person he is? Lu Xiao is just playful, just likes to joke around. What else is there? I believe it's just a misunderstanding. Lu Xiao is not that kind of person at all. 
It's all that Hua Chen's fault. He's making a big deal out of nothing, deliberately making things difficult for us, it's all his fault. You're his father, can you just sit back and watch your son being threatened and do nothing? Chen Yang's tone changed, and she began to blame Lu Sanpao. Lu Sanpao was also at a loss, angrily saying, this troublemaker, causing trouble every day, making the house restless. I've told him so many times, but he just won't listen. Let him suffer a bit, know what society is like. Besides, how many times have I covered for him? And he's still like this. The military has been inspecting recently. If something big happens, I won't care anymore. Lu Sanpao kept smoking, showing no intention of helping. But he was also very worried about Lu Xiao's safety. After all, that was his own son, and it would be painful if he were beaten or got into trouble. On the other hand, Lu Xiao had been pampered since childhood, to put it bluntly, he had been spoiled. Such a person who had not experienced setbacks and did not know what society was like, it would be good for him to suffer a bit and know the consequences. But Lu San Pao had oversimplified the matter. Lu Xiao had encountered Hua Chen, not just anyone. Stirring up Hua Chen is a big deal, and stirring up the people around him might even cost lives. Sighing, Lu San Pao still said, All right, no matter what, this is still my son. I know Bayan very well. It's just a small place. Who could threaten Lu Xiao's safety? I think it's probably encountering desperados. Isn't that Hu Tai and Bayan? Let him go. That kid can fight, and he can handle the problem. Chun Yang's eyes lit up. You didn't say it, but I forgot. It's Hu Tai, it's him. Let him go and kill the person who attacked my son. I'll contact him right away. Chun Yang quickly picked up the phone and dialed Hu Tai's number. On the other end, because Hu Tai had been outside watching the plane, he didn't hear the phone, so Chun Yang called Cheng Xian instead. Aunt, don't worry, we're on our way to Bayan, and uncle who is there. We'll definitely rescue Lu Xiao. Uncle Hu Tai is amazing. If anyone dares to bully Lu Xiao, we'll take care of them in no time. Hu Tai is a high-level martial artist with strong abilities and some local fame. Most people dare not provoke him. Bayan is very small, and it's unlikely to produce any talented individuals, so when Hu Tai goes, he will be invincible. Chang Yang finally relaxed and said, that's good, that's good. The person who hurt my son deserves to die. You must bring my son back unharmed. Seeing his wife hysterically shouting into the phone, Lu Sanpao shook his head and walked outside. He really couldn't stand this kind of woman. Hanging up the phone, Chung Yang wiped the spit from the corner of her mouth and shouted at Lu Sanpao, Where are you going at this time? Lu Sanpao sighed and said, Son, son, all you think about is your son. Isn't the family business important? Tonight, Lin Shi from the Lin family is coming. We're going to discuss the or business. Is there a problem? Lu Sanpao's business was already not going well and the more he thought about it, the angrier he became. He angrily said, which is more important, you figure it out for yourself. After speaking, Lu Sanpao slammed the door and left. On the other side, Cheng Xian, upon learning that Lu Xiao had been bullied, kept urging Hu Tai. Uncle Hu Tai, please hurry. Lu Xiao has been bullied and might not be able to hold on. Aunt Cheng Yang has been calling me non-stop. We need to hurry. Cheng Xian was very anxious. Normally, no matter what trouble Lu Xiao got into, it wouldn't alarm Chan Yang, but this time was different. Chan Yang had actually called directly, indicating just how bad Lu Xiao's situation was. Hu Tai, who had always been quiet, suddenly became restless. He kept rubbing the large beads in his hand, and his eyes became sharper. We'll be there soon, don't worry, Hu Tai said. Hu Tai had always been the family's top enforcer, with strong abilities. Earlier, he had reached the pinnacle of martial arts, with amazing boxing skills and an incredible fighting style that had once made people nearby tremble in fear. There was a time when Hu Tai's name was invincible, and no one dared to provoke him or underestimate his prowess. However, Hu Tai was very low-key. Even at the peak of his power, he remained calm and didn't seek trouble. But this time was different. If he didn't intervene, Lu Xiao would be in danger, and so would he. A few minutes later, Chang Xian's car stopped at the target location. As soon as the car stopped, everyone smelled a strong smell of blood. Several bodyguards' bodies lay on the ground in the distance, with blood everywhere. Some had knife wounds, the wounds were extremely exaggerated, revealing a large piece of yellow fat, while others had fallen to the ground for unknown reasons, with no visible injuries, but their breath was weak, and they would soon die. Hu Tai was shocked by what he saw. He couldn't believe what kind of person and method could cause such damage. What was even more terrifying was that Bai Erki was lying on the ground, and Lu Xiao was weakly rolling to the side, with a steel knife stuck in his leg, blood flowing profusely from the wound. Everyone was shocked, secretly saying that the situation was too complicated, much more serious than imagined. Hu Tai was the last to get off the car. When he saw Lu Xiao lying on the ground, a fierce look appeared on his face. 
Then he stood steadily in place and said lightly, Who did this? It's too much. Cheng Xian scanned the crowd with his eyes, finally fixing his gaze on a particular wound, and said coldly, What's going on? Even the public security brigade is involved? Don't you know the relationship between the two families? The atmosphere at the scene became extremely cold, almost no one spoke, all staring at Cheng Xian. At this time, Lu Xiao ran over in difficulty, trembling and said, Brother, save me. It hurts, come and save me. Snap. Before he could finish speaking, Hu Chen raised his hand and slapped Lu Xiao, making him spin around. Lu Xiao cried out, blood foaming at the corners of his mouth, and several teeth knocked out. Cheng Xian's eyelids twitched, thinking that when we arrived, it was acceptable for you to hit people, after all, these people didn't know, so you could get away with it. But now that reinforcements have arrived, and you still hit someone, this behavior is much worse, it's provocative, and we must fight. Cheng Xian clenched his fists and angrily said, You are Ho Chen. What do you want to do? Do you not know who Lu Xiao is? You still hit him. I think you are tired of living. Ho Chen laughed when he heard this, and said slowly, Huh, ruining Yang Qing's future, he brought it upon himself. Besides, who are you? Do you want to take the blame for him? Chang Xian was speechless for a moment, unable to say anything. It was Hu Tai who stepped forward, clenched his fists, and said coldly, even if Lu Xiao was at fault first, he shouldn't be punished like this. And you, the public security team, you are also going too far. Clearly it was a fight, but you not only didn't stop it, but also took sides, and injured so many bodyguards? Is this all you're doing? Wang Deng immediately stepped forward when he heard this, smiling and said, What? Do you suspect our law enforcement team? Or do you think our law enforcement is unfair? As he spoke, the followers behind Wang Dang stood proudly, hands on their weapons, ready to strike at any time. Hu Tai knew the strength of these people, with the betrayal of the Xia Kingdom, their combat power was much higher than that of ordinary people. Unless under special circumstances, ordinary people would not dare to confront them head on. However, Wang Dang underestimated the other party. Hu Tai said, I know your abilities are strong, and the power behind you is not to be underestimated. But don't forget, everything you do must be based on the law, not arbitrary. The Bai family is no longer what it used to be, their strength far exceeds your imagination. I advise you not to pick a fight with them. Apologize quickly, otherwise the consequences will be severe. As Hu Tai spoke, a lot of white mist had already appeared around him. This was his usual technique, aimed at creating smoke by chemical means to damage the enemy's central nervous system and slow down their movements. No one could easily escape this move they could only passively adapt. Suddenly, a terrifying smell filled the air. People covered their noses in fear, trying to avoid inhaling too much of this smoke. Hua Chen immediately stepped forward, from the way you speak, I should apologize to you, all for our own good? Ridiculous, ridiculous. I ask you, do you know what Lu Xiao did? Hu Tai tightened his grip, the large bead stopped in his hand, and said, no matter what, he is still a child. It seems that you are not going to apologize. Cheng Xian quickly turned his head and said slowly, stop talking to him, after beating Lu Xiao like this, I want him to pay with his blood. The truth is in the fist, whoever has the stronger fist is right. This statement hit the nail on the head. In this world of collapsing order, the fist is the only truth. Hu Tai looked at the crowd, staring at Wang Deng beside him, and suddenly understood where Hu Chen's confidence came from. At best, he's just an ordinary person, able to cause such a big commotion, largely due to the backing of the security team. Humph. Don't think that just because you have the security team, you can do whatever you want. I hope you know that anyone who goes against the Bai family will not have a good ending. Hu Tai's words were very clear. Are you siding with the security team, Hua Chen? Then go die with him. If you are willing to kneel and apologize, I will spare your life, otherwise. Hu Tai clenched his fists, the air filled with a murderous aura. This time, the murderous aura was different from any other time. It had an unprecedented cohesion, as if it was about to explode within the body. Chang Xinping usually liked to exercise, with a strong physical fitness, two large chunks of muscle on his back, not someone to be trifled with. However, facing Hu Tai's momentum, he suddenly felt diminished, not only that, but he could also feel Hu Tai's heavy breathing. This was the emergence of muscular strength. Chang Xinping couldn't help but take a step back, trying to avoid this aura as much as possible. It was too powerful, making it impossible for him to breathe. When Chang Xinping stood at a safe distance, he angrily said, Uncle Hu, Finish him off quickly, help Lu Xiao seek revenge. He is the source of disaster, the person Wang Qian is looking for. Hua Chen frowned, his expression becoming somewhat playful, Oh, can't find Wang Qian? I was just about to ask her to apologize to me. Cheng Xinping immediately became angry, he disliked people speaking in such a tone, and walked forward slowly, saying coldly, Thanks to you, 
Wang Qian really can't be found, but rest assured, she will drag us to eliminate you, and we will definitely accomplish this. In Chang Xinping's view, Hu Tai was an invincible presence at the present and even for a long time in the future, extremely powerful, not on the same level as Hu Chen. Both Chang Xinping and Hu Tai felt that Lu Xiao's leg was caused by the security team, leading Hu Tai to look coldly at the security team and say coldly, this is unreasonable, you were too ruthless, all of you kneel down for me. Then, Hu Tai remembered something and sneered, you do it yourselves, so as not to dirty my hands. With that said, everyone really thought that Hu Tai was diverting the hatred to the security team for the sake of Hu Chen. Just then, Yang Qing suddenly walked out, shouting loudly, you are going too far. Is there no one who speaks reasonably? When they saw Yang Qing, everyone was surprised. They couldn't believe that there could be such a beautiful woman in the world. Chang Xinping's eyes widened, with a wicked smile on his face, interesting, you want to reason with me? But what can you do, you haven't seen the current situation clearly, have you? Also, you better apologize to me, serve us well, and we might consider letting you off. Yang Qing trembled with anger upon hearing this. What kind of shameless person could say such things? Just then, a huge fixed-wing aircraft stopped in the sky, several searchlights turned on, making it impossible for people to open their eyes. Chang Xinping and the others couldn't open their eyes and angrily shouted, What the hell is this damn plane doing here? Come on, get rid of it! But strangely, no one behind Chang Xinping moved. They all stood quietly, looking ahead in horror. Yang Qing, for the first time, saw this fixed-wing aircraft and felt very scared, subconsciously walking behind Hua Chen and asking softly, Could it be looking for us? Hua Chen was very familiar with these markings, having seen many during his time in the military, and said with a smile, It's okay, they are not enemies. It was strange, Hua Chen's words seemed to have a certain kind of magic, instantly calming the three women down. Zhou Wan's face had been blushing all along, looking exceptionally excited. She was very grateful to Hua Chen for bringing her here, experiencing this wonderful journey, and seeing a different world. In this world, bad people would be punished, and good people were the ones everyone wanted to learn from. Hu Tai stood nervously on the side, with no intention of relaxing. In his view, the aircraft's illumination was just the prelude, and even more terrifying things were yet to come. When everyone was puzzled, the door of the plane opened, and a graceful and heroic woman walked out slowly. This person was the famous Colonel Xia Meng. A gust of wind blew, and Xia Meng's hair became messy. She scanned the crowd with her eyes, and finally landed on Hua Chen, her expression becoming less serious and more sincere. Of course, Hua Chen also saw Xia Meng. He could never forget that face, serious, calm, lively, and would become rosy when excited. Suddenly, the scene fell silent. Everyone was looking at this military flower. She was so beautiful that people forgot why she was here. At this moment, Xia Meng put away the dagger on her body and looked quietly at the crowd. In stark contrast, was the previously dominant and powerful force, but this alone was enough to be memorable. Chang Xian had never seen such a woman. Not only was she graceful and heroic, but she also had such a powerful combat force. What was her background? Chang Xian panicked, full of fear, and said, Oh no, it's someone from the military. Uncle, tell the family, we're in trouble. Hu Tai, for the first time, did not respond, and after a long time, said, It's useless, the other party is too strong, the Bai family is no match at all. Chang Xian gasped and said nothing more, his expression turning to despair, unable to move. On the other side, when Xia Mang walked to Hua Chen's side, she smiled slightly and said, it's been several years since we last met, right? You look very different. Hua Chen smiled slightly and said, You've changed a lot too. Hmm, are you wearing alpha perfume? Everyone was shocked to hear this. They could not imagine that the famous Xia Mang would actually wear perfume. In the eyes of these macho men, Xia Mang was more manly than men, how could she wear perfume? Unless she met someone important. The problem was, even if she met a superior or a higher up, Xia Mang would not do this. Could it be that this Hua Chen was even more powerful than the higher-ups? Everyone was shocked. Xiao Meng looked at Hua Chen, and her sharp eyes suddenly softened, her lips slightly upturned, making her already beautiful face even more beautiful. Xiao Meng nodded, tacitly agreeing, but Hua Chen calmly said, and it's the scent of violets, this kind of purity of perfume, it's probably very hard to find, right? Hua Chen did not use the word bought, because he knew very well that this kind of perfume was extremely rare and precious, and could not be bought with money. So only someone of Xia Meng's level could use it. Let's talk business, don't bother with these useless things. Xia Meng cut to the chase, her expression becoming more serious again. Then, Xia Meng gently shook her body, causing the plane to release an extremely soft quantum field, enveloping Hua Chen and herself, forming a sealed space that shielded light, heat, and sound. From the outside, Hua Chen and Xia Meng seemed to have disappeared, leaving no trace. 
but from the inside, they could see everything outside. I had the plane use the field to shield them, now speak. Xia Meng finished speaking and lightly bit her lip, as if waiting for something. This was the first time Huo Chen had seen someone use the force like this, and it felt very strange. He said, it seems that the military is the place to train people. Not bad, you've been promoted in such a short time, truly a military genius. You've sprayed quite a lot of perfume today. Xiao Meng just sneered and did not directly answer, you're thinking too much, position, perfume. These are all bestowed by the Alpha Special Forces. Hua Chen's eyes lit up, instantly understanding that the reason Xiao Meng used this perfume was to hint at his own identity in the Alpha Special Forces. As for the purpose, this is interesting, so is this the military's intention, or that woman's? Hua Chen curiously said. In his impression, Xia Meng was the kind of woman who was straightforward in everything she said and did, without beating around the bush. But today it has become unusually euphemistic, which surprised Hua Chen very much, to the point where he felt that she had become much more unfamiliar. Xia Meng nodded, as a way of showing her respect, and said, Hua Chen, I didn't mean anything else. I was just following orders from my superiors. You should understand the higher-ups. She called me directly, and I had no choice but to do it this way. I am not on the same page as her, never have been. I don't know if you remember, but during my time in the military, I never took the initiative to call her. Now it's out of necessity, and I want Yang Qing to have a good environment. The Alpha Force was my suggestion for this purpose. Hua Chen remained silent, looking at the other person quietly, with a hint of coldness in his eyes. In his impression, the Alpha Force was sacred and invincible, so why was there a reorganization under Xia Meng's command? Does this mean that the Alpha Force was disbanded? No. Huo Chen stood up suddenly. The Alpha Force would never be disbanded unless it was being reorganized to be eliminated. I see. I understand now. All of this is because of her wrong decision. If she doesn't explain herself about the complete annihilation of the Alpha Force, I won't forgive her. Xia Meng sighed deeply and shook her head, saying, this can't all be blamed on her. Put yourself in her shoes and think about what you would do if you were in her position. Huo Chen's expression turned cold. What I want is an explanation, not understanding. I'm sorry, our conversation ends here. Hua Chen didn't want to discuss it any further, he felt it was meaningless and had no value. Seeing Hua Chen's mood improve, Xiao Meng tentatively asked, Don't worry, I'm not here to make things difficult for you this time. The entire military department now knows that you're back alive, and that's more important than anything else. Let's not talk about it. I'll take you to see Yang Qing. Hua Chen forcefully ended the conversation and led Xiao Meng forward. Xia Meng followed behind Hua Chen and whispered, I forgot to mention, Marshal Shangguan said that you have to agree to a request from her, unconditionally. Hua Chen's heart trembled, and he thought to himself, it's finally here. He turned around and saw Xia Meng, as if she had prepared herself, handing over an envelope. The marshal asked me to give this to you in person. I don't know what's written in this letter, but I do know that she was so happy when she gave it to me for the first time. Upon hearing this, Hua Chen suddenly felt uneasy. He had previously anticipated that something would happen in the future that would either change himself or change others. At the time, he had thought it was just his imagination, never expecting it to become a reality. When she was smiling, did she remove her mask? Perhaps, you still don't know what the so-called marshal looks like, Hua Chen asked. This question really caught Xia Meng off guard. She thought for a long time, seemingly trying to recall the situation that day, but no matter how hard she tried, she couldn't remember what that day was like. Could it be true, as someone had said, that the marshal used some method to alter people's memories? In fact, Hua Chen wasn't very interested in this letter, but he was really worried that the marshal might be setting a trap for him. The marshal had done this more than once. Seeing Hua Chen's lack of response, Xia Meng patiently asked, Are you still concerned about the marshal? Hua Chen, you're a man, don't be so petty. Besides, does it matter what the marshal looks like in relation to this letter? Hua Chen nodded, indicating that she was right. Shang Wan Xing Yue, she was the biggest boss in the military department. Her high position made her seem mysterious, which wasn't a bad thing. After that day, everyone in the military department thought you were dead. Because we estimated that in that kind of situation, anything would be vaporized at the molecular level. You said you only suffered a minor injury, do you think that's reasonable? Actually, Xia Meng still cares a lot about Hua Chen, after all, he is the number one legendary man in Xia country. Hua Chen smiled and said, it's all luck. I've almost recovered now. The medical level of the military is not good. Otherwise, if you go to the military, your injuries will heal much faster than they are now, Xia Meng said, thinking of a previous experience. It was a battle encounter in the wilderness where the enemy used heavy firepower and sent out powerful assassins. 
Under the double blow, the soldiers of Xia country almost suffered complete losses and sustained extremely serious injuries. At that time, the commander immediately sent people to transport the wounded. Unfortunately, when they arrived at the military, they couldn't find a doctor who could quickly treat the wounded. As a result, they watched helplessly as the wounded became seriously injured and eventually lost their lives. Since then, the military has changed its medical strategy, using genetic technology to immerse all the injured in it and treat them using physical methods. After that, all the wounded received the most perfect assistance. What's even more exaggerated is that as long as they can immerse themselves in the genetic transformation liquid, even if they are blown up and only have a head left, they can still grow new flesh and tissue. However, the cost of such treatment is immeasurable. For example, for a common severed hand or foot to be completely healed, it would cost nearly a meal's worth of the original liquid. This is a huge burden for the military. However, the two of them having such an uninterrupted conversation surprised everyone. They couldn't believe that Xia Meng, who is usually serious and rarely smiles, would be so cheerful and seem like a different person. Alright, let's stop here for today. What about Yang Cheng? I'm taking her with me, Xia Meng looked at the time and felt that it was getting late and couldn't delay any longer. On the other side, Chang Xian and Hu Tai were still surrounded by people. Chang Xian was anxious, feeling that continuing like this would be waiting for death, so he quietly said to Hu Tai, can we break through with confidence? Usually, Chang Xian is used to being reckless, solving any problem with force or money. But now it's different. He's facing a formidable enemy and can't win with his own strength. Especially when he saw those soldiers with live ammunition, Chang Xian completely understood. The other party simply doesn't care about his problems. As long as they want to, he would immediately turn into dust. Hu Tai turned his head slightly, looked around, gritted his teeth and said, No, we can't get out at all. Faced with the current situation, Hu Tai felt afraid for the first time. He felt the absolute strength of the other party. In the face of absolute strength, all struggles are futile. Thinking back to what Cheng Xian said before, that fists are the truth, now it seems so ridiculous. As the conversation ended, the fragrance on Xia Meng gradually disappeared. The two looked at each other and smiled understandingly. Xia Meng walked to Yang Qing's side and said with a smile, You've met a good person. Yang Qing nodded, Thank you, when do we leave? In five minutes, Xia Meng looked at her watch. There were five minutes left before the plane took off. The question then arises, Xia Meng clearly knew the time to leave, so why did she deliberately leave time open? Sure enough, after Xia Meng finished speaking, she turned to look at Cheng Xian and Hu Tai, her expression instantly turning cold. Hu Tai was quite scared and stood still. Uncle, please don't cause any trouble. If there's a problem, we're all finished. Cheng Xian loudly reminded him. Just then, Xia Meng suddenly stopped and turned to look at Hua Chen, asking, How did he treat you just now? Hua Chen smiled faintly and said, It's nothing, he just wanted me to break my arms and legs to compensate them. Oh, so arrogant? Don't they know that you are the most precious person in our Xia country? Breaking legs and arms should be for people who are of no use. Speaking, Xia Meng took out a long dagger and said to Cheng Xian and Hu Tai, you'd better do it yourselves. If I do it, I might accidentally take your lives. Cheng Xian's face turned pale. This girl looked so beautiful, yet so cruel. Let himself do it? Wasn't that like cutting off his own hands and feet? It would be better to just die. Cheng Xian had never experienced this kind of anger before and angrily said, I am from the Cheng family. If you treat me like this, the Cheng family will not spare you. Xia Meng coldly smiled and looked at Cheng Xian as if he were a fool. Interesting, you dare to disobey. After speaking, Xia Meng drew a long knife from her waist and waved it in the air. With a swish, a cold light flashed through the air, and the bodyguard next to Cheng Xian's right hand instantly fell to the ground. This knife was surprisingly fast, so fast it was frightening. What was even more bizarre was that even though his right hand fell to the ground, the bodyguard seemed completely unaware, and it took him several seconds to react. Ah, my hand. The bodyguard screamed loudly, rolling on the ground. Sorry, this is a special sequence. You must obey, there is no negotiation, Xia Meng said, and Hu Tai was shocked. Are you really from the special sequence? Hu Tai was at a loss for words. In his impression, the special sequence was an extremely mysterious existence. Not to mention seeing it, it was rare for anyone to even hear about it. Yet here it was appearing in front of him, truly surprising. This was the first time Chang Xian had seen Hu Tai so nervous, and he anxiously asked, Uncle, what is the special sequence? Why do you look so terrible? Hu Tai had no time to answer, and urgently said, This is bad, we are in trouble this time. Chang Xian, you are not a child anymore, there are some things you need to see for yourself. The special sequence is an invincible existence, it's time for you to understand that there are always people better than you. 
Chang Xian was suddenly plunged into despair. He had never imagined what kind of existence could make Hu Tai so afraid. Uncle, stop talking, take me away. Hurry, I want to leave here. Chang Xian shouted loudly, but Hu Tai remained unmoved. Chang Xian, calm down. I promised your father to always protect your safety, but this time is different, this time. We should just cut off our hands and feet, it's better than losing our lives. Finally, Hu Tai revealed the truth. Faced with the special sequence, Hu Tai had no room for resistance. Chang Xian was also completely hopeless. If even a master like Hu Tai decided to give in, then Hu and Bayan, who could be an opponent to the special sequence? If they resisted, the consequences would be unimaginable. Xia Meng stared ahead, saying coldly, you have one minute to think it over. Hu Tai was stunned, then picked up a steel knife from the ground. With a swift motion, his left arm fell to the ground. Blood flowed from the wound, but Hu Tai didn't even blink. He used his other hand to tear his clothes and wrap a cloth around the stump to stop the bleeding. Chang Xian was directly scared unconscious. But the next moment, Xia Meng swiftly struck again, and a hand flew through the air, waking Chang Xian up with pain. Ah! Chang Xian screamed loudly, rolling on the ground. Then the other bodyguards also had their right arms cut off in an instant by Xia Meng. Dozens of severed arms lay on the ground, and countless people cried out in pain, the sound reaching an extreme level of misery. At this moment, Xia Meng clapped her hands and looked at Yang Qing. Yang Qing was already pale with fear. Get used to it, the real world is much more cruel than this. Xia Meng said lightly, as if she were reminding Yang Qing that the road ahead would be even more difficult, and that he needed to adapt, rather than resist or refuse. Yang Qing nodded heavily, his eyes filled with determination. As for Zhou Wan, after seeing this scene, her face had already lost all color. The strong smell of blood almost made Zhou Wan faint. Next, Yang Qing walked carefully around the severed limbs on the ground and approached Xia Meng. Sister, you will protect me, right? Xia Meng nodded and looked at Yang Qing very seriously. That's right, but it won't be long before you don't need my protection. Maybe I'll need you to protect me. The two sisters got to know each other and smiled at each other, instantly making the atmosphere much more harmonious. When the plane flew into the sky, Yang Qing embarked on his own journey. There, Yang Qing could be fearless, free to perform, and continue to succeed in his own little world. Huo Chen stood on the ground, watching the plane take off until it disappeared into the distance. Yang Qing has grown up. Huo Chen said, then turned to Wang Dang. I'll leave it to you here. I have something else to do, so I'll leave first. There were severed limbs everywhere on the ground, looking very brutal. This was not something an ordinary person could handle, and Huo Chen couldn't do it alone, so he entrusted this task to Wang Dang. Wang Dang had many subordinates and could naturally handle the situation here. The current Wang Dang was different from any other time. As long as he worked well with Hua Chen, he wouldn't have to worry about being promoted. Hua Chen could use pressure from the military to promote Wang Dang, and everything would become reasonable and justified. At this point, Chang Xian was unable to stand, with very serious injuries. Hu Tai was slightly stronger than Chang Xian. He looked at Hua Chen, supported himself with his right hand on the ground, and struggled to stand up. Hu Tai stood up with all his strength, but in the end, he leaned weakly against the wall, enduring the intense pain and said, Hua Chen, you are a talent. I, Hu Tai, am willing to call you the strongest. Today, I have truly seen it. When I go back, I will definitely stop the Cheng family from retaliating against you. In fact, Hu Tai had already anticipated it. Once the Cheng family and Hua Chen clashed, the consequences would be unimaginable. Both were monsters with absolute destructive power, and if they fought each other, it would only be the ordinary people who would suffer. Hu Tai didn't want these tragedies to happen and could only find a way to stop the Cheng family. But I've said it before. The Cheng family is very stubborn and doesn't listen to anyone. Maybe my advice won't work. Hu Tai knew the Cheng family too well. They were the kind of people who wouldn't suffer losses. If someone hit them, they would hit back ten times harder. In other words, they were not to be trifled with. Hua Chen smiled faintly, with his hands behind his back, facing the wind and looking into the distance. Forget about the Chang family, even if the Lu family came together, I wouldn't be afraid. I'm more worried about you. Without distinguishing between good and evil, sinking into the secular world without seeking progress, this can easily lead to problems. Hua Chen turned slowly and continued, you're apologizing now, but in my opinion, it's probably because you can't beat me and have no choice. Am I right? Hu Tai was stunned for a moment and couldn't speak for a while. In front of Hu Chen, Hu Tai felt like a transparent person, with no secrets to hide, and even his inner thoughts couldn't escape Hu Chen's eyes. Could this be what a master is like, able to read people's minds? Hu Tai hesitated, not knowing what to say. On the other hand, Hu Tai himself was not bad, 
but some circumstances had caused these people to change their original intentions. I will remember today's words, Mr. Hua, who Tai bowed deeply, and the knot in his heart that had been there for many years was finally untied. Just then, Hua Chen suddenly said, if I guess correctly, the Lu family also has a master named Lu Sipeo. Do you remember how Lu Sipeo, who was once so powerful, was disabled? This sentence was like a bomb that exploded in Hu Tai's heart. Lu Sipeo was one of the first family heads of the Lu family, with exceptional power and influence. He was once considered the successor of the Lu family. What was puzzling was that Lu Sipeo was like a shooting star, coming and going quickly. In the blink of an eye, he disappeared, and no one even knew where he had gone. After Lu Sipeo disappeared for several years, there were rumors in the streets that he had his hands and feet cut off by Hua Chen and was thrown onto the street. Some people didn't believe it, thinking that Lu Sipeo was so fierce, how could he not be a match for an unknown figure like Hua Chen? Even if he couldn't win, with Lu Sipeo's strength, he could still fight Hua Chen to a draw. But no one had expected the situation to turn out like this. Everyone was shocked, and so they sent people to investigate. But this investigation was also taken down by Hua Chen in one move. In an instant, the Lu family was in an uproar. It was on that day that the reputation of the Lu family in Bayan was completely ruined, and they became the target of everyone's scorn. This was because the strongest member of the Lu family was defeated by an ordinary person, and the powerful family instantly lost its confidence, leading to a wave of revenge seekers. The Lu family had originally planned to take advantage of Lu Sipeo's return to lead the family to a second awakening, but no one had expected things to develop to this extent. Due to the special circumstances, after Lu Sipeo had his hands and feet cut off, Hua Chen also disappeared. After several years, this matter was left unresolved. Who would have thought that Hua Chen would now resurface, causing Hu Tai Xin to feel fearful? Hu Tai was a smart man, and he understood better than anyone why Hua Chen was doing this, simply because of the grudge with the Lu family. In a real fight, who would kill the other first? Hu Tai instinctively wanted to see how Hua Chen, the returning king, would make the people of the Lu family react. There were very few people who knew your name at the time, sir, I can keep it a secret for you, Hu Tai said. Hua Chen gave a cold smile and questioned him, what do you think is the most secretive thing in this world? Hu Tai's eyes widened suddenly, then he looked at Cheng Xian and the others lying on the ground, Sir, do you mean to eradicate the roots? I didn't say that, Hua Chen said as he walked towards Hu Tai, there's something I almost forgot. Your real name isn't Hu Tai, and you're not specifically a bodyguard for the Lu family. You come from the Wei family in the north, right? Hu Tai was stunned, and his body suddenly became extremely tense. The Wei family in the north was his closely guarded secret, how did Hua Chen know? Hu Tai took a deep breath, forcibly suppressing his shock, and slowly said, It's something that happened 30 years ago, and the Wei family has already been wiped out. A few lucky survivors are scattered around and can't make any impact. Mr. Hua, I dare to ask, how did you figure it out? Seeing that he couldn't hide it, Hu Tai admitted on the spot, expressing his thoughts. This was also where Hu Tai was smarter than others. At the same time, Hu Tai also realized that the man in front of him, whether in terms of strength or background, far exceeded his imagination. Hua Chen shook his head meaningfully and said, It's not that complicated, you and your son look too much alike, that's all. What? Hu Tai felt as if he had been struck by a thunderbolt. Father and son, that meant, Yin Er isn't dead? Hu Tai couldn't even speak from excitement. He didn't think Hua Chen was lying, it would be meaningless. And for so many years, Hu Tai had always believed that his son had died at the hands of their enemies. But now, Hua Chen had given him hope, and from Hua Chen's tone, he could tell that Yin Er hadn't died at all and might still be alive. But the next thing Hua Chen said instantly plunged Hu Tai into despair. Yin Er also knows that you're not dead. If he could stand in front of you, he would probably kill you the first chance he got. Do you think I'm right? Hua Chen knew these people too well, and he knew the grudges between them, which couldn't be explained in just a few words. But the details were known only to Hu Tai. Hu Tai's emotions instantly collapsed, and he raised his hand to slap himself, painfully saying, It's all my fault, or is Yin Er now? I want to go see him and explain it to him in person. Hua Chen shook his head and remained silent. Although Yin Air was not dead, he had long since left this place, and even left the earth, developing on a planet full of blue, and even had a name, known as the King of Shadows. On that planet, those who could be called kings were superior to tens of thousands, like top-tier experts. Of course, Hu Tai did not know any of this. He was still deeply immersed in self-blame when Hua Chen suddenly stepped forward and made a fierce move, swiftly severing the opponent's neck. With a loud thud, Hu Tai fell to the ground. Strangely, the expression on his face as he lay on the ground was unexpectedly relaxed, as if this death was a relief for him. 
Clapping his hands, Hua Chen called for Wang Deng, collect the hands and feet of these people and send them separately to the Lu family and the Cheng family. I want to see how they react. Generally speaking, severing hands and feet is the greatest humiliation for a martial artist. On one hand, those with severed hands and feet cannot die and can be saved, but they will be severely disabled for the rest of their lives, earning the title of a waste. However, death is a kind of release and even a great honor for martial artists. Yet, without exception, those who fell into Hua Chen's hands all became objects of shame. Just then, the phone on the ground rang. Hua Chen picked it up and saw that it was from Chen Yang. Answering the call, the other side immediately asked anxiously, Hey, son, are you there? What's the situation? Has that person been eliminated? He he, what do you think? Hua Chen replied, It's you. Hua Chen, what have you done to my son? If you dare to touch him, I won't spare you. Chen Yang shouted frantically, Your son should be here soon. As for the second half of what you said, I'm quite looking forward to it. What methods will you use against me? You just wait. Then, as if she had thought of something, Chang Yang asked coldly, Has Hu Tai also died? This useless waste, we've raised him for so long. Useless, good for nothing. That's your business. You'll see your son soon. Don't get too worked up. After saying this, Hua Chen casually threw the phone into the river. Chang Yang was startled and suddenly had a bad feeling. She then tried calling Hu Tai and Chang Xian, but no one answered no matter how many times she called. Chang Yang felt a chill in her heart and sat down on the ground. At this point, Chang Yang was completely helpless, and she even felt a sense of powerlessness. Lu Sanpao was unreliable, so she could only turn to her family for help. Chang Yang quickly put away her phone and hurried out. Everything was arranged properly, and by late evening, Hua Chen saw that these women had nowhere to stay, so he had them sent away separately. It's getting late. Yang Qing, you take teacher Zhou back and rest early, Hua Chen said. Yang Qing exclaimed and blinked, saying, Hua Chen, I know what you want to do. You take teacher Zhou. I don't have time, and I don't want to take her. Hua Chen was a little caught off guard and said, What do you mean? I don't know you yet, but you're so good to teach her Joe. Are you trying to flirt with her? So, tonight's your chance, what's wrong with that? Take her back, and then, well, 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 it's a matter of course. Look at how good I am to you. Yang Qing said with a well-rehearsed tone, her watery eyes fixed on Hua Chen, as if to say, take advantage of the opportunity tonight. The more Hua Chen listened, the more he felt that something was wrong. Yang Qing had been fine, so why had she changed? Or perhaps, Yang Cheng was doing this on purpose, but what was her purpose? Hua Chen, don't think too much. I'm helping you out, nothing else, Yang Cheng said, seeing that the other party couldn't understand, she simply said it out loud, which made Hua Chen even more embarrassed. Yang Qing, what are you saying? Zhou Wan stomped her foot in anger, wondering how she had brought such a woman with her. But despite saying that, Zhou Wan felt a faint sense of melancholy. Since meeting Hua Chen, she had felt for the first time what it meant to be a man. That kind of hot-bloodedness, toughness, and dominance almost made Zhou Wan submit. Perhaps it was because she was getting older, but Zhou Wan felt that she needed a man more and more. She liked the smell of a man, as well as the resolute and brave expression on his face. So much so that after Zhou Wan heard Yang Qing's words, she became inexplicably excited. She really wanted to try it, to let herself burn freely and release all the desires accumulated over the years. But as a teacher, how could she say such things? Hee hee, teacher, I'm going to another school, so I'm not afraid of you anymore. Also, teacher, your waist is so slim, your figure is really good, just like a young girl. Yang Qing didn't hesitate to praise Zhou Wan's figure. Zhou Wan's face instantly turned red, she quickly turned her head and dared not look at Hua Chen. Hua Chen, who was listening on the side, was amused by the situation. Yang Qing really dared to say anything. Zhou Wan's figure was indeed impeccable, with all the right curves and none of the wrong ones, full and round, with an indescribable charm and beauty. No wonder Yang Qing kept praising her figure, it was not an exaggeration at all. Zhou Wan turned her head and inadvertently saw Hua Chen, and their eyes met. Suddenly, Zhou Wan's face turned even redder, so red that she couldn't help but cover her face with her hand. Zhou Wan really couldn't stand a man like Hua Chen. She finally couldn't help it, and boldly walked over, saying, I won't trouble you, I'll have Yang Qing take me later, and um, can I have your phone number? Hua Chen was quite surprised, but just as he was about to answer, Yang Qing suddenly walked over, Teacher Zhou, do you have feelings for Hua Chen? If you do, just say it, I'll create an opportunity for you. Zhou Wan gave Yang Qing a look, and Hua Chen quickly took out Zhou Wan's phone and entered his own phone number, this is my number, if you have any difficulties, remember to find me. Zhou Wan nodded heavily, then asked, Mr. Hua, I have something else I want to ask you, can I work with you? In fact, Zhou Wan had long been disgusted with the school system. 
After seeing Hua Chen, she began to yearn for a carefree and free life. Yes, you can, Hua Chen said. That's good, let's set a time, I'll find you, Zhou Wan said eagerly. How about tomorrow morning, I have time in the morning, Hua Chen said. No, it has to be in the afternoon, I can only go in the afternoon, Yang Qing felt something was wrong and quickly said, Teacher Zhou, are you resigning? Don't, think about it again. Resigning? Hua Chen was also surprised. He couldn't believe that Zhou Wan, a tenured teacher, had a secure job. As long as she didn't make any mistakes, she could work steadily for a lifetime. Why would she resign? Wasn't this a bit hasty? Teacher Zhou, you must be careful, following me, you may not have as good a job as you do now, you should think twice, Hua Chen said. But Zhou Wan just smiled and said indifferently, if a school doesn't prioritize academics and instead focuses on petty things, if the principal and leaders sacrifice students for their own promotion and position, there is no fairness, no justice, and even no so-called ethics and morals. I don't want to stay in such a school. I don't want to be such a teacher. Zhou Wan's emotions became more and more agitated, and her eyes became more and more determined. She was very clear about her situation. On the one hand, Zhou Wan didn't want to be tainted by these people, and on the other hand, after experiencing what happened with Yang Qing, Zhou Wan realized even more that she couldn't stay in the school, otherwise there would be big problems. Years of experience told Zhou Wan that from now on, every step she took would be full of danger. This was also the reason why Zhou Wan made up her mind to leave the school and not be a teacher. Just then, Zhou Wan's phone rang, and when she looked at it, it was a text message from her best friend Chen Yin. Zhou Wan, how have you been lately? I heard that there is a big shot in Bayan, very powerful, do you know about this? Chen Yen and Zhou Wan had known each other since they were young, and their relationship was very good, almost to the point of being inseparable. After graduating from college, Chen Yen chose to inherit the family business and start a company in Bayan to make money. Zhou Wan, on the other hand, took an exam and became a teacher. Although their paths diverged, their relationship remained strong, and they always had plenty to talk about whenever they met. Yes, that person is named Hua Chen, he's a remarkable person. Zhou Wan suddenly fell into deep thought, beginning to consider what to do next. Meanwhile, after settling the remaining people, Hua Chen went alone to see Wang Deng. According to the information Wang Deng provided, several prominent families in Bayan would jointly compete for a mineral project, possibly including the Lu family, the Bai family, and even the Cheng family. When he arrived at the designated location, Wang Deng had been waiting for some time. Everything has been taken care of. Tomorrow afternoon, there will be a large bidding event at the Bayan Convention Center for the Crystal Mineral Project. The Lu family will be the first to participate, but their size alone won't allow them to take on this project. So, I don't know what they're thinking, but they've actually decided to collaborate with the Cheng family. In this area of Bayan, these two families are formidable. In my opinion, the likelihood of either of them securing the mineral project is the highest. Wang Dang said. Hua Chen gave a cold smile. The business of minerals has always been controlled by the military. When did it become their turn? I gave Xia Meng a good student, this time it's a generous gift. Hua Chen glanced at the date and said, when it's time to sign the contract, we'll make a trip. You go back and prepare. After speaking, Hua Chen lay back in a bamboo chair and began to relax with his eyes closed. Wang Dang pondered slightly and sensed Hua Chen's strong sense of mischief. He could have easily destroyed the Bai family with a single blow, but instead, he used a subtle approach to manipulate them, ultimately leading the entire Bai family into an irreparable situation. Meanwhile, in the Bai family's living room, a man and a woman sat facing each other. The woman was charming and beautiful, while the man wore gold-rimmed glasses, exuding a sophisticated yet sinister air. The man's name was Tian Haotian, and the woman's name was Luigi. I heard that Lu Xiao went in, what's going on? Lu Ji asked. I had someone investigate, it was done by Huo Chen. Tian Haotian's eyes flashed with severity, then he continued, I always thought someone was causing trouble in the mineral business, but now it seems it was just a coincidence. Lu Xiao went in on the same day Huo Chen appeared, all because of some minor conflicts. Have the public security team asked? What about Wu Kai, doesn't he give any face? Lu Ji asked. It's not. The public security team underwent a major personnel change, and it was arranged by the provincial capital. After knowing it was Hua Chen's doing, I was shocked. I never expected an unknown person to have such a significant background. Lu Xiao has run into a dead end, there's nothing we can do. The Lu and Cheng families also sent people over, and they were either killed or injured. In my opinion, if we want to release Lu Xiao, we can only find Hua Chen himself. Tian Haotian finished speaking and looked at Lu Ji seriously, wanting to know her thoughts. Lu Ji was furious, her beautiful face flushed with anger, and she said, tomorrow, the focus will be on the project bidding. Once we secure the project, I will personally meet with this Hua Chen. It's outrageous, 
Where did he come from? He truly has no regard for the law, Luigi said indignantly. She didn't care who Hua Chen was, where he came from, or what special background he had. She only knew that this kid wouldn't live long. Historically, anyone who offended the Lu family had a bad ending. All right, then prepare well, I'll accompany you when it's time to sign the contract, Tian Haoyan said. Okay, cousin. Luigi nodded and left. Watching his cousin's retreating figure, Tian Haoyan felt a deep longing. This little girl was becoming more and more attractive, with her looks and figure. It's a pity, he couldn't have her, he must figure out a way, otherwise, it would be hard to bear. On the other side, when Zhou Wan returned home, she told her grandfather Zhou Xin about the matter with Hua Chen. His first reaction was not to resign. Hua Chen was indeed powerful, with an unfathomable background. It would be safe to follow him, but until there were results, a stable job was the most secure option. After discussing it repeatedly, the two of them finally decided to first learn some self-defense techniques from Hua Chen and then consider the matter further. So the two of them quickly tidied up and hurried to Hua Chen's residence. Hua Chen was also punctual, waiting at the designated location early. After the introduction, there was some polite small talk. It was only then that Hua Chen learned that the old man Zhou Xin was also a retired soldier. Hua Chen had always held a deep respect for such people and did not dare to be negligent. After explaining his intentions, Hua Chen immediately taught a set of combat techniques. This technique was extremely fierce, and in close combat, it could guarantee victory, with every punch capable of taking a life. This was the first time Zhou Xin had seen such a technique, and he not only found it dazzling but also grasped the essence of it. I haven't seen this kind of technique in decades. Hua, my friend, I have an awkward request, I wonder if you can agree. Zhou Xin, having seen the world, could tell at a glance the strength of Hua Chen. The Zhou family had no heirs, only a granddaughter, and it would be difficult for her to inherit the family business in the future. Learning a set of combat techniques would at the very least provide self-defense. Hua Chen's refined and practical combat techniques were very suitable for Zhou Wan. Zhou, you're being too polite. Go ahead, what is it? Hua Chen said with a smile. It's nothing much, I just want you to take my granddaughter as your disciple and teach her some combat techniques, Zhou Xin said. Zhou Wan was somewhat unhappy on the side, as she felt that Hua Chen's combat techniques were too ordinary, like doing gymnastics, and it was a waste of time to learn from him. However, since her grandfather had said so, Zhou Wan quietly waited for the other party's answer. Seeing the two of them full of anticipation, Hua Chen suddenly felt deeply uneasy. There was a time when he had also eagerly awaited someone to teach him combat techniques, but after learning them, he found that the disadvantages outweighed the benefits, and the responsibility became even greater. After much thought, Hua Chen politely declined, Zhou, I can teach other things, but not combat techniques. However, I can give you some guidance, Hua Chen added fearing that the other party would be disappointed. Zhou Xin was very disappointed, but he could reluctantly accept it. He gently turned to call Zhou Wan and found her standing quietly, seeming a little unhappy. Grandpa, I think Hua Chen has changed, he's so cold and unfeeling. It's better if he doesn't teach, Zhou Wan pouted, clearly genuinely angry. Hua Chen was a bit at a loss. This little girl was really narrow-minded. Not teaching her was for her own good. His combat techniques were very aggressive, and it was difficult for ordinary people to handle, let alone a weak girl. Humph, you've really changed. You only know a few moves. Let's compare and see who's stronger, Zhou Wan said. Xiao Wan, don't be rude. Zhou Xin reprimanded loudly, looking very displeased. Zhou Wan had always been obedient and well-behaved since she was a child. How could she dare to contradict someone? Moreover, she was just an ordinary woman. What could she compare with? Zhou Xin knew that Hua Chen was powerful and couldn't figure out his temper for the time being. If Zhou Wan said something like that, what would he do if he got angry? Unexpectedly, Hua Chen didn't take it to heart at all. He looked at Zhou Wan with interest and said with a smile, I heard from Yang Qing that you spent some time in the school's martial arts club. All right, let's exchange a few moves to satisfy you. Hua Chen made his move. Zhou Wan's eyes lit up, and she walked over in big strides. Seeing that Hua Chen was not making any moves, Zhou Wan asked, Aren't you ready yet? The essence of martial arts is to adapt to changes. If you are always prepared, then you will always be at a disadvantage, Hua Chen said lightly. You're the only one who can say that. Zhou Wan's face turned red, and she lifted her foot to kick forward. Hua Chen then slightly turned to the side and extended his right hand forward. Swish! A sharp breath shot out, grazing the black hair beside Zhou Wan's ear. Zhou Wan suddenly stopped, and Zhou Xin was even more shocked, looking ahead in fear. It wasn't until the strand of hair fell to the ground that Zhou Wan and Zhou Xin reacted. Hua Chen was using internal energy to silently and deadly subdue the opponent. 
What's even more terrifying is that Hua Chen's use of this internal energy is extremely precise. If there is even a slight deviation, Zhou Wan would be finished. He really is a master. I've found the right person. Zhou Jin was completely shocked by the scene before him, his face filled with fear. Zhou Wan was also speechless, completely impressed by Hua Chen's strength. Alright, that's it for today. I'll have Wang Deng from the public security team contact you later to teach you the basic moves. I have something else to do, so I'll leave first. Hua Chen clapped his hands and left. Hua Chen met with Wang Deng, and then arrived early at the bidding site. When they got off the car, many dignitaries had already arrived. These people stood outside the lawn, dressed in suits and leather shoes, chatting and laughing. Most of them were successful young people. In stark contrast was Hua Chen. He was in a hurry and only wore a sports jacket, looking too casual, almost like a janitor here. However, Hua Chen didn't mind. He stood there looking around, with a curious expression that easily made the people here think he was inexperienced. Just then, a man named Wang Wei ran over. Mr. Hua, you're here, this way please. Wang Wei was a staff member here, specifically responsible for welcoming guests. Although Hua Chen and a few others were on the list, he was a new face, which puzzled Wang Wei. Moreover, the starting point for the mineral project here was 5 billion, and the net worth of the people present was tens or hundreds of times that figure, with three question marks written behind Hua Chen's name. Could it be that Hua Chen's net worth is even higher than these people? If that's the case, it's better to stick with Hua Chen in the future. Hua Chen looked around and didn't see the person he wanted to meet. He turned to Wang Deng and asked, Where is he? Hasn't he arrived yet? Wang Deng shook his head, He's on his way and will be here soon. Okay, let's go inside and wait. Hua Chen nodded and walked inside. Just as they entered the hall, a man with gold-rimmed glasses hurriedly walked in with a group of people. It's Tian Houtian. Someone recognized him at a glance, very surprised. Tian Houtian and Luigi belonged to the same Lu family and were very powerful. I heard that this project has already been decided, it's between the Lu family and the Bai family, the rest are just going through the motions, it's all for show. That's what they say, but many big shots have also come, they also want to compete. The mineral business is a big piece of meat, whoever gets it will be set for generations. The crowd whispered, wondering who the ultimate winner here would be. Tian Houtian walked quietly forward and happened to see Hua Chen, his face slightly changed, secretly saying, this kid dares to come. Hua Chen went over to greet him openly. Hello, Mr. Tian. The arrogant Tian Houtian nodded slightly, looking at Hua Chen, who had caused quite a stir in the Lu family. Heroes emerge from the young, you are younger than I thought. Tian Houtian said. Hua Chen nodded, thanks to you, I will be even younger in the future. The two chatted casually, and remembered each other. The people nearby were puzzled and curious, strange, that's Mr. Tian, do they know each other? It looks like they're quite familiar, but I've never seen this person before. The crowd looked at Hua Chen curiously, but couldn't remember who he was. Oh, by the way, it's getting colder, aren't you going to see your brother? Hua Chen suddenly asked, and Tian Houtian's face instantly turned dark. Mr. Tian, it's about to start, the female secretary came over and reminded him softly. Tian Houtian gave Hua Chen a fierce look, called Wang Wei, and said coldly, are all the people who are coming in confirmed? Don't let any trash in. Wang Wei was stunned, looked down at Hua Chen, and looked embarrassed. It seems that Tian Houtian is blaming himself for not being strict enough and letting in some unscrupulous people. Mr. Hua. Wang Wei wanted to explain and ease the atmosphere, but unexpectedly Hua Chen was exceptionally generous and said with a smile, it's okay, let's go in. Wang Wei breathed a sigh of relief and also felt the grace and connotation in Hua Chen. Respected guests, good afternoon. I am the host of this bidding, Chen Jing. Next, I will introduce pancreatic cancer to everyone. The host briefly announced the discipline of the venue and then asked for the ore samples to be presented and introduced one by one. Then came the most important bidding section. Now, the bidding begins. As soon as the voice fell, someone immediately bid, I bid 550 million, 590 million, 600 million. At this time, a person holding a Xinhua real estate sign walked out and shouted loudly, I bid 6 billion. Everyone was shocked. 6 billion in one go, it seems that Xinhua real estate is determined to win this project. There was a moment of silence in the venue, then someone shouted, I bid 8 billion. Everyone was surprised again and turned to look, and it was Tian Houtian who made the bid. Tian Houtian raised his legs and held up the sign, his face calm and unruffled. 8 billion was already the maximum price for this project, going higher would be a bit inflated. After all, this project still has a piece of vacant land, and it is unknown whether minerals can be extracted. 
If not, this land can only be used for commercial development, and its value is much lower compared to minerals. The people from Xinhua Real Estate have set their sights on this land, planning to develop real estate, build high-end residential areas, and then sell at a high price. When someone shouted 8 billion, they hesitated for a moment, then raised the sign, 8 billion 100 million. The increase was 100 million from the last bid, indicating that Xinhua Real Estate was also approaching its limit. 8 billion 600 million. This time it was Tian Haoqian again, it seemed that he would not give up on this project. The bidding had reached such a level that no one else was willing to continue, so everyone looked at Xinhua Real Estate, waiting to see if they would continue. However, this time, Xinhua Real Estate did not have the courage to raise the sign again. Their limit was 8 billion, the extra 100 million was already their entire worth, and there was no need to continue. Seeing the silence in the venue, Chen Jing smiled and said, Is there no one else bidding? It was quiet below not even a discussion. Okay, I announced that the Lu Group, represented by Tian Haotian, bids 8 billion 600 million. 8 billion 600 million once. 8 billion 600 million twice. Chen Jing's voice became more and more excited, and the gavel in her hand also rose higher. Not only that, everyone in the venue also held their breath, waiting for Chen Jing to announce this epic-making bidding. Tian Haotian also raised his phone, ready to capture the moment when Chen Jing struck the gavel. Oh, no one else bidding? I bid 10 billion. Just then, Huo Chen lazily said, while also complaining to Wang Deng, why didn't you remind me? Wang Deng smiled dryly, didn't you say that no matter what others bid, we will just wrap it up? Who knew they would end so quickly? What? Everyone was shocked at once. Even Tian Haotian, who was about to take a photo, was so shocked that he almost dropped his phone. What's going on? Someone bid 10 billion. My goodness, am I hearing it right? They were just waiting to wrap it up, they didn't care about how much you bid. Oh my, this is a big shot. People started to whisper, speculating one after another, who this person was and why they had never been seen before. The host also looked at Hua Chun in surprise, as if to say, are you joking? Bidding 10 billion for this project, the profit is already very low, and with some uncontrollable factors, it's hard to say if the cost can be recovered. At this point, anyone with insight could see that Hua Chen was just being stubborn and didn't really want this mineral project. Host, do you want me to say it again? Huo Chen asked. Chen Jing just reacted and quickly held the wooden hammer in his hand, saying to the crowd, 10 billion, anyone else? The people below instantly boiled, and no one dared to follow. Tian Haotian looked incredulous, and his secretary quickly came over to ask, Tian, should we follow? Or should we tell Lu Yajing about the situation at the venue? Once it exceeds 10 billion, it's not something Tian Haotian can decide. Wait. Tian Haotian stopped the secretary. He quickly realized that Huo Chen had been against the Lu family from the beginning, and now suddenly coming to the auction, he knew without thinking that it was to stop his bidding. Saying he would offer 10 billion, but Tian Haotian had reason to believe that Huo Chen didn't have that much money. Auctions can be bid higher, but without money, the project will be abandoned. At most, another auction will be held, which would only disgust the Lu family and the Bai family, with no other meaning. So Tian Haotian concluded that the other party was here to cause trouble and he simply didn't have that much money. Huo Chen, you're really a jerk. Unfortunately, in this bidding game, I, Tian Haotian, am better than you. Host, I request a suspension of the auction and a re-examination of the assets of the bidders. Tian Haotian stood up instantly and then looked coldly at Huo Chen. You're quite arrogant, well, I'll let everyone see what level you're at. Everyone also realized, bidding 10 billion for this project itself has little profit. Business people don't do losing deals, and Hu Chen's only purpose in doing this is to cause trouble. It's really despicable to cause trouble to this extent. So that's how it is. I knew there couldn't be someone bidding 10 billion. Host, I also request a re-examination of the assets. Host, I request the organizers to thoroughly investigate the bidders, those who are acting recklessly, and hand them all over to the police. Hurry up. Some people were already feeling very uncomfortable for not being able to bid, and now they had the perfect outlet to vent their anger at Hu Chen. So many people directed their anger towards Hu Chen. Seeing everyone's angry expressions, Tian Haotian looked pleased. You reap what you sow, Hu Chen, your game ends here today, Tian Haotian said coldly. For a moment, Hu Chen became the target of public criticism, and people began to condemn him. Seeing everyone's angry expressions, Hu Chen smiled faintly and said to Wang Deng, when you came in, didn't they check your assets? Wang Deng was stunned, I just registered. They didn't check my assets. After speaking, Wang Dang leaned close to Wu Chen's ear and whispered, Um, we don't have that much money. I was about to call you brother. If you want to play, we can do it, but let's not continue. 
Wang Deng began to worry that Huo Chen might have gone too far. But what puzzled Wang Deng was that Huo Chen showed no signs of backing down and continued to look ahead firmly. Wang Ding suddenly panicked and hurriedly said, Huo Chen, I called you sir, can we not play like this? This is the largest bidding place in Bayan, and everyone who comes here has a reputation. If the assets are not verified, we will lose face. Huo Chen took a sip of tea, turned his head slowly, and said nonchalantly, a person who does big things is not afraid in times of crisis. Why are you so flustered in such a small situation? Keep calm and don't be so scared. Wang Deng's expression instantly froze. Well, it's already at this point, and he's still so composed. If he doesn't have the money, he might be kicked out by the security here, and he might even face legal sanctions. Wang Deng knew Huo Chen to some extent and knew that Huo Chen had a huge amount of wealth. But to come up with 10 billion or even more in one go, Huo Chen probably couldn't do it. Isn't that just embarrassing himself? Wang Deng suddenly became anxious and even started thinking of ways to raise money. On the other hand, although Tian Haotian couldn't see any change in Huo Chen's face, he noticed that his entourage looked flustered, and he immediately understood that Huo Chen was pretending and was actually very anxious. Hurry up and verify the assets, organizers, why are you so slow? Tian Haotian urged incessantly, wanting to expose this pretentious madman on the spot. What's the rush? Someone will come to cooperate with you, Huo Chen still remained calm and composed. Tian Haotian's face twisted, and he sneered, you just delay them for me. Money is not something you can delay, especially a huge sum, 10 billion. I don't believe you can conjure it up. I bet you don't have it at all. Security, come and kick these bastards out. After saying this, several security guards emerged from behind Tian Haotian. They all had the same stature and attire, clearly Tian Haotian's men. Huo Chen slowly stood up, stretched lazily, and said, what if I can conjure up 10 billion? Upon hearing this, Tian Haotian burst into laughter, ha, huh, are you kidding me? I know you too well. If you can produce 10 billion, I'll double it for you. The onlookers were amazed and some even started to anticipate the continuation of the confrontation between the two. Who's offering to double it? Just then, a loud voice came from outside the door. Everyone quickly turned their heads to see that it was He Chunfong, the chairman of the Haiwan group. He Chunfong lived up to his name, walking gracefully with a face full of spring breeze, sporting white hair but showing no signs of aging, exuding an air of grandeur that was no different from a young man. Tian Haotian was suddenly taken aback and asked, who is it? However, upon seeing He Chunfong, Tian Haotian's expression instantly changed. He Chunfong monopolized the entire construction materials industry in Bayan and was a true tycoon with several unicorn enterprises under his belt, his wealth immeasurable. Look, it's He Chunfong from the Haiwan Group. It's Mr. He, his business spans across Bayan, and he has a presence in the whole country. Why is he here in Bayan now? This is a big shot. Could it be that he's interested in our place? The crowd sighed in admiration, but more so in envy. Some people went up to him directly, taking the initiative to show their respect. Mr. He, hello, I'm from Bayon Real Estate. Mr. He, hello, I sell health products, you must have seen my products. Mr. He, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Everyone present was a social elite, and upon meeting such a big shot, they all wanted to establish a relationship with him. However, Tian Haotian remained standing quietly in his place. In the past, he would have gone up to network, but unfortunately, he sensed an imperceptible scent. As a result, the entire hall was crowded with people, leaving only Huo Chan and Tian Haotian sitting in their original positions. This scene seemed particularly awkward. Wang Wei, who was among the crowd, was the most nervous. He had heard clearly the tone in which Yi Chunfong spoke when he entered, clearly indicating that he was siding with Huo Chan. Could it be that the renowned He Chunfong knew Wu Chen? Wang Wei dared not think further. He Chunfong, who had a presence across the country, came to this small place in Bayan to support Wu Chen. This was simply unbelievable. After a brief contemplation, Tian Haotian felt that he couldn't just sit and wait for his doom. He called for Uncle Bai from the Bai family and, with a smile on his face, walked over to He Chunfong. Regardless of whether it was intentional or not, in such a situation, everyone cared about their reputation. Even if it was a deliberate move against him, it wouldn't be too embarrassing if He Chunfong was given enough face. This was where Tian Haotian excelled. Mr. He, hello, I'm Tian Haotian from the Lu Group. Luigi is my sister, and I. Before he could finish his sentence, He Chunfong immediately interrupted, Am I familiar with you? Tian Haotian was stunned and suddenly found himself at a loss for words. Then, He Chunfong used his hand to push Tian Haotian aside and impatiently said, Please make way. These two sentences were like two slaps, fiercely hitting Tian Haotian's face. He felt a burning sensation on his entire face. 
Everyone was still waiting to see how the two would interact, but this unexpected situation left them in disbelief. Tian Haokian, despite being from the Lu family, could be neglected, but he couldn't be underestimated. If he Chunfeng acted this way from the start, it would let the Lu family know what he was thinking. Just then, he Chunfeng noticed Hua Chen sitting alone in the center of the hall. Everyone followed He Chunfeng's gaze and saw Hua Chen still sitting in place, showing no intention of getting up to greet them. My goodness, the big shots are all here, and this kid doesn't move? Look at this clueless guy, still shouting prices here, really unbelievable, how can there be such a person? I can't believe it, this kind of person is beyond help. This person is so rude, we'll have the security kick him out later. People pointed and whispered at Hua Chen, all waiting for Yi Chunfeng to get angry and then give Hua Chen a good lesson. But at that moment, Yi Chunfeng suddenly quickened his pace, swiftly walked up to Hua Chen, slightly bowed, and respectfully said, Mr. Hua, I've met Mr. Hua and Mr. Wang. No need, Hua Chen said flatly. Everyone was surprised at this. The famous Yi Chunfeng greeted Hua Chen? Why? Who exactly is Hua Chen? People were once again shocked by this sudden change, but soon these people reacted. Anyone who could be greeted by He Chunfeng must be extraordinary. So those who looked down on Hua Chen changed their tune, one by one approaching and saying, So you know each other, come, come, have a seat, let me wipe the chair for you. Hua Chen naturally ignored these people, glanced at He Chunfeng, and asked, Mister, He, this time, I'll trouble you. He Chunfeng smiled faintly, just call me Xiao Feng, I can't bear the title of Mister. Despite Yi Chuanfeng's usual arrogance and vigor, when he saw Hua Chen, he suddenly became respectful, which was truly unexpected. Hua Chen didn't pay attention to these details, he patted Wang Wei's shoulder and said, This is Wang Wei, without him, I might not be able to participate in this bidding. He's a good person, take care of him in the future. He Chunfeng immediately understood and called his secretary over, saying, Register this person's information and arrange an important position for him later. The secretary nodded and quickly went to inquire about Wang Wei's situation. Wang Wei was overjoyed, never expecting to turn things around so quickly. The Hai Wang group was a place that many people dreamed of going to. High salary, good benefits, and most importantly, family members could also work there. In a small family, if someone went to the Hai Wang group, the whole family would benefit. When registering his ID, Wang Wei's eyes were filled with tears of excitement. Thank you, Mr. Huo, for your guidance. Wang Wei was very grateful shaking hands with the other party non-stop. But to outsiders, this scene had a different meaning. Especially for Tian Haotian, he felt a little relieved and his expression became more natural. He Chunfeng came for Hua Chen, it had nothing to do with him. At most, Hua Chen knew He Chunfeng, and the two had no business dealings, so even if Hua Chen was impressive, he was still beneath him, and it would be easy to deal with him. Then, Hua Chen looked at Tian Haotian, his eyes gradually becoming cold, you said double? Fine, I'll give you a month, 20 billion. If you can't come up with it, don't stay in Bayan. Tian Haotian was shocked and looked up at Hua Chen. Mr. Hua is talking to you, do you hear me? He Chunfeng loudly questioned, his voice unusually harsh. Yes, I know. In fact, Tian Haotian wanted to ask about the verification of funds, but now it seemed unnecessary. He Chunfeng was obviously with Hua Chen, so even if Hua Chen's assets were not enough, He Chunfeng would still contribute. So what was the point of verifying the funds? But in this way, Tian Haotian was at a disadvantage. Hand over 20 billion. My goodness, this is worse than killing me. Tian Haotian looked pained, tears flowing into his stomach. When Hua Chen and the others walked away, Tian Haotian's assistants hurried over, Mr. Tian, you don't have to worry, he said 20 billion, I think it's just a scare tactic. That's right, he suddenly climbed up to such a big figure, everyone wants to show off a bit, just leaving a tough word when leaving, don't take it seriously. Don't be fooled by Hua Chen's impressive appearance, he's just a small fry. The little people have their own sorrows, don't take it seriously. Several assistants kept comforting Tian Haotian, and Tian Haotian gradually came to his senses. They were right, it was just a joke, it was unrealistic to take out 2 billion by himself. It was also meaningless. Uncle Bai also echoed, they are right, it's just a joke, don't take it seriously. Hua Chen is just here to discuss people, what can he do? He's useless. Tian Haotian let out a long sigh, opened his palms, used his thumbs to massage his temples, and said, It's really troublesome, I haven't offended He Chunfeng anyway. He won't come to target me specifically. If the Hai Wang group is really interested in the Your project, let them take it. After that, Tian Haotian called his secretary and said, You still need to check for me, see if Hua Chen has any relationship with He Chunfeng. Tian Haotian didn't want to fight an unprepared battle, so he left a hand and had someone go investigate first. His current mood was as uncomfortable as eating shit. 
The ore and land were within reach, but suddenly they were disrupted by an unknown person. What's even more infuriating is that he Chun Feng appeared out of nowhere, it's really a big deal. After thinking about it, Tian Haotian decided to report this news to Lu Yajing. At this point, it was no longer something he, Tian Haotian, could handle alone. But when Lu Yajing's phone was dialed, no one answered. Damn it, where is everyone? Tian Haotian angrily threw the phone and sat on the ground cursing. In another hour, Lu Yajing was going to attend the press conference as the image spokesperson. If she suddenly couldn't be reached, would there be a problem? The more Tian Haotian thought about it, the more he felt that something was wrong, so he decided not to stay any longer and continued to walk towards the venue. On the other hand, Hua Chen was pulling Wang Deng, excitedly saying, let's go, let's go give a gift. After that, the two of them got into the prepared Mercedes-Benz car. On the other side, Hua Bingqing, who was working, was called out by Li Zhou. At 4 o'clock in the afternoon, there is the press conference for Lu Guiyuan's spokesperson. I'll take you to see it. Let's go have some fun. Li Zhou took out two tickets and said that these two tickets were not easy to come by. Hua Bingqing pointed behind her, I still have to work, I can't go. Just ask for leave, Lu Guiyuan is looking for a spokesperson for the first time, there won't be another chance. Li Zhou kept urging, arousing Hua Bingqing's curiosity. After some hesitation, Hua Bingqing bit her lip and said, well, I still don't want to go. In fact, Hua Bingqing had heard at the company that this time the spokesperson was Lu Ji from the Lu family. Lu Ji had a certain relationship with Lu Xiao, so she didn't want to see her, after all, there was a grudge between Hua Chen and the Lu family, it was not appropriate to meet in such a situation. Bing Qing, actually everything has changed since Hua Chen came back, I feel like you've changed too. It's best to go out and take a walk, relax, what's the harm? Li Zhou comforted Hua Bingqing, wanting her to let go of her prejudices. Hua Bingqing had no choice but to nod in agreement. Don't think too much, I'll accompany you. Hua Bingqing finally chose to compromise. However, what she didn't know was that Li Zhou had secretly designed a plan, which was actually aimed at Hua Chen. Of course, that's another story. The Osman Hotel is the highest class hotel in Bayan City, and it's the only one. Normally, only high-ranking officials and tycoons come here. This time, it was all booked by Lu Guiyuan for the purpose of holding this press conference for the spokesperson. Hua Chen and Wang Dang arrived first. When they got out of the car, they could see Lu Ji from a distance. Lu Ji was truly a golden flower of the Lu family, very beautiful. Among the hundreds of people, she stood out and was the most beautiful. Many men looked at Lu Ji with deep affection, their eyes full of admiration. Such a grand venue, Bayan has indeed been restless these past few days. Wang Deng couldn't help but feel a sense of emotion. He felt that Bayan was lifeless before, but recently, he didn't know what had happened. All the big shots from various parties had come over, which was truly surprising. Hua Chen straightened his collar and walked slowly into the lobby. As he entered the main hall, he immediately saw a huge red banner with the words Image Ambassador written on it. Below the words was a cold and elegant woman holding a folding fan, walking lightly but without a face. This was reserved for the final winner. After the ambassador was selected, her face would be placed on it, and then it would be remotely controlled. Hua Chen looked at the poster and clicked his tongue, saying, Who designed this? It's really strange. However, Hua Chen quickly felt at ease. Luigi had participated in the competition in order to achieve a successful bid, with the aim of bringing double happiness to the Lu family. It was a pity that the bidding had failed. If Luigi found out, what would she think? He he, what if the image ambassador is replaced? Hua Chen muttered to himself, becoming even more eager for the competition. Just as Hua Chen was lost in thought, a woman walked in from outside. This woman looked very capable. Upon entering, she didn't even greet anyone, immediately directing people to start working. You, move that box over there. And you, the light above is a bit crooked, go adjust it. Be careful when cleaning the windows, don't fall. The woman spoke a few simple sentences, and the scene immediately became orderly. She herself took out a precision instrument and began measuring something on the side. The woman was very careful with the instrument, handling it delicately and even asking people to move away when she saw someone approaching. Hua Chen was currently focused on the poster, and the woman immediately said, Hey, mister, could you please move aside? Hua Chen turned to look at the woman, but didn't move at all showing no intention of giving way. You can walk around from the side, right? Hua Chen said with a smile. The woman furrowed her brows, and her expression instantly turned cold. Sorry, I'm moving things and can't turn. I'm Miss Luigi's assistant. My name is Su Jia. Can you please help me move this instrument over there? Su Jia said politely, while also revealing her identity, hoping that Hua Chen would cooperate. Upon hearing that she was Luigi's assistant, 
Huo Chen immediately didn't want to give way, and said coldly, no. Su Jia was immediately angered. Hey, who do you think you are? Because Su Jia was Lu Ji's assistant, before meeting Huo Chen, everyone had shown her great respect, even flattering and fawning over her, hoping to get to know Lu Ji through Su Jia and then get a good job. Su Jia also enjoyed the feeling of being pursued by thousands of people. Over time, she naturally became bossy. Who knew that after meeting Huo Chen, he repeatedly refused her. Su Jia even felt that she had misheard. Are you sure you won't let me through? Su Jia repeated, wanting to tell Huo Chen to give him another chance and not to be ungrateful. Then, Su Jia looked at Huo Chen arrogantly, waiting for him to give way. This was the first time Huo Chen had encountered such a strange woman, and he said coldly, No, do I need to repeat myself? Su Jia was instantly furious. How dare you? Do you know who I am? I am Luigi's assistant. How dare you speak to me like this? Su Jia was furious. Not respecting her was more unbearable than taking her life. Huo Chen looked at this hot-tempered person and said calmly, Oh, you're Luigi's assistant. I'm sorry, my bad. Su Jia felt like she was being choked and said, Just one apology? Do you think I'm easy to bully? Huo Chen shook his head and said calmly, Well, did you hear wrong? I'm apologizing to myself. I shouldn't have bothered with a bully like you. Whom? You. Su Jia felt like she was about to explode. She angrily shouted, Hey, stop right there. Who do you think you are? How dare you insult me like this? Su Jia put down the things in her hands and quickly caught up. She had never been insulted like this in her life. Su Jia is Luigi's assistant after all, and is considered a figure of some importance. Now, being scolded by Hua Chen, Su Jia's mindset instantly collapsed. Regardless of her own thoughts, she lifted her foot and chased after him. Hua Chen had more important matters to attend to, so he continued walking forward, completely ignoring Su Jia. This was even more humiliating for Su Jia. Bastard, you wait for me. After catching up, Su Jia cursed loudly at Hua Chen, and then the elevator door next to them opened. Su Jia pulled out the person inside and quickly entered, continuing to chase after Hua Chen. The two finally stopped on the fifth floor. The elevator door opened, and Su Jia quickly stood in front of Hua Chen, blocking him with her body. This is outrageous, you must apologize to me. Right now. Su Jia had initially felt good about herself, entering with great force, and now, even after catching up to Hua Chen, she continued to yell at him. Hua Chen was getting a little impatient and frowned, saying, really annoying, move aside. Yell at me? If you don't kneel down and apologize to me today, I won't let you off. Su Jia gritted her teeth, ready to go all out. Slap. Hua Chen raised his hand and slapped Su Jia, rendering her speechless. Move aside, can you? Hua Chen asked. You. You hit me. Su Jia covered her face, tears streaming down. Do you know who I am? How dare you hit me like this? Su Jia cried and tried to assert her identity, as if this was her last bit of stubbornness. Slap. Hua Chen slapped her again, saying coldly, You are Luigi's assistant, I'm tired of hearing about it. Are you done? Move aside, I have things to do. At this point, a crowd had gathered in the hallway, including security guards, cleaners, and other staff, all staring at Su Jia, especially at the red handprints on her face. My goodness, who is this? Su Jia dared to hit her, she's done for. Su Jia is Luigi's assistant, and she's been beaten into a pig's head. Isn't this indirectly hitting Luigi? This kid is too crazy, but she's venting for us. When you see injustice, you should speak up. It would have been better if this kid had come earlier. The crowd discussed, initially surprised, but now taking Hua Chen's side. Su Jia was usually so hateful, but the people here were afraid of the people behind her and didn't dare to act. Most importantly, this was the venue for the event, and they couldn't afford to have fights breaking out. Just then, the elevator door next to them opened. Ding! With a crisp sound, a well-dressed young man walked out. Su Jia, what are you doing here? I've been looking for you everywhere. Let's go. The man said. Su Jia was stunned, turned to look at the man, and burst into tears. Wang Xiao, you finally came. Someone hit me and my face is swollen. Su Jia cried as she spoke. Wang Bo finally noticed that half of Su Jia's face was swollen, looking like a pig's head. Without saying a word, he hugged Su Jia and gently patted her back, comforting her. In fact, when Su Jia lay in Wang Bo's arms, his heart was excited. For so many years, Wang Bo had been pursuing Su Jia, but she had never let him touch her. Now, she had been beaten and had even laid in his arms, acting coquettish. Holding the soft, fragrant Su Jia, Wang Bo felt ecstatic, wishing that the stranger in front of him would hit her a few more times, preferably enough to make Su Jia go to bed with him. But Wang Bo quickly realized that this was a great opportunity to be a hero and save Su Jia from Huo Chen. If he could rescue Su Jia from Huo Chen, 
then the chances of being together in the future would be very high. Wang Bo hugged Su Jie tightly, raised his head, and shouted loudly, This is outrageous, do you know who he is? You're asking for trouble, apologize to me now. Huo Chen was stunned, looking at the other person as if he were a fool. He regretted not bringing a few thugs with him. That way, he wouldn't have had to act himself. Move aside. Huo Chen really didn't want to take action. He gently said a sentence, and his voice sounded like thunder, suddenly exploding in Wang Bo's mind. Wang Bo was just an ordinary person, and had never encountered such a phenomenon before. He only felt half of his head buzzing with pain, as if it was about to explode at any moment. Wang Bo reacted quickly, letting go of his hand, and Su Jia fell to the ground with a painful cry. But at this moment, Wang Bo seemed to have changed, staring blankly ahead, unmoved by Su Jia's cries. Unbeknownst to Su Jia, Wang Bo was overwhelmed by the pain caused by Hua Chen's voice, looking dazed and almost on the verge of fainting at any moment. Su Jia had intended to use Wang Bo's help to deal with Hua Chen, but who knew he was useless, and after being scolded by Hua Chen, he became foolish? What's even more absurd is that he didn't even bother to help himself up after falling to the ground? Useless waste, good for nothing. Su Jia angrily scolded, finally pulling Wang Bo out of his daze. Ah, what? What just happened? Why are you lying on the ground? Let me help you up. Wang Bo reached out to help, but Su Jia interrupted and cursed, storming out angrily. Wang Bo was puzzled. She was gentle and lovely just a second ago, like a little bird, but now she had suddenly changed? Like a shrew. Who could stand that? Glancing in the direction where Huo Chen had disappeared, Wang Bo clenched her fists. You little brat, you've ruined my good mood, I won't let you get away with it. A hint of gloom flashed across Wang Bo's face. On the other side, Huo Chen looked around the room and did not find the main signing venue. Seeing someone nearby, he asked, Excuse me, where is the main signing venue? The signing is for good luck, on the seventh floor, lucky seven. The cleaning lady said. Huo Chen thanked her and headed for the elevator. As soon as he left, Su Jia and a few others caught up. Hey, where did the guy in sportswear just go? Su Jia asked loudly. The cleaning lady, seeing it was Su Jia, suddenly felt down and pointed to the elevator with her mouth. He went in, I don't know where he's going. Useless. Su Jia cursed, quickly checked the elevator, and found that Huo Chen had gone to the seventh floor. That was where Luigi was signing, a place where various leaders and big shots were meeting. How could they let this jerk in? Strong possessiveness made Su Jie furious, and she slapped the elevator and quickly chased after Huo Chen. On the seventh floor, Huo Chen had already walked out of the elevator. In his sight was a carefully decorated small living room, with few people inside, mostly top journalists, bosses, and local government representatives. The most numerous were the rich second generation of Bayan, who rarely appeared in public, but were now gathered together, chatting about various social relationships. Sir, please sign here. A crisp voice woke Huo Chen, who was familiar with the venue, and Su Jia and the others also arrived. Wait. Su Jia, out of breath, suddenly thought of something, her eyes lit up, and she immediately said, everyone who can come here has an invitation, do you have one? Huo Chen turned to look, and it was that true Su Jia again. Su Jia was out of breath, making her already red face even redder. Wang Bo followed closely behind, thinking that this was an opportunity. Just now, after being scolded by Huo Chen, she still hadn't fully recovered and was looking for a chance to vent her anger, but couldn't find a reason. Now, Su Jia wanted to check his invitation, this kid looked very ordinary, the kind you could find a lot of on the street, how could he possibly have an invitation? Moreover, those with invitations were already seated here, if Hua Chen really had one, he wouldn't be wandering around downstairs. Wang Bo was overjoyed, feeling an inexplicable sense of confidence, and walked up to Hua Chen and asked, Hey, I'm talking to you, do you have an invitation? If not, you better leave now. Poor people are not welcome here. The rich second generation in Bayan is very fixed. It's always the same few people coming and going. Wang Bo knows almost all of them, but he doesn't recognize this Hua Chen no matter how he looks at it. It's obvious that he was introduced by someone. These people are nameless and faceless, they just show up at these events, their pockets are cleaner than their faces, not to mention any invitation letters. Hua Chen smiled faintly and said, What a lack of education. Then he raised his hand and slapped Wang Bo. Bang! Wang Bo was spun around in place. You, you hit me. Wang Bo covered his face. Hey, over here, Hu Chen shouted, and only then did Wang Bo turn around, looking at Hu Chen with fear and shouting, he hit me, he hit me, security, come out quickly. Wang Bo's shout alarmed many people, and several security guards who were maintaining order at the door hurried in. They immediately recognized Wang Bo as the son of Bayan's largest catering tycoon, and people usually called him young master Wang. He was generous and loyal, but a bit arrogant at times, 
with no other major faults. How could he have been beaten up like this? Young Master Wang, what happened? Several security guards immediately approached and inquired about Wang Bo's situation, some even kindly fanned him to ease his pain. Ouch! It hurts! Stop fanning me! Get this kid out of here, he doesn't have an invitation! Wang Bo gritted his teeth and gestured to the security guards. The security guards looked at Hua Chen, confirmed that he was a stranger, and then walked over to surround him. Wang Bo had been pampered since childhood and had never experienced this kind of humiliation. He whispered to the security guards, this kid has no money and no background, you can rest assured to deal with him. Damn, beat him up as much as you can, I'll reward you handsomely if you break his limbs. The security guards nodded, cracked their knuckles, and slowly walked towards Hua Chen. These security guards were usually useless, their only hobby was to bully the weak. Now, hearing that Hua Chen had no background and that they could get paid for beating him up, they were extremely happy. But at that moment, two figures flashed outside the door. Hua Chen, what are you doing here? Hua Chen turned to look, and the people who came in were Hua Bingqing and Li Zhou. Hua Bingqing looked worried, afraid that Hua Chen would get into trouble. Li Zhou, on the other hand, looked very pleased, watching Hua Chen with great interest. It seemed that Li Zhou had come to watch the show. At this moment, Li Zhou was probably thinking that Hua Chen had no power or influence, but he dared to challenge the rich kids. To put it nicely, he was overestimating himself, but in harsher terms, he was foolish and downright ridiculous. Li Zhou understood these privileged children very well, each one of them had their own means. If Hua Chen confronted them head on, he would only end up in a sorry state. If he resorted to violence as he used to, the consequences would be even more unimaginable. At the same time, Hua Bingqing also realized this and hurriedly went up to dissuade Hua Chen. Hua Chen, don't be impulsive. Let's talk it out. Li Zhou stood far away, without making any move. She was very curious why Hua Chen had come here. This was where Lu Ji was competing, and the attendees were all high-ranking officials and dignitaries. Hua Chen had nothing to do with either, so what was the point of coming here? Everyone looked at Li Zhou and found out that she was the daughter of Bayan's largest medicinal herb tycoon. Their expressions immediately became flattering and they all went up to pay their respects. Compared to Hua Chen, Li Zhou was much more famous, and naturally received respect wherever she went. Hua Bingqing hurried over and whispered, Li Zhou, these people are treating you well. Please say something to let Hua Chen leave, okay? Hua Bingqing had never spoken to Li Zhou in this manner before, but for the sake of Hua Chen, she was willing to sacrifice her dignity and implore Li Zhou to help Hua Chen. Moreover, all the attendees were the second generation of various families, with explosive tempers. If they provoked each other, it would be bad for everyone. However, Li Zhou just shook her head and said helplessly, Bing Qing, didn't you see just now? Huo Chen slapped someone. That person cares about his reputation. What's the difference between slapping him and killing him? A man lives his whole life for his reputation. Huo Chen has embarrassed someone so much that they could have killed him. What's the point of me speaking? Hearing Li Zhou's words, Huo Bingqing's eyes suddenly dimmed. Li Zhou's words made sense, but to Huo Bingqing, it seemed like he didn't want to help Huo Chen. This made Huo Bingqing very upset. Li Zhou was very attentive and noticed Huo Bingqing's thoughts. He felt sorry for Huo Chen, but his power was limited, so he could only watch things happen. This made Li Zhou very sad. He didn't want Huo Bingqing to care so much for the other person. A hint of imperceptible bloom flashed across his calm face. After a pause, Li Zhou said, fine, I'll help you once, I'll give it a try. Hua Bingqing was immediately grateful and excited, saying, thank you, I will definitely thank you for my brother. Li Zhou was taken aback. Wow, it didn't take long for her to call him brother. Li Zhou's thoughts suddenly changed, and he slowly walked away. Wang Bo knew Li Zhou, both were second generation, and they often met in the circle. He gestured with his mouth, don't say anything, I know what you want to do, so as not to affect our relationship. Wang Bo didn't want to make things clear, so as not to break their relationship. Li Zhou turned around, looked helplessly at Hua Bingqing, shrugged and said, Sorry, I did my best. After Li Zhou finished speaking, he smirked, feeling a sudden sense of satisfaction. Wang Bo also cooperated, giving Li Zhou a way out, so he didn't have to help Hua Chen. Su Jia was very surprised. He felt that Wang Bo would refuse, and for a moment, he had a slight good feeling. This time, Su Jia, for the first time, didn't leave him but instead approached Wang Bo, which made Wang Bo very happy. At the same time, Wang Bo's courage gradually grew, and he immediately walked up and angrily said to the security guards, What are you standing there for? Get moving! Hurry up! The security guards were stunned for a moment, then they reacted and were eager to try, wishing to rush up and beat Hua Chen. In this way, several security guards surrounded Hua Chen, with a strong momentum of not giving up until they killed him. Everyone gathered around to watch the excitement. 
The second generation is really powerful, no one dares to provoke them. I thought this kid was so awesome, but it's nothing. People were discussing one after another, all standing at a distance to watch the show. On the other hand, Hua Chen, seeing the security guards approaching, remained calm and fearless, showing no sign of fear on his face. You little brat, you're still pretending at this point, I'll kill you. Get him, beat him until he shows his true colors. The security guards rolled up their sleeves, raised their fists, and charged forward. But at that moment, a loud bang came from a distance. Stop. The voice was extremely loud, hurting people's ears. Wang Bo reflexively covered his ears, looked up, and saw a graceful and well-proportioned woman with an icy expression. When it said that she had an icy expression, it means the woman had a cold and indifferent expression. Someone curiously asked, who is this, and how did she get in? At this moment, a well-dressed man walked out and said to everyone, you guys haven't seen the world. This is Miss Hu, Hu Ling, do you know her? What? It's Hu Ling. My goodness, the first lady of Bayan. I've only seen her on TV, I didn't expect to see her in real life, and she's so beautiful. Everyone was shocked and amazed, all eagerly admiring Hu Ling's beauty. It seemed as if Hu Ling would disappear the next second. Wang Bo also saw Hu Ling for the first time and was instantly overwhelmed by her extraordinary beauty. He swallowed the words he was about to scold Hua Chen with, and stared at her, as if his soul had been captivated. Are you causing trouble? Hu Ling walked two or three steps to Wang Bo, her delicate face instantly appearing in front of him. Wang Bo was so overwhelmed by her beauty that his mind went blank for a moment, and he spoke incoherently, like a fool. I, I'm not, it's Hua Chen, he didn't have an invitation, I was just doing a routine check, not causing trouble. Wang Bo had no idea that Hu Ling came for Hua Chen, not for this insignificant little meeting. Hu Ling gave a cold laugh and then said, I see, it's just that I wasn't invited. After speaking, she glared fiercely at Wang Bo and said coldly, I remember you didn't have an invitation either. That card in your hand is just for regular staff, isn't it? Wang Bo's face changed suddenly, covering his chest badge with his right hand and stepping back continuously. Although he was a second generation rich, his family had some money, but he hadn't reached the level to sit on par with the top second generation rich in Bayan. Not only that, Wang Bo was also extremely vain, spending a lot of money to have a friend buy a staff pass for him, and nervously attending this event. His goal was to enter the upper class society and then rise to the top. He thought no one would notice the whole event, but he never expected to be exposed by a top second generation rich. It was simply embarrassing. Hu Ling was the kind of woman who didn't like crowds. With her family background, apart from Hu Ling, there was probably no one else in Bayan who could be called a second generation rich. And Hu Ling also didn't like fighting and killing. Her father, Hu Santai, was a famous martial artist, and Hu Ling didn't actively study, which showed her mindset and aspirations. However, during this time, Hu Ling had taken an interest in Hu Chen. She felt that he was very mysterious and very powerful. She had someone investigate him before, but found nothing. Hu Ling even thought that Hu Chen's strength far exceeded hers by several times, and the class he belonged to was several times higher than hers, which was why she couldn't find out. In simple terms, Hu Chen's position was far higher than hers, and ordinary people couldn't even touch it. In recent days, Hu Chen's actions had been a bit bold and would affect some things. The matter of inviting Lu Ya to participate in the competition was basically known throughout Bayan, and Hu Chen might come here. With this in mind, Hu Ling went to the venue. Unexpectedly, not only did she guess right, but she also saw the real Hu Chen. The atmosphere at the scene dropped to freezing point for a moment. Faced with the extremely dominant Hu Ling, Su Jiamin clearly felt that he was losing a lot in terms of momentum. Hu Ling never looked down on such women. She walked step by step towards Hu Chen, and the security guards around them all stepped aside, showing an incredible sense of self-awareness. When she reached Hu Chen, Hu Ling's expression suddenly became gentle, her eyes were as calm as water, quietly looking at Hu Chen and said, Mr. Hua, I'm late. Are you okay? Since Hu Chen appeared in Bayan, all the big shots were eager to see him. But due to various circumstances, these people had never been able to get in touch with Hu Chen. Until Hu Ling appeared. There was genuine respect on Hu Ling's face, which made Hua Chen a bit nervous. Do I look like someone who has a problem? Hua Chen asked back, laughing heartily. Hu Ling felt embarrassed and involuntarily lowered her head, fiddling with her hair with one hand, her eyes drifting to the side at a wide angle. That awkward expression didn't look like a young lady at all, but more like a naive girl. Perhaps feeling that she had been a bit out of line, Hu Ling coughed lightly, concentrated her mind, and said, well, I guess I was overthinking. So far, no one has been able to hurt you. Hu Ling spoke a great truth. Hua Chen nodded and walked towards the room. Hu Ling followed closely and said, I thought teacher Wang Deng was also here. 
In this way, the two of them chatted as they walked into the room, leaving everyone bewildered. What's going on? When did Huo Chen meet Hu Ling? And when did their relationship become so good? Moreover, judging by the appearance of these two, their relationship was usually very good. Could it be that Hu Chen's confidence in coming here was all because of Hu Ling? This is simply unreasonable. Everyone in their hearts shouted angrily, feeling various envy, jealousy, and hatred. But this was reality, and no one could change it, only adapt to it. At the same time, Li Zhou's face didn't look good at all. He just couldn't understand why someone like Huo Chen, who wasn't well known, could be with Hu Ling. Hu Ling is a genuine beauty with a very prominent family background. Not to mention ordinary people, even the slightly influential second generation rich may not necessarily catch her eye. In short, why should Huo Chen? For a while, everyone was speculating about Huo Chen's identity. Some said he was a hidden big shot, a first generation entrepreneur. Others said that Huo Chen was doing this to protect himself. When a woman appeared at the door, wearing an evening gown and looking elegant and luxurious, it was the protagonist of today, Luigi. This event became famous because of Luigi, and Luigi became even more wealthy because of this event. It is no exaggeration to say that Luigi and this event became like twin stars, emitting dazzling light. Seeing Luigi come out, many people rushed up to flatter her. Manager Lu, you finally came. When you're here, there are no so-called beauties, only you are the most beautiful. Manager Lu, congratulations. You are now the image ambassador, this is what people want, and it is what everyone hopes for. Only you can be the image ambassador, no one else can. People praised Lu Ji one after another, exhausting all words of praise. In addition, many big shots from Bayan also came up to congratulate Lu Ji. At this time, a waiter walked over with a tray, on which was a glass of red wine specially prepared for Lu Ji. Lu Ji smiled and raised her glass to everyone, indicating that the toasting ceremony was officially beginning. In this ceremony, Luigi needed to toast all the big shots present. Of course, Luigi could just take a small sip, but the person she clinked glasses with had to drink it all. So no matter how long this ceremony lasted, Luigi wouldn't get drunk. After going around in circles, Luigi stopped in front of Huo Chen. Huo Chen politely picked up the glass and gently gestured to Luigi, saying, Luigi, long time no see. Although Huo Chen's voice was not loud, everyone around could hear it clearly. Who is this? Why is he so rude? Calling her by her name directly? Oh my, so arrogant. Is that it? It's really rude. No one here dares to call Luigi by her full name. I think you're just tired of living. Some people reprimanded Hu Chen, feeling that he was disrespectful and impolite. Some people wanted to take advantage of the situation and loudly reprimand Hu Chen to win Luigi's favor. At this time, a rich second generation businessman, Xin Tang, walked over and stared at Hu Chen, coldly saying, Kid, where did you come from? How dare you address Miss Lu like this, don't you want to live? Hu Chen took a deep breath, his hands hanging down, and his body relaxed. But at this moment, Lu Ji, who had always been dignified and generous, suddenly changed her expression. She saw Hu Chen at a glance. Especially Hu Chen's inconspicuous little movements gave people an irresistible feeling. It's like the people who come to participate in this event. Some people are really rich and walk with a swagger. Some people are pretending, even if they wear designer clothes, they still can't hide the air of poverty. Only Hua Chen's temperament is very special. It's not as flashy as the rich, nor as shabby as the poor, but a kind of unparalleled kingly momentum from the inside out. This innate temperament made Luigi feel ashamed. After a pause, Luigi said lightly, it has indeed been a while. Look at you, doing quite well? As soon as these words came out, everyone was shocked. My goodness, these two people know each other. If it could be barely explained as a coincidence that Hua Chen knew Hu Ling, then it was impossible to describe how Huo Chen knew Luigi. Everyone looked at Huo Chen incredulously, feeling that this kid's luck was too good. He actually knew two big beauties at the same time. It's simply unimaginable. People looked at Huo Chen with a strange look, and the atmosphere at the scene was once extremely awkward. It's okay, I've suffered a bit in recent years, but things have gotten better afterwards. Huo Chen raised his glass and took a sip, seemingly recalling the past. A barely noticeable ripple flashed across his calm face. What are you here for? Luigi didn't understand why this unknown person had come to the venue. Could it be to cause trouble? In confusion, Hu Chen slowly put down his glass and said, It seems you don't know what has happened. Luigi was startled, and quickly thought of the bidding. Now everything was being prepared for the bidding, including this competition. Luigi had already planned to announce the results of the event immediately after the successful bidding, bringing double joy, which was the usual practice for the Lu family to celebrate success. However, a single sentence from Huo Chen suddenly silenced Luigi. After a pause, Luigi said sternly, I'm sorry, 
I don't know you, please leave, you are not welcome here. Luigi was the most dazzling person here and also the most influential speaker. By giving the order to leave, Hua Chen had no reason to stay. Luigi was very confident, especially when dealing with Hua Chen, she was even more confident, believing that her words were law and that Hua Chen would definitely comply. At the same time, Luigi prepared to call Wang Bo to ask about the specific situation of the bidding. Also, her assistant Su Jia, who was usually the most active, had suddenly gone silent during this time, which was very puzzling. Fortunately, nothing bad had happened so far, but Hua Chen's arrival gave a sense of unease, or was it a deliberate ploy by Hua Chen? Just then, Su Jie stumbled in and, upon seeing Hua Chen, a cold smile appeared on her face. Ha, hey, Hua Chen, did you see that? No one here welcomes you. Be sensible and leave, otherwise don't say we didn't warn you. Hua Chen rubbed his forehead with his hand and inwardly chuckled. Why were these women so difficult, constantly asking him to leave? Hua Chen even began to suspect whether they were deliberately trying to make him leave. The happiest person among them was Su Jia, who had previously protected Hua Chen. Although he was very angry, he could only endure it, after all, Hua Chen's status was much higher than his own, even though he was Lu Ji's assistant, in front of Hua Chen, he was still a lowly figure. Now, Lu Ji had personally given the order to leave, putting Su Jia on the same level as Hua Chen. No matter how powerful she was, she could not deny Lu Ji's decision, as it would damage her reputation and strain the relationship between the two families. This was a situation that all the wealthy people did not want to see. At this moment, Luigi's fans emerged, all of them blindly supporting her, believing that everything she said was right, with a pure binary thinking. Seeing Luigi expel Hua Chen, these people also voiced their support. Kid, where did you come from? Miss Lu is speaking to you, can't you hear? Just an ordinary person, dressed like a loser. What right do you have to stand with Miss Lu? Hurry up and leave, you are not welcome here, can you understand human language? Where are the security guards? Get him out of here, quickly. The fans were eager to make Hua Chen leave immediately, hoping to curry favor with the most important person there, and ideally gain their appreciation and support for their own development. The atmosphere at the scene was chaotic, and Luigi looked coldly at Hua Chen, as if watching a good show. You, Hua Chen, are quite impressive, right? Well, let's see if you can handle these people attacking you. Luigi smiled faintly, a barely noticeable expression on her lips, then raised her glass lightly, pointed it in Hua Chen's direction, and drank it down. Luigi was indeed a public figure, and with just a few words, she had put Hua Chen in an embarrassing situation. Hua Chen could only helplessly watch the other party. See that? That's called power. You are just an ordinary person, with no money or background. What can you use to compete with me? To be blunt, if I say one more word, your life might be in danger, Luigi said calmly. It seemed that in her eyes, Hua Chen was no longer a person, but just a bottom-level target for bullying. What Luigi didn't know was that at this moment, Hua Chen was truly angry. He really didn't want to use force, nor did he want to get involved with these so-called rich and beautiful people. Su Jie was even more pleased, as if he had avenged a great grievance, imitating Hua Chen's tone from before and saying, Hey, I'm talking to you, can't you hear me? For Su Jie, the slap that Hua Chen gave him was still fresh in his memory. So he wanted to seize every opportunity to get back at him, preferably making Hua Chen lose face and leave an embarrassment. Wang Bo was unreliable, relying on a man who didn't even exist. In the future, he would just hang on to him. When he ran out of money, he would make him spend it, like a free ATM. The people at the scene were all mocking and ridiculing Hua Chen, but only Hu Ling in the distance remained silent. She quietly watched everything in front of her, shaking her head slightly. Despite these people being second generation or having backgrounds, their vision was actually very narrow, and they couldn't even see Hua Chen's true strength. Hu Ling understood Hua Chen the best, thinking to herself, if these people knew Hua Chen's true identity, what kind of reaction would they have? Perhaps they wouldn't even have time to kneel. At this moment, Hu Bingqing also walked over and, seeing the scene in front of her, immediately showed a hint of anxiety on her face. Hu Bingqing knew that the people here would make things difficult for Hua Chen, but she never expected that there would be so many of them. There must be someone instigating behind the scenes, or he was being set up. In Hu Bingqing's impression, wherever Hua Chen went, he was always warmly welcomed, unlike now. The more Hu Bingqing thought about it, the angrier she became, clenching her fists and staring at Lu Ji. Looking at Hu Ling, who was also silent at this time. There was a time when Hu Ling had always been Hua Chen's backbone, but looking at her now, it was probably not worth hoping for in the future. She was indifferent, indicating that she would not speak up for Hua Chen. From this incident, Hu Bingqing also realized that Hua Chen and Hu Ling did not have a good relationship. At the very least, when Hua Chen was in trouble, no one came forward to speak for him. 
But at this moment, Hua Chen suddenly said lightly, This is troublesome. The good show hasn't even started, how can I leave? Everyone was shocked to hear this. Goodness, is Hua Chen crazy? Doesn't he see the current situation? How can he still talk about a good show? Now everyone is against Hua Chen, even Hu Ling, who used to support him, is not speaking up. What does Hua Chen have to be so arrogant about? He even talks about a good show, when the biggest show is happening right now. What, not leaving yet? At this moment, a voice came from outside, and everyone looked over to see a tall and imposing figure entering, it was Shen Mingyun, the eldest disciple of the Shen family. Shen Mingyun was also a prominent figure here, and his words carried great weight. At this moment, looking at Hua Chen, his face was gloomy and extremely unpleasant. Su Jie saw another big shot coming and immediately ran over, whispering, Mr. Shen, you finally came. You don't know, this person is so arrogant. He can come in without an invitation, it's outrageous. Su Jie wanted everyone in the world to be against Hua Chen, so he quickly recounted the previous events, exaggerating and adding fuel to the fire, describing how Hua Chen had beaten him. Su Jie's words were full of tears, hoping to arouse Xin Mingyun's sympathy and then give Hua Chen a good lesson. At first, Xin Mingyun was just drinking tea in the private room and didn't pay attention to the commotion outside, because Lu Ji had been toasting, and the scene was chaotic, so ordinary people wouldn't go over. It wasn't until Lu Ling came over that Xin Mingyun realized that something bad had happened here. Sure enough, after inquiring privately, it turned out that Hua Chen was causing trouble. This made Xin Mingyun, who liked order, very unhappy. If you, Hua Chen, have power, status, and influence, causing trouble here might be acceptable, and people might give you face. But if you have nothing and still cause trouble, it's just looking for trouble. Xin Mingyun put down his wine glass and said coldly, Do you really not know where this is? Or are you pretending not to know? This is an upscale place that requires an invitation. You have nothing, yet you have the nerve to be here? Speaking of which, this is a private area, and without an invitation, you cannot enter. Otherwise, you will be arrested for trespassing, understand? Xin Mingyun advised in a friendly manner, aiming for diplomacy before resorting to force, which was his consistent approach. He would speak nicely first, then strike hard. After speaking, Xin Mingyun snapped his fingers behind him, and several strong men immediately rushed out. Throw this person out, and if they resist, beat them to death. If anyone calls the police, say it was Xin Mingyun's name. Xin Mingyun looked pleased, holding his head high, as if to say, I can control those who cannot be moved and I can strike those who dare not fight. The other privileged individuals also applauded. This was the way the second generation should behave. One word could determine a person's fate, and if these people were to use excessive force, it would be enough to kill him. As these enforcers moved forward, the emotions of the second generation were instantly ignited. They wanted these people to see how vulnerable and powerless ordinary people were in the face of money and connections. Xin Mingyun looked at Luigi in the distance and said with a smile, Miss Lu, how can we trouble you with such a small matter? Rest assured, from today on, I will definitely replace all the security here to prevent similar incidents from happening. Luigi smiled faintly, although she did not speak, she was extremely pleased. All right, Mr. Shen, I will listen to you. Huo Chen also felt embarrassed. The happier Luigi was, the more he could not contain his joy, and he burst into laughter. This detail completely baffled everyone. They could never have imagined that Luigi, who was usually reserved, would be so happy. Some of the second generation even regretted not coming out earlier to steal the limelight and leave a good impression on the century beauty. Seeing Luigi smile at him, Shen Mingyun thought he had won her favor, and suddenly felt elated. He took two or three steps forward and continued to say to Hua Chen, by the way, before you leave, you need to apologize to us, and kneel down. Shen Mingyun's behavior towards Hua Chen was increasingly outrageous, and using the phrase kill with a borrowed knife to describe what he did was not an exaggeration. At this point, Hua Chen finally could not bear it and said coldly, this is too much. I have given you face, but since you don't want it, then don't expect any in the future. After speaking, Hua Chen waved his hand, and a nearby security guard flew out and crashed into the wall, groaning in pain. Hua Chen's movements were so fast that they were almost imperceptible. The people around were stunned. They still did not know what Hua Chen had done, they only saw a blur, and the security guard was thrown out. What exactly had happened, and what had Hua Chen done? The crowd looked at Hua Chen in horror, as if they were looking at a monster. Some even suspected that the security guard was in cahoots with Hua Chen, deliberately acting to deceive them. As a result, some people stepped forward to check the guard's injuries. Upon inspection, they were immediately scared back a few steps. The security guard had suffered extremely serious internal injuries, with all his organs being damaged, and his life was in danger. And all of this was caused by Hua Chen's casual action. If he had used all his strength, 
these people probably wouldn't even find his body. Many of the security guards present had a background in street fighting and were familiar with various martial arts. However, they were still unclear about what attack method Hua Chen had used. The only thing they knew was that Hua Chen's attack had reached an extraordinary level, and no one could stop it. Li Zhou and Hua Bingqing beside him were also shocked. Hua Chen's attack completely exceeded the scope of science. Earlier, they only thought that Hua Chen was relatively good at fighting, but after such a long time, the change was so great. Is this kind of fighting still considered human? However, among these people, there was one who didn't feel surprised at all. That person was Hu Ling. Hu Ling quietly watched Hua Chen, and her eyes gradually became excited. Hua Chen was much more powerful than imagined. If she made an effort, maybe she could beat Hua Chen? For some reason, Hu Ling suddenly had the idea of making defeating Hua Chen her goal. Clapping his hands, Hua Chen said nonchalantly, Some say that in the face of power, ordinary people are worthless? Nothing at all? Then, what about strength? Today, I'm going to offend all these so-called powerful people. What can you do to me? Hua Chen turned to look at Luigi and said, You've always wanted me to leave, right? As he spoke, Hua Chen walked forward, and when he reached Luigi, he suddenly reached out and embraced her. The whole scene was shocked. If Hua Chen's fighting was like setting off a bomb for these people, then embracing Luigi was like setting off a shocking nuclear bomb. Before this, all the men had dreamed of getting Luigi, treating her as their dream lover. But no man dared to act on it. Because Luigi was the kind of jade that was high above, only to be admired from a distance and not to be profaned. But who could have imagined that after meeting Hua Chen, not only was she reprimanded by Hua Chen in person, but also in front of everyone, he embraced her. What kind of international joke is this? Everyone was shocked, gaping at Hua Chen and Luigi, various feelings of envy and jealousy surged in their hearts. The most shocked of all was Luigi. She looked at Hua Chen, and could almost see the pores on his face. Hua Chen's warm breath sprayed on her face, and Luigi actually felt an indescribable pleasure. At this moment, from the initial fear, to anger, and finally only nervous excitement, in just a few seconds, Luigi felt as if she had experienced a whole day. This time, Luigi finally understood what a man was, and what masculine energy was. Even if she realized that Hua Chen's actions were humiliating her, Luigi still didn't get angry. Her body involuntarily moved closer, wanting Hua Chen to hold her tighter. No, this is not right. Suddenly, Luigi woke up abruptly, trying to adjust her emotions as much as possible, trying to stay calm, after all, it was not good to be seen like this in public. Then, Luigi pushed Hua Chen away forcefully and angrily said, What are you doing? Let go of me. To Luigi's surprise, Hua Chen not only did not let go of her, but his grip tightened even more. Hua Chen's strong arm was like a vine, binding her tightly. Every time Luigi struggled, Hua Chen's arm tightened, until their bodies were tightly pressed together. I heard that you are called the Ice Queen? Noble and aloof? Hee <laughs> hee, today I want to see where you are noble, where you are aloof, and where you are different from others. Hua Chen still didn't let go, then he lowered his head and lightly sniffed at Luigi's neck, smiling and saying, your rouge and powder, do you think I don't know what you do behind my back? Luigi was suddenly stunned, feeling uneasy in her heart. Did Hua Chen really know something? Did he have to do this to her? I hit the nail on the head, didn't I? Hua Chen laughed out loud. That sentence was deliberately said by Hua Chen to test the depth of the other party. However, Lu Ji's mental resilience was not good, and when Hua Chen said that, her body involuntarily twisted. This detail was accurately captured by Hua Chen, and he instantly understood that despite Lu Ji's usual pride and uniqueness, the things she did behind the scenes were dirty. The voices of the two were very low, but they were clearly heard by everyone. People looked at Hua Chen in astonishment, and even more so at Lu Ji. If Luigi is really as described by Hua Chen, her pure and noble image will instantly collapse. Hua Bingqing also heard it clearly. Goodness, Luigi, who has always been known as a pure and noble lady, actually did such worldly things. Even Hu Ling was astonished. With such good conditions at home, why would Luigi degrade herself? While everyone sighed, there was also some excitement. Especially for Li Zhou and Wang Bo, seeing Hua Chen lay hands on Luigi made them ecstatic. Luigi is not someone ordinary people can touch. Hua Chen not only laid hands on her, but also took advantage of her and humiliated her. This has already made an enemy of the Lu family. Next, Hua Chen will have to face not only these rich second generations and beautiful women, but an entire family, or even more women like Lu Ji. By then, even if Hu Ling sacrifices her life to protect Hua Chen, it will be useless. Kid, you're done for this time, even if the heavens come, it won't help, said Li Zhou. Li Zhou looked at Hua Chen with schadenfreude, his eyes filled with anger. At the same time, Li Zhou also felt a bit lost. In his view, not being able to kill Hua Chen is his regret in this lifetime. Shen Mingyun quickly reacted, 
seeing an opportunity to show his worth. If he doesn't seize it now, he won't have another chance. So Shen Mingyun quickly walked over and sternly said, shameless, let go of Miss Lu. In fact, Shen Mingyun was also afraid of Huo Chen's terrifying methods. It's just that this time, Shen Mingyun decided to take a gamble. There is a fundamental difference between himself and these security guards. Huo Chen dares to hit the security guards, but he might not dare to hit me. More importantly, Huo Chen is holding the woman he loves the most. Just this fact alone made Shen Mingyun extremely angry. Oh, what if I don't let go? Huo Chen turned slightly, and Luigi was still leaning on him, her body tightly held, unable to be released. If you don't let go, you'll be against the entire Bayan. You will pay for what you've done today. Shen Mingyun gritted his teeth, wishing to rush up and kill Huo Chen right now. Perhaps seeing Shen Mingyun's angry expression, Huo Chen felt particularly ridiculous. The force in his hands gradually weakened, and he let go of Luigi. Then, Huo Chen walked step by step towards Shen Mingyun, sneering, I'd like to see what the price is. I warn you, don't force me to take action. You better kneel down and apologize to me, otherwise I'll immediately call people to arrest you. I'll make sure you rot in jail. Shen Mingyun shouted loudly, attempting to use his voice to cover up his fear. The other rich second generations all gave thumbs up after seeing this. Shen Mingyun is indeed the leader of the second generations, daring to challenge Huo Chen face to face. Huo Chen is a complete beast, no one dares to provoke him. Huo Chen gave a faint smile and said, in my opinion, you're just looking for trouble when there's none. In that case, don't blame me for being impolite. After speaking, Huo Chen lightly tapped the ground, then suddenly lifted his leg and swiftly kicked. With a swoosh, a loud explosion sounded in the air, and a visible shockwave appeared. It instantly hit Shen Mingyun's lower body. Shen Mingyun had no idea what had happened, only feeling a huge force impacting his legs, then falling to the ground. Ah, my legs. It hurts so much. Shen Mingyun screamed loudly, looking at his legs in horror. His knees were shattered, blood flowing back, and his thighs swelled up. Shut up. Huo Chen muttered, clapping his hands in the air. Shen Mingyun immediately spat out a mouthful of blood, teeth flying, screaming in pain and rolling on the ground. The pain and fear made it almost impossible for Shen Mingyun to breathe, and blood flowed down his neck. Everyone was shocked and frightened, instinctively taking a step back. Goodness, Huo Chen is too fierce. He even dared to hit Shen Mingyun. The other second generations were even more terrified, not daring to make a sound. Even with full confidence and a proud face, Luigi felt trembling at the scene before her. She knew that Huo Chen dared to do anything, but she never knew that Huo Chen would be so ruthless. I heard you want me to kneel down and apologize? Huo Chen cracked his knuckles, making a crackling sound. Shen Mingyun, upon hearing this, suddenly got up, endured the intense pain, and knelt down to Huo Chen, while bowing and speaking in a sobbing voice. Although it was hard to hear, it was easy to understand that he was saying he dared not do it again, and he dared not let Huo Chen kneel down. Then, Huo Chen looked at the crowd and said sternly, Anyone else have a problem? With a loud noise, everyone fell silent instantly.